Hello, my friends. Welcome to Civilization VI. Hey, buddies. Can we do a vote uh, on which team we think will win when the game starts? Is it a free-for-all? Let me double-check, actually. Uh, what is this game? It's a teamer? What is it? Oh, it's a 4v4 standard. Oh, let me change the uh, title here. Uh, Uh, 4v4 day one. Let me go ahead and fix a few things here. Uh, 4v4 team games. Uh, let me change the old thumbnail. Pog. Pog. Boom. We have saved all the information. We've done a thing appropriately. We are in the lobby. Uh, <clears throat> we're in the lobby. Things are going well. I gotta close some tabs, get the stuff together here. I gotta swap a synth real quick. Yep, it is safe to unmute. Uh oh, what was I doing? Oh my god, guys, we got some amazing. Oh, right, we need to do a prediction. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Um, I do have a question on behalf of my chat. We want to run a prediction. Who are the two teams playing? And, uh, who is going to win? That's what I need to know. Well, who are the two teams? <coughs> uh, isn't this a 4v4? <laughs> Never mind, the prediction doesn't work. <laughs> of those polls uh, for like a 10 minute poll or something to see if uh, one of them will win. Oh, no, never mind. I just, I wanted to do a, um, uh, I wanted to do a prediction for points, but never mind. It's it's a 2v2v2. It's basically four teams, right? Or five teams? Uh, yes, there are five teams right now and uh, they're getting into the lobby right now. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm seeing that up. I just need to swap it synth. Yeah. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and then five, four, three, two, one uh, slots. And from what I noticed in the teams over here, I, I think uh, I can actually double check this. Give me a second because, you know, a lot to scroll up. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, who's it going to be? CAF, uh, Zone of Control, CAW, Civ Russia, and Civ Germany are going to be playing in uh, in this game. Um, one thing I have to say, CAW uh, ha have been um, the new guys on the, on the block for like a month now these are the guys with uh dude with opinions with um um uh, khmer that played the last time uh papa chillen yep yep and he's going to be playing in this game as well he's just joining can you imagine going through a ffa that went like six hours to play into a 2v2 directly jesus christ and don't forget i think he's also been streaming for like 20 hours the guy's a machine to be still going yeah at this point. exactly he's doing it notice me senpai <laughs> Yeah, uh, and we do have uh, quite a few uh, good players here, uh, and uh, I really wanted to get Zone of Control um, streamed because uh, they already went into the CWC this season of the CWC with uh, their um, uh, free slot because they won the last season. So we didn't get them at all in the qualifiers. Nobody knows, okay, are they still up to it? Do they still have what it takes to win the CWC? Are they, you know, like, are they doing it? And then, I'm not sure if you saw, but in the points, uh, the first one up is Zone of Control with um, 
Dance for Fish managing to get five different rewards in the first game. Five? They got five different rewards? Yes, four or five. I, I believe it was five, but I, I, let me actually double check if it was five. They have 11 points right now. That's impressive. Uh, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I need to um, refresh the data because, okay, I, I, yeah, there we go. So they have 200, 200 points. Just as for fish managed to get 200 points for the uh, zone of control. <laughs> Just him. That is, uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, just one player, one player to rule them all. What can I say? I mean, you see, an early lead like that could very easily snowball to a, to a, to a, you know, a confident victory here. We'll see how that plays out. Yeah, and CAF, by the way, uh, even if uh, they are new, they are on the second place right now. So let me actually share you the link that I'm uh, watching, so you get to see the same thing. So we okay, uh, give me a second, and this, and this, and this, and then I come back to this. And I put uh, I put it on my screen also. So this is the file, right? The OneDrive file. And you get uh, on the bottom, you see four tabs, home, roster, matches, schedule. You get to scroll uh, left from left to right. And you get like different uh, types of data, MVPs or all player scores or uh, best saves uh, and so on. In the overall standings right now, we got zone of control, 19 players strong, 300 points already on them. Uh, CAF, they're on 223, Barking Cats on 155, CAW on 150, and the Suomi, the fifth clan, on 145, tied with Civ Russia. And you, you can imagine, we got right now four of these teams in the same lobby, uh, Civ Russia, CAWCAF and zone of control so it will matter a lot what happens right now yeah that's going to have tremendous outcomes uh, for the early parts of this tournament yeah exactly but slowly the points are starting to roll in for uh, all of the clans here it's uh, you know it, it's happening it's happening let's see what they're going to do <laughs> I, th I think it's going to be tremendous fun to see how the scores develop over the course of the next two days um I, I, it's always interesting because I feel like there's always a little bit of a Cinderella story and a little bit of an underdog story. There's always some team that like doesn't do great on day one, but then comes back and like maybe doesn't necessarily win it, but they come close, you know? Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to need to see. I, I would love to see that happening. By the way, somebody, you know, at the last second, just snatching the victory away. That would be so awesome. Uh, and especially the new guys on the block can you imagine it's like you know some people that never played in our communities and we have like thousands of players frequently and just coming in and destroying our whole uh, mantra over here what is this <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah the invaders what? have arrived and they're here to shake up the meta yes yes Honestly, I'm so happy to see that happening. You know, it, it just shakes up everything, like you said, and it, it forces everybody to, you know, you got to get good. <laughs> you got to get good. What you, yeah. get, you get old. You're doing the same things over and over again. Get, you know, get with the program. <laughs> That's what they say. You got to get good or you get left behind. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looks like uh, we're still waiting for two players, I believe, to join. One from, uh, actually, is it two players? Let me see. Two, four. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, no. They need to close one slot. Yeah, it's one slot too big. Yeah, I think it is. I need to swap with this uh, synth person who is not paying attention, yeah. unfortunately. She, she's actually a girl uh, from uh, the United States. She's playing with uh, Noob634, I believe, in the team. Oh, great. We'll get to see. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to see a team, uh, a, a US team, I assume. I, I assume the teams are generally organized around country, or are there teams that like mix and match between different countries? Uh, it's at the moment it's mostly like mix and match, but uh, some of the um, players do like to stick around when they hear the same language. But English being spoken by so many people is just um, sometimes making it easier to allow them to coordinate better. Um, but yeah, so for example, we you, got Siv Russia that will speak mostly Russian you, and it is from the Slavic part, like not only Russia, it's uh, Ukraine, it's uh, Georgia, it's uh, uh, Belarus, it's uh, Latvia and so on, like all of the, uh, maybe Bulgaria, all of the Slavic um, uh, speaking uh, countries. And then uh, you get, um, of course, uh, France, 
America, yeah. America actually most of the time has been playing with uh, Europeans, though I gotta say. And I guess uh, uh, synth is actually Chinese American. Uh, one one question I do have as well that somebody wanted yeah. to know. That was great information, by the way. That's super helpful. Um, to know more about the scene and like how people organize, you know, do people organize based on language or is it based on playing times? Like you probably have some Americans playing with Europeans because the Europeans play at the appropriate times for the American. Um, with yeah. regards to the 2v2v2v2 two v two v two v two rules, it's, uh, am I to understand that this is basically a free-for-all game, but there's just two players on each team? Basically, basically. So they, there's a lot of chances of them just spawning all over the map. Like one there, one there, one there, one there. They're, they might not get next to each other, so they're going to need to make due. At least we're going to have them pull their resources somewhat. Like they can trade gold, they can trade the res uh, strategics. Uh, this is going to be good. Uh, but other than that, it's every man for himself. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 2v2s are actually quite tough uh, as a game mode over here. And we're going to need to see, first of all, the map and second of all, uh, what the players will choose as civilizations. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, uh, how this shakes out because, you know, you might have like a really, really strong civilization. But if you spawn next to like two people who are on the same team and they just double up on you and kill you and then it's been lights out, you know. So there, there, there's a little bit more... Uh, 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 What's the word I'm looking for? Not risk, but like dynamicism. Like things can things can screw you a little bit here. Yeah, they can spiral out of control. Indeed, um, there were uh, in the Civland we got I got a few two v two v two v two like this, and uh, it was surprising to see players that were very good at FFA coming back to your uh, subject of uh, free for all uh, that didn't play teamers at all actually managing to get the win. Because, yes, like you said, it's mostly you're going to need to rely on yourself. Like, how, okay, how do, how do I pursue this? I got a neighbor uh, on the left, I got a neighbor on the right, and a neighbor on, on, uh, on my bottom borders. Okay, how do, I, uh, s uh, how do I manage to keep them far apart from me, but at the same time um, give myself enough space to develop? How do I, um, you know, where do I defend? Where do I prioritize? And so on. It's all of those uh, strategic gameplays we're going to need to see them uh, just like we saw earlier in the ffa uh, the players were trying as much as possible to uh, use that yeah uh, it's kind of hope. a difficult dance you have to do because you want to stay away from your neighbors but you also you don't want to look weak yeah exactly exactly uh, and you've seen uh, what happens when uh, you forward settle your uh, neighbor <laughs> <laughs> yeah forward settling i mean forward settling is just an invitation to to attack you know yeah, yeah, hey, free city here, bro. You want to take it? You want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, <clears throat> I think there's yeah. also there's also something visceral about when somebody settles on your border. It's like, man, I had planned a city there and you just took it and now I'm mad. And like, now we're enemies. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Is this also a blind draft pick? I believe it is a blind draft pick. I could be wrong. Do you know, Michael? Uh, that's a good question. I'm actually trying to figure out right now. I was uh, looking for the voting channel to see where they're going to vote for. I think it's going to be a team draft, but I don't know. If you're talking about the early, uh, the last vote that we got, I don't think it's going to be that kind. I think gotcha. it's going to be a bit more uh, complicated. Yeah, um, it'll be a bit more open and a little bit more open to like things like counter picks and, and block picks. I mean, I hope. I, I don't know. Let's see. So uh, they... For some reason, they blocked the uh, Noob 64 and Synth from the vote. And now they're getting... Oh, no, never mind. They added. So it's a 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's it. Uh, looks like it's an FFA draft. Okay, interesting. Interesting. FFA. Okay, the... So they will get... Um, each of them will get uh, civilizations. There might be... They might go for... Uh, the monkey draft, as we like to call The blind draft here. Five dollars and zero cents, hey, potato. Uh, if you play a religious game, it's uh, you, you want the link, stank? by the way. Sorry, what was that? You want the link to the channel? I'm I'm looking at the channel right now. I'm just having a hard time actually finding the message. Um, oh, it's the last one. It's the, oh, last it's the one. latest one. Ah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, I see them. I see them. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're just voting right now on the map. Uh, I see three votes in. Uh, pen. Why do they have two votes? I don't know. Maybe the maybe the bot lagged or something. I don't know. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
anyway so let's see what do we have I don't think it's gonna matter with the official friends. Uh, luxury trading strategics are predetermined anyway. Pangea looks to be most voted here. With uh, seven C's coming up next, competitive timer, uh, and then abundant resources, abundant strategics. The Regis definition is gonna be on classic. We got Regis on uh, the second level. We got standard on three okay the normal uh, cc voting and yeah they're going for the monkey draft they're going for the blind draft uh i see why i see it's the see no evil emote with the monkey covering its eyes that's why it's the blind draft. Yes. okay i was like what the monkey that's draft why. is this like some weird <laughs> phrase like, excuse me <laughs> yeah, yeah that's weird um i that's couldn't understand why you were calling it that so it's it's the blind draft which means uh they won't be able to see what the other saves are picking exactly so indeed it will it will be blind that's awesome that's awesome and and you know we we talked about this earlier but the the implications of a blind draft mean that y you know you can kind of mentally prepare like if you see somebody get zulu in their draft you can be like okay i need to pick a save that's like good at countering zulu but if you just don't know what they get you're kind of picking like in isolation and that'll that'll impact the civilizations you pick won't it yep um, I got a question here on my stream uh, about the rules of alliances between teams. As far as I know, they're not allowed to. It's basically always war between them. They, they cannot trade. They cannot do anything uh, between alliances, uh, between, I guess, teams, I guess you can say. Uh, that. So even if they spawn next to each other, it, they're going to be maybe not worrying, but you never know when you're going to get uh, attacked from there. So uh, there's always going to be some form of danger from even an enemy that is free seeming somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so bans. Looks like they, they're they not going to... Why are they banning King Shi Huang? Oh, come on. Oh no, I guess they, they don't want to mess uh, getting not not getting golden age again. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't want to miss. Yeah. Are there any yeah. of these bands here that surprise you? Like Canada being banned as is um, Mali? On the Pangea map, uh, not really. Well, it looks like uh, continents and islands are getting some, uh, some attention and uh, fractal, I hope. Oh my god, actually, that's gonna Fractal. be painful. Fractal and would Highland. be fun. Highlands, it's at the tie with Pangea. Oh my god, that, that is gonna be a long game. That's like, yeah. That's, okay, that's a lot of land to settle. I think the, the first game that we casted together was in a Highlands game, and that went for a while. <laughs> yeah, don't remember how long, but yes, indeed, it did. It did take a while, uh, especially in the four v four scene. It does take uh, most of the time more than normal. But now it looks like uh, six votes in Pangea that should uh, cover it. Yeah, that should secure the Pangea then. Yeah, it should be fine. Um, okay, so Canada is getting banned. Maori is getting banned. Uh, Mali is probably gonna get banned. Uh, they're gonna leave in uh, Russia. Okay, um, I'm actually surprised we don't see uh, more civilizations with uh, uh, direct bonuses uh, taken out, like we've seen uh, last time. Uh, like you said, also Zulu or um, Mapuche. Mapuche, I guess, uh, is getting some attention. Um, yeah. So I, I understand why Maori is banned because they're a really annoying sieve. They get a lot of really early bonuses. They can move around the map and kind of pop up where you don't expect them. What's up with the yeah. Canada ban? Hello there. Um, well, Canada does get... I'm not sure about the normal Canada in uh, uh, non-BBG, but in BBG it does get uh, extra production on those mines, lumber mills. It does get a lot of uh, food. Uh, so it's early tempo it's always going to be um, very good uh, at the same time you do get most of the time the ability to uh, build temple of artemis first you get um, a high chance to have uh, camps near you uh, like uh, and um, it just allows you to get such such a good game and another thing nobody wants canada land like that's you know He's that's true tundra. like who wants tundra <laughs> like really <laughs> you know yeah that's so... really really true nobody wants to actually conquer canada's land because it's all like like snow ew yeah exactly so he's gonna get the 
protection from that and then he's gonna get extra production extra food he's gonna get a, a amazing wonder at the beginning with uh, extra amenities all of that turns into such an advantage when it starts putting down his high socketings it's just such a good tempo on it you get to triple your uh, your culture generation very very quickly yeah for sure ice hockey rings are one of those like improvements that if you get them done appropriately aren't they like 10 tourism per turn or something crazy i don't remember but like a, a 10 culture 10 tourism you can pop they can really pop off if you set them up correctly uh yeah i think that's six if i'm not mistaken uh, oh six you yeah, might be misremembering yeah they get the jcc from uh, the tundra around them uh so i think there's six uh and then it's on the tourism they're I uh, identical uh, you get the one point of culture one point of tourism for one point of uh, culture but i think it's only later on in the game like when you get to um uh conservation or uh flight one of the two i'm not remembering correct i think flight like most of them <clears throat> yeah well it looks like we've got our first pick locked in here and it's bez domni on gorgo only two play uh, only two bands i have to point out only two bands so this is a 10 player game only two bands maori and canada that's it no no not they, they're gonna allow everything else that's like, really oh, interesting oh, yeah like lotaro basil got in we got the cthia getting in like what i'm not sure oh sorry michael oh, um yeah. did you say you had a fix for that microphone crackly thing it just started doing it there a second ago oh it did uh let me rejoin let me see yeah i i just thought it because hello oh right so i need to refresh it completely I'll see. It's, it sounds okay right now. I'll let you know if it happens again. <clears throat> uh, you were talking about uh, all the saves in the game. You've got Basil. You've got uh, all the really, really strong saves. But we've also got a Cyrus picked here for Fall Rex on Team 2. So it looks like Team 2 is going for Gorgo Persia. Oh, you're watching in the lobby? No. Oh, I see. Fall Rex uh, going for Cyrus here. Maybe he's just uh, messing with us. Oh, know. he could be messing with us. Maybe I'm, am I am I not? Yeah. <laughs> Is there? I mean, I don't know, man. It's a it's a good way to mess with people. <laughs> you know? uh, they didn't pick yet, so I I guess they didn't finish picking yet. You see, it's still waiting in the blind draft. Oh right, I see that screen now. Yeah, 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 yeah. They might have. Oh, do you know what he might have done? He might have revealed his pick by accident. Ooh. I mean, that would be a big no-no, but he might have also fooled us. Uh, uh, he could. Somebody picks uh, Sumeria. That's true. He could be <laughs> trolling right now. Yeah. You can't trust uh, what you see right here. No, you can't put anything past these players. They are more than happy to try and trick us. Yeah. Uh, so the trick was, by the way, on the um, on the audio to try to fix uh, to like pick the program that works on audio decoding on one single processor core instead of uh, allowing it to do whatever it wants. Uh, so it looks like that core is not actually getting a lot of attention so it should be fine i don't know just tell me if it's not no it, it's working fine now i think it was yeah i think it might be just down to the fact that it was just something weird happening uh, uh it seems fine completely fine now <clears throat> okay good to know uh they're taking their time to pick here this is uh, interesting well, what I find interesting, though, is on some of the teams, one of the players has picked and the other has it. Like, for example, Noob and Synth. Uh, Synth has picked and Noob hasn't. So there must be, like, some discussion going on. Uh, he must... Like, uh, to me, that sounds like Synth got a really strong pick and Noob didn't. Yeah. That's a, that's a good read over here. But he was also asking, or somebody was asking, if they could trade the civilizations between... Uh, and then uh, he deleted his message so i don't know what they're gonna do here <laughs> oh no we'll see oh no maybe no, they no. wanted to draft here oh okay there we go he just picked okay let, let's see three more to go alcoholic el here 971 and hermione uh, I, I do have to say like half of the players in the lobby i do not know so alcoholic i don't know el here 971 i don't know uh, uh oh, actually two players in the lobby because otherwise i know them no, well, that'll, that'll be interesting to see some new players because new players are always kind of a little bit of an unknown quantity, right? You don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, like, like I said in the previous 2v2 I casted, the unknown players actually managed to win. <laughs> Surprised everybody. <laughs> oh, Papa chilling, not taking prisoners. 
Byzantium instantly picked. Okay. Well. Wow. Gonna... Okay. Oh, and look, uh, Nob64 did get Spain since uh, did get Cree, but no powerful civilizations here, I have to say. So we got uh, the two Greeces, we got Persia, we got Khmer, we got uh, Rome, Japan, uh, Byzantium, Portugal, which is going to be so weird on this map, by the way, on Pangaea. Uh, yeah, Spain, for sure. Cree. I'm, I mean, it's going to depend so much about one city-state for uh, Portugal or not. Yeah, I'm really skeptical of the Portugal pick on a Pangaea map. I mean, I know it can work, but it doesn't feel like it's the kind of map that Portugal is strong at. Maybe maybe yeah. the other choices were just like not of the same quality. I don't know, because uh, it depends how you judge that quality. If Jawa the Third doesn't get any bonuses, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> quality sounds really low. <laughs> you know? Yeah, awesome. Anything starts to sound to sound really better afterwards. <laughs> um, I have a I have an error message here. It's saying no duplicate civilizations. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He needs to allow duplicate civs. Yeah, I was just about to Probably, say. Probably uh, I... Gorgo and Pericles. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um. So tell me, of all the teams here, we've got Noob and Synth. We've got Bezdomni and Falrex. Uh, 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 we've got Era here and Hermione. We've got Mal uh, Malmato and Altolic, Papachillan and the Bishop. Whose picks do you like right now? If you had to play as one of these teams, which of the picks do you think you would want to go in with? I really like Philip II with uh, Kree. I really like it. And um, <clears throat> at the same time, I also like um, uh, Japan with uh, Basil. I it's a good matchup because they one can make the gold and the other one can uh, get those units out, those tagmas with Crusade. Um, but in this particular matchup, I feel like Khmer might get that uh, Crusade. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he wants to troll his uh, opponent. And also, also, Philip II with Crusade, it's still a good save. It's a very good save, actually. It synergizes so well with his uh, plus five combat strength and... Uh, against uh, other sieves and so on that's very true uh, uh there there are two perhaps even three maybe even four sieves in here that don't want to like snatch up that crusade benefit so it's it's going to be kind of you know how hard are people going to be fighting over that crusade is it really that important to be able to, to to have that ability especially for someone like basil that's a good question i mean for basil it's a it's extremely important for other sieves not so important and maybe they don't actually give that much importance to it anymore because it's only a plus five i mean you know it, it just it's not that annoying any, anymore it's good but it doesn't like break the game yeah you can defend the uh, somebody with a general for example and right? i it's uh, plus seven against you with a general and so on might be a bit too tough yeah for uh, sure for sure. Um, I don't know. So personally, I, I think I would like to play as the Gorgo Cyrus team just because that has such a strong early culture game that you could do some really interesting things. You have like My really good ancient era and religious classical era war avail available to you. I think yeah. that would be a pretty fun combo to play myself. I like it as well. I, I really like the Greases in most games, honestly. With uh, that extra wildcard policy slot, they can be so flexible uh, in their governments and uh, extra culture, like you said, good unique unit, uh, good potential to get um, the Golden Age. It's all around very good. Um, it just needs some, like, it just needs a uh, good land to sim and maybe an enemy to go against. <laughs> we'll see. I'm, uh, I, I want to see the land before I make, you know, any kind of uh, other judgment. I want to see the land. Because honestly, except Portugal, I like to play all of these sims. Absolutely. All of these sims are incredible. Uh, why don't you like Portugal? It's too casino style for me. It's. Mm. Uh, it's you need a high roll. C dependent. Yeah, C dependent, I guess. Even Spain without its continent split, maybe you can make it work. It's not going to be amazing, but still, you're going to be up there. With Portugal, if you're running internals, oh man, that's such a bad day. Yeah, that's true. Because like, Portugal kind of is a, is a rule breaker save, which means if they don't get the opportunity to break their rule, then they kind of just, you know, they're not great. Yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry, my mic got stuck open there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I think my game like lagged out yeah, for a split I mean, second. 
I thought it was only for me. <laughs> he just heard the. Pfft. It's fine. <laughs> so what do we have? Uh, Portugal. Let's look first. I want to see Portugal. Where is Portugal? I'm finding it. Finding it. Oh, wait. Portugal next to Japan. Oh, I mean that's not going to be good for Portugal. Portugal next to Japan. Okay. And no city state. Look at that. No city state to trade. Oh dear. Why did I... they leave uh, Barbs on? Oh, I'm I'm still Was voting. That I think I they know, talked about saw. turning off Barbs. I don't know. And they had um, a conversation about this. Oh no! I think my game is crashing. I get. Will I be able to rejoin? Hello. Yes. I think my game is crashing. Should I? Will I, will I rejoin? No, no. Why? What do you mean it's crashing? You know, like it makes a little window circle. <laughs> I mean, w let it load. All right. I just won't touch it. I'll leave it alone. Until it breaks the message or something. Yeah. I see you connected to the game, so it should load at some point. All right. We'll give it some time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I can't see the game right now. So you're going to have to be my eyes right now. Hang on. Let me open your stream. I can see what you're looking at. Oh, I can uh, stream for you. One sec. There you go. No, I see. Uh, I was looking at uh, Spain. He has uh, three pastures in the capital with a 3 2 banana to work at the beginning, so some extra food. Uh, no reef tile, no reef fish tile actually in his uh, early tiles. So, not, probably not going to be as great to go uh, builder first. Uh, other than that, he is gonna be relatively free sim. He does have uh, Gorgo on his east side, but behind mountains, so not gonna be that big of a uh, that, that big of a problem. Oh, I see the game still didn't load. That's weird. Oh yeah, my game is now crashed, unfortunately. Um, okay. Wait, it fully crashed. Okay. Yeah, it's doing the save six is not responding thing. Well, that's a rip. One day, one day we'll get a Civ game that doesn't crash. I swear. Plus, plus. <clears throat> uh, I got people asking me if um, Spain has a continent split, and no, the answer is no, he doesn't. No, unfortunately, Spain is not on a continent split. Okay, clicking on the lobby link. Joining the game. Ooh, let's go. We will get a Civ game that doesn't crash when potatoes fly. Listen, I don't like the tone of some people in chat here, okay? You guys need to calm down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Everything is good. <laughs> it's not fine, Michael. It's not fine. <laughs> We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let, let's see what the other spawns. I've watched um, Spain a long time. Let's see. Bestomi does have a 3 to banana as well. He's going to grow quite fast. Uh, multiple tiles to work with some extra production. Uh, doesn't have a lot of mountains, but I do see a strong Temenanki over here to the north. And the Lady of the Ridge and Marshes could be quite strong also, uh, especially on so many flood floodable terrain tiles uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 15 oh 16 more production out of that i like uh so the south looks the like mama leto with the other greece greases are actually quite close to each other and looks like mama leto is gonna have a lot now of uh, chops his own possible at and there we go you joined back in? Very I am time. back in. I'm loaded in and ready. So I knew there was something suspicious when it was taking too long for me to load. So which save are we looking at now? Uh, I was looking at the Greece uh, bottom left. It's near the Tundra. It's uh, Pericles. 
I think it's Pericles, actually. Yeah, it is Pericles. Oh, yeah. I like his starting location. He's got two food, three production hills as one of his first tiles. And he's got lovely two, two tiles. Plenty of forests for chops as well. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I have to point out that is like at the moment, none of the sieves are actually next to each okay. other uh, with their teammates. As in, we got Spain enemy with uh, Greece, Greece enemy with the other Greece. Uh, both Greeces are going to be enemies of uh, Rome in the middle. Oh man, you yeah, know, we are talking about that uh, spawn in the middle. <laughs> oh my god, Rome is gonna be in the middle. <laughs> they have enemies on every side and a barb camp right yes. on their border. Yes, at least they have a good spawn. Like, both of his uh, early series are gonna have uh, two two bases, or actually, his second one is gonna be a two three one on that uh, gypsum. That's a lot of uh, early tempo absolutely i think by the way you can stop sharing your screen i think it's causing the crackling thing again oh it is oh. yeah sorry i uh, sorry to take you is out of your flow now? yeah it sounds good now um <clears throat> so i think the the next person to talk about then is the Khmer. how do you like their studying location they've they they settled on a um three food tile somehow they settled on uh, cattle <clears throat> Khmer, 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 Khmer is here yes they did settle on uh, cattle uh okay I well, I mean, I mean, give me a second. Yeah, no I guess worries. I like uh, I like the settle on in the north uh, on that marsh style, uh, and I like oh, actually. Oh my God, look at the west settle on the on the spice style, spice and bananas. Oh my, oh my. Yeah, that 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 a city settle there will absolutely jump out of the gate and become extremely powerful extremely quickly. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my game this time. Is it crash there... or Doesn't look like it crashed. Oh. It stopped working. I was in the middle of changing. Uh... Oh well, wait for the program to respond. <sighs> well, I'll try to keep. I'll try to keep keep the talking going here. Um, I'm having a look at the Cree over here next, and they have settled on. And they've actually settled on flatland, despite the fact that they had a Plains Hill sheep available to them. Now I don't know if they moved their settler. But maybe they just didn't value the movement as much. Um, and they have actually, I, I, I'd say of, of the starts I've seen here, I'd probably look at the Crees as maybe one of the best in terms of like just the starting tiles. Um, but in terms of expansion, like where they can settle to, I don't like the territory. They've got a lot of marsh areas and a couple of rivers. Um, and then a lot of plains hills. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I uh, manually clicked it. Um, I think out of all of those pawns, the best one was uh, the Khmer one that you showed me. Oh, the, those spice tiles with the bananas, so much food at the beginning. And he had mountains to defend himself with, a lot of rivers to put his uh, holy sites on. That uh, seems like a good uh, opening. Absolutely. I, I really like the Khmer star. And I think I think I like I think I think if I had to choose, I would either take the Khmer or the Greek, uh, the, the Pericles start, I think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there are a lot of the Wait, what's that? please do not pause the game. Yeah, yeah, don't pause. Don't pause. It's fine. E we wait, correct? Please do not pause the game. Okay, just making sure. Ah, they were having a bit of confusion over whether or not they pause for you. Um uh, yeah, but we've got Port Portugal as well on this east side. And their start looks pretty okay. They have started coastally, which is nice, and their teammate is Rome, who <laughs> is a very long way away from them. So Portugal is going to have to be fighting for this coastline basically alone uh, up against uh, a Japan. Who, and I believe I'm correct here in saying this, but Japan is also a city that really likes the coastline. And there's only one or two cities that can fit between Portugal and Japan. So I think these guys might start bumping heads sooner rather than later. Yeah, it could definitely be. Okay, there we go. Loading in. Uh, one one issue I've been having, Michael, is sometimes my like observer screen like shows me the fog of war, and I have to like click on my observer. Is there a way to fix that? Uh, no, I don't know what why that happens. It it happens to me as well. Uh, sometimes it just gets a uh, weird uh, information. Yeah, that's no problem. As long as as long as I uh, you know, if there's nothing I can do, there's nothing I can do. Also, I would like to point out that the map down here looks a bit like a, 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 an Among Us crew member. <laughs> that's the kind of shape. <laughs> <clears throat> it's pretty sus. Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, loading back in. Yeah, nice. Wait, game just disappeared? No, it's fine. It's here. 
too many screens with the same uh, sieve on. Uh, yeah. On. You know, are, are you back in the game and can you see what's happening? Yes, I am. I am. I am. I was just going to talk to you a little bit about here. It looks like the city-states have spawned exclusively to the north and south of the map. Um, so is that normal? Because it, it looks like the tundra is almost completely just filled with city-states on both ends. Uh, so that happens because of uh, BBS. It uh, pushes, like the <clears throat> balance starts, month, it pushes um, out the um, uh, city-states nine mm -hmm. times apart from the uh, player civilizations. So that's why you get them uh, in the tundra. Okay, yeah, no, that uh, makes sense. The city states get placed after the uh, players, as far as I know. And gotcha. Also, oh my god! Oh my god! This Kree spawn. Remember, we were talking about that Kree bonus with the internals. Let's let's count this these uh, pastures. One, two, three, four pastures with. Oh no, five. Uh, five I count pastures, five pastures. Yeah. Yeah, with. Uh, Two, three camps. <laughs> now that is crazy because they're going to get plus one food and gold for every trade route. Yes. Two or eight from the city. Food, eight gold for each trade route. Ooh, <laughs> that is a crazy, crazy amount. Yeah, I I don't know what's going to happen over here, but uh, synth is probably very happy at the moment <laughs> she's like no don't remap this no no it's fine <laughs> <laughs> a minus to remap and, and she's actually cracking out her very first settler and that's something i expect most people to be doing at this point either working on their second scout or starting their first settler yeah uh, usually actually Cree does want to get out at least one or two scouts uh, well two or three scouts actually before uh, getting the settler because maybe maybe they can do some work with the Oxytaus. Uh they do have 20 strength so you know they're just faster uh, warriors without uh, very good promotions um, yeah there we go they just bought one for her uh, bought an Oxytau yeah uh, and that's going to be that useful for getting error score as well yeah other than that i think she's gonna be extremely happy here sitting on the coast she's gonna find out that she's she doesn't have anyone to fight on the coast uh Khmer to the north is probably not gonna pose a problem for the early game and japan will a hundred percent fight uh, portugal yeah that's what i was thinking portugal and japan are gonna fight over this coastline here because yeah. japan doesn't have much room to expand to the south and japan is a coastal sieve oh my god and i just noticed byzantium is to the north of portugal as well so how can how can he play this like if he goes north he ends up in tagma range if he goes south he ends up in uh, japan's samurai range this is this is such a weird spot for portugal <laughs> oh yeah this is kind of scary actually i think uh japan and, and byzantium are probably the only saves that have spawned in a way that they could kill one person and then their teams are united. Yeah. Indeed. It's uh and this is this is what I hate about Portugal by the way. Like you end up with a no um a no bonus civilization in between su such other strong ones and you can't get anything done between them. It's like I don't know. It's the worst possible scenario that you can feel when it comes to the matchups maybe yeah. in a team game on seven seas or, or somewhere sure you know you're gonna have like more teammates protecting you and so on but in a 2v2 or a 1v1 or in a, you know i would say even in ffas it's just ah i don't know one out of maybe 10 lobbies you're gonna get an amazing spawn and you're gonna do well and in the other nine out of ten you're gonna die heroically <laughs> you know <laughs> that's very very true um you just you just i just don't think they can survive on their own they need backup <laughs> I know, right? yeah. maybe on a naval map you could justify them um now another point here is the only other team that have a positioning advantage here is Greece and Persia, uh, the Gorgo Greece specifically, because they have uh, a pretty much a straight shot between their two cities. If you were these players, would you consider like trying to fill that space in between you so you can reinforce each other, or do you expand away from each other to try and grab more land? I would definitely try to um, uh, close that land so we can uh, trade. Uh, 
but at the same time honestly it's only gonna work well for uh, greece because uh, persia will work internals anyway like it's such an incentive to work those uh, extra culture points and call points that you're not gonna want to uh, trade with your partner um they, they do have a very good settle over there on the geothermal it's gonna turn into a two to one tile extra gold from the coco everything looks to be nice oh that is true there is a really nice geothermal settle over there yeah the only problem is it's gonna take a while to get there it's one two three four five six seven eight turns to plant a city there yeah that's a that's a long it's a long walk for a settler yeah. um he's also gonna need to get the positioning on um, the south on rome of course uh, rome legions versus immortals uh, are gonna actually have quite a quite a bit of fun over here uh if they do go against each other uh, i do prefer the um, immortals over the legions but you know it, anything can happen uh, what i do see is uh, he does have another gold filled uh, space to the south uh between the two truffle tiles there's like a two two but ah never mind he's going north oh he didn't scout the south no he did scout the south i don't know what okay sure maybe he just wants to secure the north it's more safer i'm not sure that's a good question because the north okay sure you're gonna get some two twos you're gonna be a bit safer but uh you're not gonna get the extra gold you're not gonna get the resources you need i don't know it feels like um at the moment he's uh doing a safety settle without any big reason to do so yeah weird yeah <laughs> Is this is this like a greed thing? Like he just wants to play it safe? I, I can't imagine why you would, or maybe there's a, is there something over there that he spotted that he really wants? Oh, I guess he doesn't know about the geothermal to his left. Otherwise, he would beeline it. Yeah, I guess so. But that wouldn't stop him from settling those truffle tiles. <clears throat> That's true. On a truffle tile, and then just you buy the other one plus six gold per turn. Very nice, very nice. Extra amenity that's true it, uh, you would be cranking out gold extremely early here into the game yep uh, i do want to take a look at the um, strategic resources because last game you saw how important it was for them to get there early and they didn't <laughs> so yes. let's see do they have it i see spain yes horses and iron uh, i see uh, pericles mamaleto does have access to iron horses are going to be a bit further away than he would ideally want okay but still can get them uh rome iron and horses should be fine gorgo already improved horses i don't see iron iron is too far away on the west side this is uh okay this is gonna be a bit of a problem but can you make do with horses or do you need that iron like that iron is absolutely required you can make do with uh, horses but if you want to go for uh, for example if you want to go knights you're going to need iron right and so the next year units are both going to need iron i accept if you're going to go courses which i wouldn't really you know i wouldn't really uh, suggest you go for so I would say, yes, you do need iron, not immediately, but definitely in the long term. Uh, also, if somebody wants to uh, go iron working, that's the only way to actually get the boost, right? Yeah, that's true. There's a, there's a, just a lot of things. I think, you know, if you had to choose, um, I feel like horses are more, are better early game because they have that nice extra food and production. But I, I do feel like yeah. iron, man, that is the one that you want to be taking into the mid game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, horses as a unit also is uh, quite good. Uh, it's um, it's fast, it's maneuverable. You get to move around the zone of control and so on. Uh, while iron, uh, iron units like uh, swordsman are going to be clunky, uh, slow, and uh, they do get stopped quite a bit. Uh, but you prefer the iron units just because they're tougher. Yeah, because their promotions are better. Uh, they they get better benefits from things like oligarchy and a lot more civ bonuses interact with melee units so the the, the yeah. potential for swordsmen is just higher generally exactly exactly no oh, we're, we're gonna need to see or i i don't really <clears throat> see any kind of early wars except japan and the uh, poor old portugal over here i was gonna figure out uh, really quickly why you don't need to pick portugal on these kind of maps 
Um, yeah, Japan already has a galley. He's, he's already making galleys, and so is Portugal. I think they might know <laughs> that what's coming they here. Might know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of them has the hundred percent card. No, both of them I think have. Okay, the maritime industries card. You but know, okay, so oh, Cree Cree uh, has iron, has horses. Uh, Rome has iron and horses. Persia iron horses three tiles away okay oh man i i really don't understand the city he set up gordian to the northeast no i'm i'm gonna be real with you that looks terrible it's not even next to that natural wonder now i don't mean to criticize too much but i don't think i would settle there would you uh not for my first set <laughs> i mean i would at some point but not for my first one uh, i don't know uh, I would no, because thought he, he wants to go on the rice on the top left, you know, like top left rice, extra food, you get some four, like two twos, you get some access to a lot of uh, sugar tiles. Sure. But yeah, I, it's, it's just a little bit confusing. I, I would have expected something the similar, either heading towards the truffles, like you said earlier, heading towards the rice. Um, yeah. Now, one thing. Um, oh God, my brain just, I, I evaporated that thought. Never mind. What were we saying? Uh, my stream is uh, making me, uh, pay attention to Gordian that he settled on horses. And indeed I, I do remember horses over there or something. Uh, well, I don't know if he has animal husbandry, but he should. Really? He settled uh, on horses. Oh, Basil, by the way, already getting his uh, holy site up and uh, getting the promotion and uh, getting those projects in he really wants crusade maybe he heard us you know when we were making fun that he's not gonna get it <laughs> yeah he's absolutely like, oh, no i'll show you i'll show you <laughs> <laughs> because and this is like this is showing a lot of commitment towards a crusade based play right because typically yeah. players will get two settlers before they commit to anything yeah indeed and he, uh... he only went for one right yeah, he only went for one, but I guess he just wants to get uh, the religion and that's it. He, he wants to you know, guarantee he's going to have a um, crusade and not really pay attention to anything. Oh my God, that scout, if it, set, if it pillages his holy site, I'm going to laugh for a day. Oh like, my God. <laughs> See, he's doing the patented Potato McWhiskey hyper greed build where you go scout, settler, holy site, and then run projects and then immediately get pillaged by a barbarian and then you press Alt F4 and you leave the game. <laughs> restart map, restart map. <laughs> I need a remap. Too many barbs spawned near me. Did it stream? <laughs> you know, like nobody saw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, out of yeah, curiosity, yeah. sometimes you have natural wonders in the game. I have a relatively large impact on the outcome. Like we saw that uh, Mount Roraima kind of, you know, yeah. dictated some early warfare between people. Do you see any uh, natural wonders here that will make a difference? I, I see Matu Tapila to the north of Nazca, and I see um, the Pantanal to the east of Gordian. There's like a few natural wonders here. Any of them you think matter? I didn't see any that uh, actually uh, is close enough to the players to influence the game that much. Uh, Mount Vesuvia, for example, sure, it's great, but it's just not going to be game breaking. Neither was, I have to say, neither was Roraima last game. It didn't give Ethiopia that big of a boost there. Uh, it just made him war his opponent <laughs> from an early stage. Yeah, exactly. And there is a bit of a danger of like, if you get something really, really cool early, other players are just going to be like, well, I'll just try and kill him now before he gets too strong. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess you get some uh, negative attention over there. Um, there is a crater uh, lake to the north of Portugal, which I guess, I, I mean, I guess that's something you want to spawn near so you can get a fast pantheon. Oh, look at that Japanese galley. Oh my God. So many open seas with reefs over here. I'm expecting some <clears throat> war declarations here. I, I think Japan is just going to wait until these galleys keep on attacking Portugal. These barbs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is like exactly where Japan wants to have Portugal right now. Um, Portugal does have relatively def well defended coastal cities, but Japan has that plus five combat strength in coastal waters. So no matter what Portugal really does, I think Japan has a bit of an upper hand here. Yeah, 100%. It's just a matter of uh, getting units. 
Let's see, Bishop moving back. Uh, he doesn't have enough units though, and I don't see him benefiting from a lot of uh, production. Nor does he get them fast enough. It's a bit of a interesting development here for uh, Japan. I would have thought uh, he would uh, rush this a bit more. You can see 100% Portugal uh, realized the danger he's in, and he's getting as many galleys as possible. Yeah, and and this is definitely like sure this is what you have to do to defend, but as Portugal, this does not feel good because this is all production that could have been invested into builders, settlers, districts, all sorts of things that actually increase your empire. When you're forced to defend like this, it kind of puts you on the back foot. Yeah, exactly. Any kind of war, it's going to be a problem. Even if you don't really war, the production spent on something else other than settlers is just so problematic. lost forever yeah it's just, it's gone forever and then you know the other thing is if you spend a whole bunch of money making an army you kind of start thinking well i need to get value out of this and then you start looking for neighbors to fight yeah i do notice he did manage to get god of the sea here so if he's gonna get a builder he's gonna get uh, some nice and juicy tiles to work the turtles the crabs very nice very nice uh, he does have a strong second uh, settle to the north of his capital, uh, but it's a, there's a Byzantium scout over there just uh, trying to fish that out of the water. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to be you've got to be wondering here that the Japan and Byzantium player are definitely talking about future plans about killing Portugal um, because he's like smack bam in the middle of their empires. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did also notice uh, Khmer went for River Goddess this time. He's going to get the extra amenity and he's going to get some uh, extra adjacency into those uh, holy sites. Not a lot, but it's enough to make a difference. A second city next to those bananas. Look at that, man. Already three pops, a second city. Four pop, actually, this turn. He's yeah, and, and as big as his capital. Speaking of holy sites, Byzantium just popped down their great prophet here and they're, they're currently founding their religion. So it looks like the ah. Khmer wanted to go for early holy sites, but they didn't want to get first religion. They just wanted to get that faith out. Let's see. Krabby Pat. Oh, wait. Is he making fun of us? <laughs> he what might be. Choral music with lay ministry. Now that is not, not the build. The wanna... <laughs> not the religion you want to rush for. Wait, what? Did he... Did he take it away from Khmer, maybe? Is he trolling oh, us? What is happening? I mean, he's trolling himself right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I sure. I guess he's going to go Sacred Path. He's, uh, I don't know what to say about this, honestly. It's like, okay, sure. Some extra culture, some extra faith. Yeah, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm honestly, I'm at a bit of a loss of words here. I mean, it's a good religion, but... Is this the Civ to have this religion on? Is he going to show us the power of a Sim City Byzantium? Uh, does such a thing even exist? No. <laughs> I mean, but Khmer no. with Feed the World will, will exist, and it it is extremely powerful. Khmer right. with uh, an extra district to build over his already amazing uh, food generation. That's, oh my God, that's unbelievably strong. Yeah, I'm blown away by this. This is this is the kind of gameplay that I was hoping to see. I was hoping to see people do strange stuff. But one of the things that's worrying me here is <laughs> Byzantium is beset upon all sides by barbarians. You've got a barb camp to the south, a barb camp to the east, two barb camps to the north, and a barb camp to the west across the mountains. In fact, I don't think the biggest threat to Byzantium right now is barbarians. Then himself. Yeah, and himself picking random ass religions. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you don't take care of your barbs. You know, there's a, a chance that some of the, the barb camps that you met but didn't uh, actually um, uh, take out are going to start spamming units like there's no tomorrow. Look at that Eastern barb <clears throat> with two, three warriors, a slinger, a uh, spearman, and a scout out of it. Oh, my yeah it's it's <laughs> and it's only going to get worse as the game goes on as technology increases they'll start spawning swordsmen and crossbowmen and then you'll really wish you had dealt with them exactly well i do see most people did uh, most players did manage to get the uh, three series out where uh seven turns away from getting um, 
eight turns away from getting this uh, next Anna. And I think most of them this time will get, uh, if not all of them, will get uh, their uh, Golden Age anyway. Right. Uh, Joe, the third here with uh, four, three points remaining. He yeah, I think. Camp, so it should be fine. It should be fine. I, I think once you have a partner who can feed you a little bit of error score, I think that makes your life a little bit easier when it comes to getting your golden age. And it kind of enables you to play a little bit greedier. Yeah, 100%. Uh, one, one thing I would like to point out here is uh, Greece, uh, uh, at least the Gorgo Greece, has got a hoplite out and is making more. Now, is this like maybe kind of designs upon an early war or is this just trying to deal with barbarians? That's a good question. I don't think he has anything to war at the beginning. Uh, he did. Did he kill some barbarians to the east? I don't know what he did there. But I see a warrior with a level one, so I guess uh, he did try to kill a camp or did kill a camp. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would. I would see this as just like, hey, this is just like a get rid of the barbs around me. I've got a strong unit. I'll get some error score out of it. And also, you know, hoplites with the right bonuses, they can stay relevant pretty late into the game. Oh, yeah. I think they got nerfed here, by the way, in the new BBG. They they only get a half support bonus or something, uh, or seven support bonus instead of ten. Yeah, it's plus you seven know, they, now, and that's actually yeah. a pretty big nerf from plus ten. Yeah, it is. They don't get as relevant uh, late game as <clears throat> they were before. Uh, Still definitely... Honestly, they were killing people left, right, and center at the beginning of the game, let alone later <laughs> in the game. <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely problematic. And I'm definitely noticing that there is sort of two distinct styles here um, to how people play the early game. There is the sort of like greedy safe play where you go for three cities and get some districts. And then there's kind of the I need to do something fast play where you go for two cities and then build something like Portugal. And Japan both went for two cities and tried to get galleys. And then, uh, you know, Byzantium went for two cities to get a holy site out. And so did Khmer. So it's interesting that even though these all, all these players are playing at a really high level, where you'd expect that build orders would be pretty similar, there's actually a lot of diversity in what they're doing. Yeah, and it's all depending on their uh, land and uh, what kind of resources they have available. Uh, they're trying to mix that uh, into their build orders. Uh, that's actually uh, a good point over there that you're making. I've seen and heard, you know, people come onto the stream and ask me, oh, but I mean, can, can't you give me like the build orders of um, the most, like, you know, the most used stuff or um, the best uh, build order for a civilization? Uh, there's not going to be one. There's always going to be you adapting to the game. You know, you're going to always need to use the game mechanics to be as powerful as, as you can be using the land, using the civ bonuses, using wonders, using uh, civics and so on. Yeah, that's 100%. It, that, I get asked that question all the time as well. It's like, hey, what, how, do you have any build orders? Do you know what to do? And it's like, it's hard to actually give you a build order because I could give you a really good build order, but it might only be relevant in like 10% of your games. Exactly. I mean, you can't have the same build order on uh, naval spawns versus land spawns versus tundra spawns. <laughs> like, it's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the opening, you know, like you're going to get, uh, okay, scout, scout, uh, settler. Okay, I mean, sure, let's do that. Scout, scout, settler. That's it. That's where it stops. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole build order. <laughs> and even that doesn't cover the entire, because sometimes you might want to go builder. You build their scout because, yeah. you know, if you're coastal and you have really good fish resources, you know, there's lots of reasons you might not go uh, scout, scout, settler. Um, but, but taking a look here, uh, it looks like Rome is going for early campuses. Um, is this a usual sort of play for Rome or is it just down to the fact that he has pretty good campuses? I see he's got a plus four in Antium and a plus three in Rome. Uh, he's going for uh, the pen, brush, and voice strategy, uh, getting the science from the campus, getting uh, some culture along with it and some gold. Uh, it's, I guess, a standard opening. Uh, but honestly, he's a little bit late with his um, uh, the second expansion phase. Now, this is... a. Uh, uh, basically what Creed did uh, last game instead of uh, expanding uh, double expanding right now he just stopped and started building uh, campuses or something else this is a must uh, well not 100% a mistake but this is uh, something different than we've seen um, uh, in other players for example uh, how um, Kabachok played it with Aztec 
immediately after he got uh, early empire he put on the card and he started doing his uh, second tier cities yeah he didn't wait around he just spammed out cities um yeah so you, do you think rome like with rome's position they could have probably cracked out like two more settlers pretty safely here maybe even three yeah. and then gone for districts do you think that might have been an option for them <clears throat> A hundred percent. I think uh, it would be easy to actually go for the horse towards uh, Persia. You get the positioning on Persia. Uh, you then have a very strong city to the southeast on that uh, gypsum. So I, th I think uh, they could have definitely, pre or I mean, he could have definitely settled at least uh, two, three other cities uh, in safety distance. Yeah. And also, he's also got barbs knocking on his door, which is kind of a little bit of a dangerous game to play when you're building districts, because those barbs could just walk in and pillage them. Yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully he's going to get some uh, units to defend himself with. We'll see. I, I do notice Persia did go for commercials first. And of course, well, this is I understand, because they do want uh, those uh, trade routes as fast as possible, but didn't go for those um, truffle tiles that we were talking about. Yeah, I'm still a little bit baffled by that one because those truffle tiles are like, <laughs> it's hard to pass them up. Look how much gold he would have. I That's know. six gold there from them. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, another, what, 50%, uh, uh, well, 45% more gold. Yeah, he's on, um, he's on 14 gold. So yeah, that would bring him up to 20. You'd feel pretty good to be on 20 gold at turn 27. Yep. Going Magnus first, I do notice he went for uh, CD Patreon Goddess, and I guess that's uh, one subject that we also need to uh, take a look at. Uh, somebody was also pointing out, Kree has a plus seven tour, right? With all of those pastures and, uh, camp, uh, and camps, and she did manage to get Goddess of the Hunters of Pantheon. Look at look at those two for two tiles, three for two tiles are starting to appear here in Mikisivwachik. Oh man. Oh, that is huge, especially later on when the Kree is going to be able to start planting down the Mequaps. Now, a plus seven Art Temple of Artemis, that is seven amenities. You're basically erasing the need to worry about amenities in your capital city at that point. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I think she's also going to take out uh, Hong Kong here. I see a horse coming off from uh, Mr. Hisipik, the eastern uh, city. Ooh, that would make sense, Did you see actually. Those tiles, though. Did you see the tiles? These were all um, burned down to a crisp and then regrown. Damn, that is some serious <laughs> look right there. What is this? These yields are insane. I know, right? She can get another city on the cotton. This is a very good spawn for her. Mm, I'm really. I can't believe Khmer snatched a builder from Hong Kong right in front of her face, though. I was going to that say, is... that's a pretty good builder snatch that he pulled off there. This is like the heist of the century. Yeah. And he's also for our settling Cree. Oh my God. Alcoholic over here is uh, trying his luck today. We'll see. So is he going to go straight down to that river? or is... Yeah, he he has to. He's playing the Cree. Yeah, they, yeah. they live on rivers. I think... This is a very aggressive play. And th the Cree are going to notice this and they're not going to be happy, are they? No, <laughs> I'm sure no. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a quite... Uh, uh, I think it, it seems actually will be quite happy to take uh, those cities to the north. And that's where she wanted to expand anyway, so why not? Yeah, I'm it's, just it's... thinking she's gonna wait a while to finish the temple of artemis maybe get some uh, more uh, settlers before uh, more uh, units i mean here's the thing uh, synth is already committing to take hong kong with horsemen it seems and once hong kong is dead it's it's not that far to to turn around and just knock down that that Khmer city to the north if it's not well defended yeah for sure Three tens for the next era, for the ancient one. And we do have everybody in a golden age here. Well, With that is nice to see. Yeah, for sure. Three cities, Portugal. Hermione did manage to get another one. I do also notice uh, Japan stayed on two. And he did go for harbors and campuses. I'm yeah. I'm worried about this. It's it's a very unorthodox kind of play. I feel like these are uh, are they are, are they kind of stuck in an all in one v one here? Is that what's happening here? 
I mean, you would assume if it's a one v one and it's an all in that Japan will get more boats. Um, but in the meantime, I see a settler coming up from Kyoto. It's he's gonna try to expand. I'm a, I don't know why he went for um, God of War and Plunder. Uh, maybe I, well, I guess God of Craftsman would have, wouldn't have been available or something. Let me check. Pantheon here, Pantheon here, fertility rights, maybe Greece. Greece went for Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. Awesome city, by the way, with the Temenanki. Uh, Byzantium is Sacred Path. Khmer. So nobody went God of Craftsman. Okay, interesting. An I interesting decision. Go God of Craftsman. Yeah. Uh, look, at, look at how many horses he has in uh, Kyoto. And in the northern city, he would have had... That would have actually made a third city to the north viable, right? The the one with the two horses and an iron tile. Oh, for sure, absolutely, because that's a ton of production and a ton of extra trickle of fate as well. Um, yeah, I'm curious here, by the way. A, a second religion has been founded by Khmer, and it is um, a feed a feed the world religion, which is kind of what you expect from Khmer. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I think I really like their position in the game right now. They're basically playing the exact kind of game that you want to be playing as Khmer. Yes. Actually, uh, I, I do have to point out most of the players do like uh, choral music on Khmer rather than uh, Feed the World. And I get it because it synergizes with the extra food that you get from uh, the holy sites anyway. Uh, but Feed the World is just, uh, in my book, it's so strong. And we're going to see it right now. He's going to have 10 pop series so fast and He's, uh, it's not going to be funny. Uh, the only one that is as uh, strong as he is, is a synth. Synth at the moment with the, um, uh, not only Temple of Artemis, but with those amazing internal trade routes, that is going to be such, such a good spawn for a synth and game. Getting the second trader next turn from Mistahi. And I do see, wait, she lost a trader? I think she lost a trader at some point. It might have got pillaged by a barb. That would make sense. Yeah. Let's rip. Uh, rip in Pepperino. Oh, uh, Hong Kong uh, got uh, back his uh, builder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Well done, Hong Kong. Yeah. Look at that. It wasn't the snatch of the century. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sound of the police. They rolled up. They've, they've taken back the builders. Your kidnapping has been prevented. Yeah, indeed. Uh, someone who who I feel like is hiding away in the corner here that we haven't talked about it much yet is Spain here. They're going for audience chamber as Spain, despite the fact that they have all this room to settle. Is, is audience chamber the choice all the time, or or what do you think most is that a mistake? I, I think most of the time is the choice because of that. Uh, it, first of all, it does allow you to get uh, higher population faster, uh, extra housing, extra food, and then it gives you that extra amenity to keep your uh, population happy. So m most of the players will prefer that. Also, I don't really see Noob having an enormous amount of land to settle. So he's probably a bit wary to just keep on settling on the coast more than two cities south. So I think he's going to be on maybe seven to ten cities here at the maximum. And then he's going to need to sim to win. As in, get them taller, get them... Uh, with more districts in them, uh, finish those uh, harbor shipyards and so on. I do like his coast though. He has a plus three in the capital with a plus four harbor in Bilbao. Faster production on shipyards. It's going to be very well here. Very good. Yeah, sorry about that. I think my game just crashed here. But I, I also like um, Spain's position. I, I guess I can see your point though that maybe it's not the best move here for him to, um, to go Ancestral Hall and spam out settlers. Okay. Because uh, audience chamber gives you that ability, especially to get to that, that seven population much easier and get that third district in your cities. And that's why a lot of people move their um, governors around to make sure they can hit that number, don't they? Yeah. Put it up. I turned on the stream. Uh, yeah, audience chamber is uh, so important if you do manage to get uh, those governors. Uh, I, I also want to point out something else. Uh, People do like to specialize the governors a little bit more than just the one or two uh, uh, points in them. And sometimes that is an op a counter option for uh, audience. Cause, you know, you need to get as many as possible for audience. Uh, uh, sorry, what, what was that? You, some people, they prefer not to specialize or they prefer to specialize? 
to specialize. So, for example, on Pingala, you want to get uh, three options in. You want to get uh, uh, double uh, points, the 100%, the grants promotion, and you want to get the researcher promotion. That's uh, three uh, governor titles. With uh, maybe you want Liang second, and then you're going to want uh, Moksha fourth. So you get the curator. That's just not going to be uh, easy to get to if uh, you're going to go audience. You need all of the other ones. Yeah, I get you. That makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. Just loading back into the game here. Okay. From humble beginnings, you have shown remarkable growth. Oh, I wish I got a coffee. I'm yawning, man. I'm yawning. It's been a long day so far. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is and it's uh, another two days oh my god it's unbelievable tomorrow, how are you another two two. Uh, oh, you're starting at 10 a.m again tomorrow uh not 10 a.m it's uh, i think it's 1500 for me let me actually double check my schedule oh my god <laughs> how are we gonna get enough sleep michael uh, i don't know <laughs> i you know what i did i tried to, like i took a break for the last two days and i just slept you know, I, I got as much sleep as possible. Yeah, you're like a camel storing up water, except you stored up s yeah. sleep in your hump. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that's how that works uh, <laughs> biologically, but I'll take your word for it. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's better to at least rest a little bit if I want to take an, like, do an effort. So might as well. No, I totally, totally rest up before a big day. Um, yeah. Stonehenge coming out here from Byzantium. It's just been dropped down. Oh, and he did manage to spread that sec uh, that uh, religion into the second city. Okay, six turns for that uh, Stonehenge. So he might actually get the uh, crusade here. I'm confused. Uh, wh what? He already has a religion. Why would he go Stonehenge? Uh, for the um, evangelization, for the, yeah, evangelized beliefs, extra, the third belief. The th oh, so... Stonehenge gives you an evangelization if you've already founded a religion? Yes, it gives you a, a apostle. You use it however you want. Oh, I see. Well, that actually adds an extra bit of relevance to Stonehenge that I wasn't expecting there. That seems quite powerful. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, oh. Uh, Khmer actually has a Cree Okchi town. Oh next to uh, his uh, settler, actually. never mind, he just shift entered away. And uh, since was a bit too late on that button. He was, he might have been able to snatch up that settler and, or, or she might have been able to snatch up that settler. And I I think there's, there's few things as tilting as losing a settler in Civ. <laughs> Somebody is sitting on your wand <clears throat> that you really want to have. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know what I think. Getting his getting his settler sniped, uh, having someone just sit on your wonder. There's there's a few things that would really really annoy me. Yeah, losing builders. Look at Hong Kong. <laughs> just lost two builders. And yeah, there are there are quite a few things that <laughs> throw you off balance. I mean, these horsemen have already paid for themselves coming in here, sweeping up a couple of builders. Hong Kong's military is completely out of position, and these horsemen once they cross that river, that's it. I think it's lights out for Hong Kong. Yeah, I think uh, Hong Kong is uh, definitely going to be doomed. Uh, and Hong Kong did also take care of that barb camp to the, cor and the to the north, which is going to be quite nice. Uh, I don't know if he's going to fully finish it, but it looks like he will. Yeah, it would be nice. Occasionally, the AI does you a favor and gets rid of a barb camp. I find usually what they do is they just completely fold, lose all their military, and let their lands get overrun by barbarians. But hey, that's just me playing single player. You never know what happens in multiplayer. <laughs> Oh look at uh, look at Rome. He's uh, having a bar problem from his west side. You know what? I think we're witnessing the fall of Rome live right here. The barbarians are at the gates. They're knocking. They want in. They want tea, and they want the head of the emperor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's fine. I hope uh, you're not gonna desync. There we go. You didn't. <laughs> Yeah, if I started desyncing this early, I might have to go. Uh, I might have to leave. Um, 
I, I feel like we're seeing a bit of a repeat of the last game because I'm seeing a, a really thick and fat Persia and I don't know where he got all these cities from but he's getting more and more every turn and the same is true for Gorgo these two players are on the same team and I think they're feeling really confident because they're so close to each other uh, probably you know, well Greece did play it uh, slow and did manage to get uh, the second expansion age uh, quite quickly I'm still not seeing the Persia fully adapting to the land over here I think he could have had a bit more tempo but again that maybe that's just me um, I also see he has another city to the northeast of uh, Gordian over there so five cities uh, Persia would be quite nice now is the time to get those extra trade routes and work them uh, I do see he's already on uh, one okay now uh, is Rome though gonna interact with Persia here I do see uh, El or El Ro here uh, going to the northeast with uh, one of his uh, settlers there yeah Doesn't that's army, but... yeah that settler is well oh. on its way to cause some problems oh this is where God of Craftsman is Rome, Rome. okay that's why so he has his uh, horses with a 3-3 three, three. well I mean in this case he might not want to settle the horses because you know really good uh, production on them yeah, definitely. I mean, a God of Craftsman is one of my favorite pantheons. Not because I think it's good, but just because it's like, ugh, I can't find a pantheon. God of Craftsman. You take it when you can't, you don't have any good choices. Because it just always gives you a little bit of value. Yeah, indeed. I also like uh, extra production most of the time on, uh, on the pantheons, but I have been a fan of Goddess of the Hunt for so long now. Uh, back before it was even with the plus three faith on it. I don't know if you remember that time, that uh, version of it. I, I don't remember the plus three faith, but Goddess of the Hunt is, is one of those pantheons that like most games you're going to get like two camps. So it's like, pfft. but if you get that game where you can get like four or five camps, then it feels amazing. Yeah. Just look at Kree. <laughs> two turning settlers <clears throat> from uh, her capital because why not didn't even fully build her um, sheep tiles what is this she needs to get uh, so many more pastures to actually make good use of everything here I, I think I think the problem is the barbarians are, are getting in her way a little bit <laughs> barbarians at the gate yeah I guess interesting oh, choice to throw down a theater square yeah culture 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 very nice uh, yeah i'm a bit surprised myself uh, because she's gonna need the science but i guess she's trying to uh, balance it out she has a plus two harbor um campus in mr hisipic that's gonna turn into a plus three when she finishes the commercial she got hong kong that's another possible uh, plus two. Oh, and i see the bar camp didn't get destroyed by hong kong Hong Kong died before it uh, took care of the barb camp. Where did all of those warriors come from? So, what, did Hong Kong's units get turned into barbs? I don't think that's how that works. No, no. But what? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen earlier there were no units here. Did they just pop out of nowhere? See, this is the problem with Save Six Barbarians. You look away from a barb camp for like two turns, <laughs> and you look back, and the thing has enough units to completely obliterate your entire empire. You know, I think there's like some people, there's like a big room at Fire Axis and they, they get the, all of this information, you know, from the games. <laughs> and they, that's why they introduce the, even the um, uh, catastrophes, you know, the natural disasters. And they're over there. Oh, this guy is doing quite well. Send in tornado. Let's put a barb cam. Let's put some spice on this game, boys. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 100%. I, I often say that, like, you know, there's somebody at Firaxis watching my game and just spawning barbs on me. I like to call it the, the, the control room. It's like a war room, except it's here specifically just to make my gameplay experience worse. You know how it's in the Hunger Games? You, you had that control room with uh, uh, they were setting up a disaster. That's exactly how it Yeah, goes. that's exactly it. I could just imagine Carl and, and a couple of the guys at Firaxis just like sending tornadoes to people. <laughs> You know, another interesting city-state that's about to fall over here is Bologna over by Greece. Um, now, scientific yeah. city-states, bit of a controversial thing to kill because they are game-changing. And so killing one early, is that a statement about how Greece wants this game to go? Or is it just an opportunistic attack? 
I think he wants to um, keep as much as possible uh, Spain uh, to the north there. <coughs> and I'm actually curious if he's going to try to keep Polonia or uh, try to take it out completely, like raise it to the ground. If he tries to keep it, he's uh, positioning against Spain. He doesn't want to let Spain uh, develop to the south. If he takes it out, I'm actually confused about it. Because Bologna is so great on Greece. Yeah, guess, for sure. Uh, I guess he doesn't want to handle Mamaletto's um, Envoy production. The Pericles, which, by the way, is going to get uh, Etemenanki next turn in Mycenae. He's going to have so many good uh, tiles. Yeah, Etemenanki is like a really, really great wonder. And, and, and again, it's because it gives you that, I believe it's one science per tile on a river or on a marsh yeah yeah um, one science one production and that's uh, these tiles are gonna look amazing next turn yep and he did manage to get lady of the leads at marshes so he's getting so much production out of uh, all of those oh wow that's a good point i didn't even notice that yeah he's gonna be cranked that these are gonna be some beautiful floodplains next turn i kind of don't want to look away i want to just like stay looking here and see this yeah 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 <laughs> see the change and look For at sure. that, he's actually keeping Bologna. So I think it's positioning. He's going to get a connection city in between. And he's going to try to keep Spain boxed in to the northwest. Yeah, the one danger of trying to box in a player is that you make it very clear who their enemy is. Um, and it makes their game plan very, very simple. It's kill whoever has me boxed in. Yeah, well, look at the best dummy go. 13 science, 39 culture. Only thing he's missing is a bit of gold, and I think he can easily get that. Definitely, I think you're right on that front. And plus, there's even more hoplites coming out, and this is the constant stream. And I think now is where I get to actually see these these marsh tiles update with these new yields. Oh, let's go, let's go. Oh my God, look at that! That is thumbnail worthy for a YouTube video. Beautiful. Yes. Oh, I saw, oh, but I didn't get to see the details. You got to tell us the details. You turned from the blob into the nightmare or something, what, into the pain game. What happened there? Oh, God, it started out so well. I was, I was, I, I got so much population. I got so much food. And then it completely just like I got so far. <laughs> and then I got a dark age because I forgot I could buy great people with faith. Half my empire rebelled and then I had to retake it. Listen, it's just a rough game. Okay, I'm having trouble. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> is that like um, how do you say the dramatic ages or something yeah dramatic ages I, the, you know what the, there's a reason I don't play with dramatic ages <laughs> and I oh god yeah I, I get it I get it it's so painful oh. I'm, I'm not I'm, do, I'm trying to do a pacifist domination where I can only flip enemy cities by growing my own cities and it's just awful <laughs> it's a terrible challenge <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you gotta overcome it, man. You gotta overcome it. You're gonna yeah. do it. It's fine. Believe yeah, it. event eventually I'll get around to doing it, Copium. Um, so, like, By the, have you ever heard of the killer haboobs? I oh my god, the the desert storms. Oh Jesus! <laughs> my my uh, chat was just mentioning Kaldi sending killer haboobs against us. Yeah, yeah, the killer haboobs, the haboob dust storms, man. Those things are ap they're definitely killers. Um, I would like to just get your opinion on the position of Japan and Portugal because these guys they had a bit of they have a bit of like a, a standoff here. Um, what they have to be a little bit miffed about their game position because they're on the least amount of cities except maybe Byzantium. Um. Are they just falling behind, or is this what they have to do to stay in the game? Uh, that's a hard one. I think Japan should have been at least five cities, even if you would have gone uh, on the land over here. As I believe uh, more cities is better. Uh, I think he did a mistake going for Harpers, uh, finishing building them, I mean, before he got everything else done. Uh, that campus is going to be nice. It's going to be a plus four, uh, but he's gonna stagnate and if he didn't manage to push his way towards uh, portugal from the beginning uh he's gonna need to wait for the next timing which is caravels both of them are basically real until caravels yikes so, that's a rough yeah, position to be, be in yeah this is gonna be one of those oh 
20 science game, maybe 30 culture game until one of them will get the Caravals two turns before the other. They're going to need to get the gold and whoever's going to get the most gold is probably going to win. Awesome. And I also want to talk about um, Japan's partner over here, Byzantium. They're still on three cities, but they're about to settle their fourth. But I can't help but feel at turn 38, this feels a little slow. Um, is this like a particular strategy they've gone for or are they just having a rough start? I think he sacrificed a lot going for the for the Stonehenge and its religion, uh, getting a crabby patty, but oh, at least he did manage to get Crusade, so uh, at least that. Um, other than that, if you take a look at his faith generation now, he doesn't really have a strong monumentality. He's on, he's on 27 faith a turn. Um, usually that's how unfortunately Byzantium rolls he just doesn't have what he needs for a very strong monumentality he's gonna try it it's just not gonna be good interesting um, interesting so did we just roll over into the next era yes one uh, I think a few uh, turns ago um, I, I do have to point out usually uh, just like Rome does or other empire like Gorgo did uh, I think Byzantium should have queued up uh, settlers instead of relying on his faith to buy settlers. Mm -hmm. It's just not enough faith uh, to have a steady stream. Yeah, I think I think I would agree somewhat with that, because even even if I look at his yields here, he's making what a uh, uh, 20 faith per turn. Khmer is on 37. And yeah. yeah, I just I don't know if that's like a, enough. I think more settlers would have been ow. I more I just hit my foot. More settlers would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and look at Khmer. Khmer is going to get so much out of his uh, holy sites now. So much food, so much uh, return on investment on uh, those um, uh, prasads and, of course, the shrines and so on. It, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm uh, At the moment, I do favor out of this matchup Khmer over um, uh, Basil to the north. Even if he want, even if Basil wants to go against Khmer, he cannot successfully convert his cities because Khmer is just going to have uh, more missionaries. Yeah, for sure, and also a uh, really high population cities, I believe, can can generate more um, just faith to make it hard, like more um, religious pressure to make it harder to convert them. Yeah, exactly. And 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 Khmer well, just naturally has high pop cities. <clears throat> what I think Basil can try to do is um, see if Khmer will go to war with somebody else. Wink, wink, Kree. If he's going to be busy with Kree, Khmer is going to be free to send a few Tagmas to Portugal and uh, allow his uh, friend to expand. If he manages to take out Portugal and allow Japan to double his cities, that is going to be important. That's like that's going to put them in probably the second uh, or, th or third team immediately out of the fifth they are in right now. Yeah, for sure. And it, it is probably interesting to talk about the positioning on the teams. It looks like Greece and Persia are kind of leading with Cree and Spain. And those are kind of the people who I feel like are doing the best right now. They've kind of, they've had the most successful early game. They've had the best start. Um, but I don't think yeah. we can call the game this early. I think there are plenty oh, of well. opportunities for people to come back and, and kind of take the game away sure. from them. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, I'm just um, how to say explaining scenarios. Uh, everybody's gonna need to do their own moves, and we're gonna need to see how they're gonna plan this out. Uh, but I do have faith in uh, uh, synth over here to be quite big, especially because of that early spawn. Mickey Sivacik is just incredibly um, right now. Plus three happiness level didn't even get uh, all of her tiles improved. Yeah, it's it's really really nice. Um... It looks like a couple of deer tiles are pillaged and stuff like that. But man, when this city is fully built with a couple more uh, builders, it's going to be absolutely popping. Yes, I agree. And she's getting the builders right now. Getting a few more uh, settler, uh, a few more uh, horses and settlers. Okay. And it also looks like uh, Kree is getting ready to give Khmer a taste of their own medicine. It looks like the settler is heading on over to maybe forward settle Khmer. Yeah, uh, I think that the uh, one to, to the north is going to be the uh, set the settler's position which is going to be quite important she's going to get the staging in place Ooh. and that will 
100% switch all of Khmer's attention to the south allowing uh, Byzantium to develop his empire a little bit more and catch back up. You've seen how important it was for Kree last time to have a little bit of peace uh, to catch up to everybody else. And when, while everybody was warning, he was like, you know, um, taking care of his sim and gold and everything. Oh, I think I'm crashing again. I don't know what I've done to my save today. I'm just going to leave it. On the west side here, it looks like uh, Kree did manage to get to two, four, six cities. And I do notice... Um, we got campuses coming out from Bologna. That's a plus of three. He did uh, start to recruit the writers here. And I really want to check how he opened up on this. And we got uh, 6.9 great writer points a turn from him. Not sure what's uh, the hold up. Oh. I crashed, I think. Yeah. Sorry about that. For a second there. <laughs> um let me uh, stream for you oh it's i'm streaming I'm, I'm loading back in i'll be i'll be back in in a moment okay uh only greece gorgo is making uh great general points by the way and i think it's with the card 2.3 points a turn oh no he did manage to get a um, encampment down with uh barracks Interesting uh, choice of only Greece going for that. Uh, then we got uh, Euclid about to be recruited by Rome if he's actually going to want it. Uh, Japan and Khmer did manage to get scientist points, but well, I guess campus is down, but don't have enough points to actually recruit anything right now. Um, writers, both Greeces are starting to generate points. Of course, Gorgo much further ahead. Uh, Pericles did make a uh, quote unquote uh, sacrifice going for a Temenanki there instead of going for more settlers but I think that's going to pay off in the long term you will have a very good city uh, my city to work and looks like his um, extra production on all of the marsh and everything is uh, doing quite well that's awesome um, sorry Miss Loden yep no problem good good you load in quite fast I, I don't know maybe we should Take a look at the mode or something after the game. Uh, must be a mismatch somewhere. It's fine. Yeah, I know it's very strange. I do load in quite fast. That is the power of having an SSD, baby. I, SSD for life. If you have not embraced the SSD into your heart, like you, like you should be embracing it. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're missing out. Well, I am in the process of switching out all hard drive with uh, M.2s. <laughs> oh my God, you're it's gonna like, be living the dream. The, the problem is uh, getting enough for him that two slots, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, there's only so many. Yeah. Um, but man, oh God, ever since I've been on, I don't think I could ever go back. It's a bit like going from a 1080p monitor to a 1440p monitor. It's hard to go back down to a 1080p. Like it's genuinely difficult. Okay. I, I, I don't know how to react to that. I don't know. I don't own a 1440, I, I like 4K. Uh, but okay. Oh my! Okay, Mister Four K. Okay, I thought <laughs> Jesus. Okay, just I uh, here's me with my like gentle consumer flex, and here's you like fourteen forty p. What is this twenty ten, Grandpa? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I guess you like them wide. That's what you want to say. Right? You you want to go from wide to um, uh, I'll say uh, four by three. No, not four by three. Nine, uh, Nineteen by whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know what? I'm a big fan of white people happy. So the the wider my screen is, the better. Um. So oh. so turning back to the game here, uh, Japan has two great admirals. There's a lot happening here. Where do you think is the place to watch for the next ten turns? I think Khmer Kri is going to be a good place to uh, see some aggression over here. Uh, Synth uh, is well known for her uh, early aggression, so I, I do believe she's going to try some shenanigans and. At the same time, we're going to need to watch if uh, there's going to be any kind of uh, skirmish between Persia and Rome. On the coast, I honestly don't think at the moment they're going to fight each other. Like Japan at the, the, doesn't have any way into Portuguese units and Portuguese units don't have any way into Japanese units. So it's basically a stalemate right now through a one tile choke. Until, like I was saying, one of them will get um, uh, caravels. That's when they're going to start to move. But honestly, like we got 
Portugal, 11 science and 15 culture, and Japan, 12 science and 23 culture. That is like just thinking of caravels seems like it's a dream. Right <laughs> yeah, this is like watching two snails race for a for a crumpet. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's it's gonna be a hard one. Both of them pen, brush, and voice. And well, I guess we do see Portugal making a bit more gold, forty four instead of uh, uh, twenty one. But I don't think it's gonna matter that much in the long term. Yeah, that's probably off the back of Portugal's pretty good trade routes. Yeah. I want to see what um, Spain will do here. I noticed Greece is uh, getting um, units to attack him. Uh, I mean, at least to put them in front of his face. And at the moment, uh, Spain is just doing a few horses, not really paying that much attention to what's going on to the south. Uh, well, to be fair to him, there are only two hoplites. And like I was saying, both of them are kind of uh, nerfed anyway. So. I don't know. I think I think you the way you said two hoplites there was pretty dismissive. I feel like two hoplites is like enough for me to be scared of them. It's only plus seven though. Like it's uh, at the moment. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure right now with the hoplite strength, he uh, swordsman can mess them up really good. Uh, many times are just gonna kill them outright. That is true. If you can get a, get your hands on men at arms, I think this would be a pretty easy defense. Um, the question is, is Gorgo here thinking about aggression or is it just purely positioning, simming, waiting for the right moment? I think it's positioning and um, at the same time simming. Uh, looking at Bestomi, 23 science <clears throat> with 62 culture, I think he just wants to force Spain into overreacting put some pressure on his economy and try to make, force him to build a few units. That Noob64 is, um, is an experienced player, so I don't believe he's going to fall for this. <coughs> and look at that. Uh, we do have Bezdomi getting a settler towards uh, Bologna to uh, get more positioning over there. He's, uh, he's going to settle in the face of Toledo. He's yeah. so confident. Yeah, uh, confidence probably isn't even the word. Brazen is probably the word. This is like, a, like we were talking about throwing down the glove for a duel earlier on today. This is like picking the glove up and beating your opponent with it. This guy is, he's throwing down for a fight in a way that I don't think I've ever seen a player do before. Oh man, have you seen the, um, the movie Men in Tights with Robin Hood uh, comedy? No, I, I don't think I have seen that. There's a scene in which uh, one of the knights says uh, he's going to a challenge Robin Hood and Robin Hood just picks up what, what you said over there a glove but it's an iron glove and smashes it with his challenger on the face <laughs> I accept <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh that sounds hilarious I think I think I have seen that movie but it's just been so long and I don't remember it uh, with the oh, I mean I don't I don't want to see <clears throat> when, when he, the castle moved away on wheels yeah, it's it sounds familiar. It sounds familiar, but I, I just I don't <laughs> listen. I don't watch a whole lot of movies. Okay, I play video games. That's my life. Yeah, yeah, I, I do too. I do too. I, I do try to disconnect sometimes, and I guess movies are the way to go sometimes. I, I like movies. They're good fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, more barbs in Persia. What is Persia gonna do here? He start. He got. Nazca to the northwest. I do see he's getting now his uh, builders, and I believe he should be close to feudalism if he didn't uh, quite get it yet. Medieval first, yeah, okay. So he did get uh, feudalism. Yeah, it looks like if you check his government, he's got uh, uh, serfdom, natural philosophy, and the great general card plugged in. Yeah, so he's getting all of these uh, builders one turn. Very nice uh, synchronization. One turn, two turns. Uh, and he does have a few pre built heavy chariots heavy, uh, knights to go against Rome here and Rome by the way managed to get Colosseum this went out under our radar I don't know how but it went out uh, under our radar I mean judging by all of the empty plots around I think it was chopped out um, and that's an impressive Colosseum currently hitting one two three four five cities with the potential for maybe six or seven depending on how he settles yeah uh, he's going to be needing to be wary to, uh, from expanding to the south, though. I, I don't think uh, Greece will allow it 
to happen. Uh, Pericles, and to the west he has the other Greece that won't allow it to happen. And him being between two opponents, Persia and uh, Gorgo, might pose a few issues here. But I think he should be safe if he knows about uh, Spain's position. If Spain is going to put more pressure on Greece, that is going to be very good for him. Wait, is Bestomi actually going to settle that city on the copper tile there? Why? Okay, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, that looks like a very odd settlement. Is that just purely a blocker city? So Spain can't settle any forward? I guess so. I, I guess he wants to get uh, mm. at least like some buffer between it and Sparta. Yeah, to me, this looks a bit like a throwaway settler. Like, this is just a wall between me and you. Um, and I get to dictate yeah. and own the wall. On the animal side, looks like Japan is making six points, Spain 4.3, Portugal on two points. And it does seem like we got uh, three admirals already on uh, Japan. Quadrim fleet and uh, extra promotion. Okay, I mean, that's good. That is 100% good on uh, Japan here. Mm, extra promotion. I, I Honestly, even the Quadrim and, and even the fleet. If he can fleet an early caravel, that might shape this war here. I mean, samurais. And yes, like you said, if he does manage to get to the north, to the top three, but samurais. I, I totally forgot about that. Feudalism four tens, I don't work in three tens. Samurais Ooh. coming. Uh, in the mod, has Samurai been moved to, to a different tech? Uh, feudalism. Ah, okay. So now these Samurai, they're 48 combat strength compared to the Swordsman 36. And the, um, oh my God, what are man at arms again? 46. Uh, the top three. <clears throat> oh, 46, yeah. 46. So this is like having a really early man at arms. And does Portugal have an answer to like two to three Samurai? No. <laughs> okay, mean, it's a wrap. He doesn't even, he doesn't <laughs> even have a classical unit, though. He's, let me see. Where is he? He's doing mathematics in five. I think he's trying to rush uh, caravels. Ooh, that's a dangerous game because samurai are going to come a long time before you get caravels. Yeah, one, one of the weakest things over here, Japan is not going to get a general for those samurai. So, I mean, at least that. But other than that, it's going to be so problematic to take care of the plus five samurais that they do get the plus five on the coast and um, one strong thing about the samurais you know how every unit has a penalty when it gets damaged the samurai can just keep on dealing full damage without that penalty <clears throat> and that's true and that's a significant amount of uh, amount of extra combat strength over another unit yeah because even even a one health samurai attacks like it's a full health samurai yes it's very strong Okay, those Greek hoplites looks like they're just uh, walking around the Spanish borders over here, trying to be nuisance, but they're not actually doing anything else. I do see um, Spain just placing down a lot of the campuses, and I really like how he plays his Gavron Plaza. Uh, so he interacts with three of those campuses and uh, gives extra points to them. Yeah, this is a really nice SimCity location, like in terms of like, oh man, all of these campuses are super happy with this. And they they, yeah. they still have the potential to grow. Now, Spain going for campuses early. You, you tend to see players focus on culture early. Is this just like a fairly standard play that you grab your campuses and then you go for, um, is it uh, pen, brush and voice to get your culture? Yes. Yes. Basically, um, the players see it like this. They use science for campuses. They use uh, culture from pen, brush and voice and they basically feel like the first two eras they're gonna get a free no theater square needed uh, zone while other players when they're gonna go for for example monumentality they're gonna try to put down a few theater squares here and there that was one of the surprises i had about uh, synth opening and you also pointed out those uh, two uh, plus three theater squares that she managed to get i was expecting her to go for uh, campuses instead of that I guess I guess the theater squares do make sense because of the Temple of Artemis. But yeah, I was expecting campuses from, from Synth as well, but maybe they value that culture so highly. 
Yeah. Well, now she's getting a plus three in the. <laughs> she's very, very annoyed by the barbs, by the way. I can imagine <laughs> these, <laughs> these barbs have been haranguing her for the last, I don't know, the 40 turns. They've just been making a mess of her borders. Yeah. Well, like I was saying, you got to take care of the barbs. Yeah. Take I... care of the barbs, no problem. You know? Yeah. If you leave the barbs, big problems. It's no good. It's no good. Okay. Happy Barb, happy life. <laughs> yeah, dead Barb, happy life, more like. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I don't mean to pick on Byzantium, but dude, how, why are they only on four cities? Is this some kind of, kind of like five head giga brain play or? I'm not sure. I think he's a bit tired. Um... Has Papa Chillin fall as fallen asleep at the wheel? <laughs> Yeah. Tagma spawning center, Tagma go cow, Amasia and Trebizond. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why he stayed uh, he stayed on uh, four cities here. Uh w one of the things that I do have to point out his um, religion does uh, make sense in the if you really want to rush or try to rush your Tagmas. Uh and he does have 39 uh, culture turn just because of those uh, temples and shrines from choral music. Uh, but when you're talking about how to have an economy, how to uh, for those tagmas, how to uh, get more cities to survive, you know, the next after tagmas. Uh, if you don't get your attack going with your uh, finishing with your tagmas, you're just gonna irrel yourself. And I don't yeah. think <clears throat> Mer will actually be a good target for him. So pretty sure Portugal here will be the the target. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. Um, a tagma play to take out Portugal looks like the most likely thing, and I think I think that's why I appreciate your insight because you watch multiplayer so much. I thought that he was just playing incorrectly, but it, it does seem like he has a build here where he's trying to get as much culture on as few cities as possible to get those tagmas as early as possible. Now, yeah, but I I I share your concern though, um, and I guess that also. Me, me, um, meshes a little bit with uh, my own gameplay. I don't like to be on the negative side of gold or uh, even staying at zero. That's just not how uh, I like to play. I like to get my own economy. I like to be uh, self-sufficient. So um, when I see this kind of play with like only three gold or minus negative gold, I am extreme, getting extremely concerned. He he has the way to do it. It's just gonna be a bit slower than he would have wanted it, but it's still in the long term. It's gonna be much better if you want. If you wanted to get like three other cities instead of going for a campus, um, instead of building those, um, how to say, uh, uh, instead of going for um, uh, Stonehenge and stuff like that. Yeah, Stonehenge and stuff like that. It, he could have gone uh, first for Crusade and um, choral music, um, lay ministry. That's also something that I personally don't uh, really like. Uh, if he wanted to go Stonehenge, maybe he would have gotten uh, tithe. Yeah, there that's true. Of going around it. I think an interesting thing though is he is only one civic away from picking up the tagma. So I expect that there will be some action here in the next ten to twenty turns over on this side of the map. Somewhere to keep an eye on for sure. Yep, I agree. Uh, let's see what's going on in Portugal. We got Bishop with only two warriors. Oh, everybody's okay. I see it. Everybody's uh, switching um, <laughs> the priorities to getting a golden age now. We got only eight turns to go, and I see people starting to build wonders, uh, people forgetting about their uh, other priorities, and you know, just trying to be relevant. Hmm, absolutely. Somebody who's kind of interesting me right now is, is, is Pericles. He's he's getting out those amphitheaters. Is this a culture play? Like a, a, a culture victory? Like the okay, beginnings of one? Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, could be. He doesn't have... So usually if you want to see somebody go for culture victory, you do want to see Oracle and you do want to see... Um, Apadana, both both of those wonders are extremely important uh, mid to late game. Usually in the uh, in the city with um, a moksha in them. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. I, I know somebody was building Oracle. Wait a second. That's uh, in Cree. 
three building Oracle. Is that uh, is that just Oracle for the sake of Oracle? I guess so, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. I've... Yeah, it, it it looks to me like an Oracle for adjacency on the whole on the theater square and for a little bit of error score and all that stuff. Like, I don't think this is really a commitment to an Oracle play. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. She has. Well, I mean, honestly, she's 69 points out of 59. Does she want to get out of the 69 area, I guess? But other, other than that, I don't know. Oh, weird. Yeah. So they so since it's already secured a golden age and they're getting a wonder. Yeah, and she's gonna get divine right. She's gonna get stirred up. She's gonna be like on eighty points of culture of uh, Vera before the next era. Uh, uh, there's no real point in overshooting, is there? It it doesn't give you any no. advantages. So actually, it, it takes away a few advantages from you because uh, uh, your next era will be a bit harder to get. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I'm a little bit confused by this. Is is then maybe this Oracle is a signal that we're going to see some sort of like Oracle culture play or is it um, simply they're predicting oh. that someone else might go for it and they're taking it away? Yeah, I think she's trying to take it away, especially with two greases in the game. She's definitely trying to take it away. I was looking at, by the way, Mickey C. Wachik production. That's a 39.5 production city. That's why she's four turning Oracle. My no sweet unholy <laughs> Jesus, that is an absolutely insane production number for this level. Like this early into the game, I would expect a city to have like 20 production. And like yeah. that would be a lot. 20 would be a lot. A 39 production city is kind of absurd. I'm actually extremely curious, and that's one, not one information that we can have. Uh, what's the production count and, I guess, the yields of each of these uh, trade routes? I noticed one, two, three, four, five, six bonuses in in the one, two, three, four, five, six bonuses. Yeah, so that's six food and six um, uh, gold for each trade route. And she has one, two, three trade routes right now with another one coming up next time. And then, okay, what's the production point? Getting two from Magnus, another two from the base, with uh, one from Governor Plaza. Yes, that's it. Oh, she doesn't have any other district? Wait, what? Why? Where's the other districts? Like, she's pop 10. She, w she should have another two district slots. Maybe, maybe they just don't want to get their districts out right now. Uh... Could they be waiting for a district of some kind, like an industrial zone, or that that wouldn't make sense, would it? No, I mean, sure, you could, especially with Oracle, you could go for it. But I don't know. Usually, I uh, do replace my districts as fast as possible. Yeah, that's interesting. Just, okay. Sometimes it makes sense just to wait for something. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I would expect these players to make many mistakes. I would expect everything they do to be fairly deliberate. So Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. It's just a plan that we're not seeing. That's, that's what I'm pointing at. I'm sorry. That's exactly it. That's oh I'm just making sure that people understand what we're that you're not like disparaging yeah, yeah, plus, them. Plus, plus, plus. Um, I'm also a bit tired. Uh, so maybe my uh, pronunciation and also my um the uh, exp uh, my expressions are not uh, correctly aligned with what I want to say. No, no, no. You're doing totally fine. I'm just. I just want to. I. I'm just making sure that the 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 what you call it. <clears throat> um, they get the right idea. Not, yeah, it, words are difficult. Um, yes. Mausoleum coming in for Kyoto here. Uh, that's one of my favorite wonders. I really like it. How do you feel about the mausoleum? Is it worth building? Uh, if you do have a lot of um, resources, coastal resources, yes. Where did you see mausoleum, by the way? It's in uh, Kyoto. Kyoto. Oh, oh. Three coastal resources. I'm not so sure it's uh, that worth. Uh, I guess if it's worth uh, to get a golden age, that's going to be worth. Let me see. Era score. Um, 53 out of 56. And Oh, and he already has a samurai. Yeah, he needs the points. Yeah, that, that makes the most amount of sense, actually, is, is getting that done. And he, it looks like he is getting ready to chop the stone to get the mausoleum finished a turn sooner than he would normally um, to secure that golden age. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, is there anyone missing a golden age? I think only Khmer. Oh no, Portugal as well. The Khmer has... Khmer missing a golden, uh, golden age, that's going to be massive. I don't know what he did to miss a golden age here, but that is a problem. Uh, maybe Domres? Maybe 
Well, that's a lot of points, actually. He needs... Ten. Nine points now. A boat? He could get a boat. He could get... Uh, wait. A swordsman? It's a three points. Dombre, another four. I mean, I, I don't know if he has the dom... Oh, he's getting the... Oh, no. That's not him. Civil service in four. He's so late on civil service on this. Yeah, wow, that is... Mm. I like... Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. He has really good culture. 44 culture per turn. I f feel like yeah. he should have civil service already. Um, I don't know. He, he massively expanded. And in not the area that we were expecting. Uh-oh, I see a massive attack preparing here in uh, Susa. One, two, three, four heavy chariots with uh, Suna General. And he does have uh, some immortals there as well. Hold on. Oh, there it is. I see it now. Yeah. Is this a night timing attack? Yeah, it looks like a night timing attack. Scanning stables from... Oh, look at those uh, encampments. One, two, three encampments. This is uh, Folrex going to war with uh, probably Rome here. Yeah, this looks like a hard commit, like an all-in. Um, and do you think Rome is prepared to, to, to maybe hold this off or at least give him a run for his money? Not really. Not really. Uh, he... Rome does have uh, an encampment of his own and he's probably going to get the uh, expo tech but other than that it doesn't look like he has enough pribbles to work this he's getting more uh, arches though so maybe that's going to be nice um oh look at hermion by the way on 139 gold a turn on those uh, coastal internal trade routes jeez that is some serious gold and, and i i guess that kind of gold can make up for the fact that you're having a weak early game and they are now building Wait. more galleys oh my god he's trading with kyoto bro you're feeding the enemy <laughs> oh that's a dangerous game that, to play i was i was wondering like how is he getting so much gold from his internals i mean he's not he's sending to actually his opponent here maybe the bishop should declare war like Oh my god, no. This is such a massive mistake from uh, from the bishop. Is it? Is he... Okay, now they declare war. Okay. I oh. <laughs> yeah. And Hermione's goal per turn dropped like 100. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that because you don't want to just let your your closest competitor just trade with you for free. And especially yeah, sure. a save like Portugal, where they're just going to farm like infinite gold from you. You saw, you can imagine an extra 100 gold per turn, you know, like just from a, a few trade routes. Oh my God. Yeah, for sure. It's like an extra 20, 25, uh, 25 production that you can put anywhere, right? Because, you know, that's the rough conversion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One four. Uh, interesting, actually. We kind of see. The Cree, about to be the first save to hit 200 production here. They're at 177. Um, I really do feel like it's just this incredible land that they have. And those internal trade routes, man. Unbelievable. So much food, so much production, so much gold. Doesn't need to put down a lot of commercials. It's very nice all overall. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I really, really like Synth's position right here. And I like... I, you know, watching them play Cree makes me want to play Cree because, man, this just looks like such a fun build to go through, to work just like a little bit of culture, a little bit of science, get a couple of wonders, make sure you, you expand rapidly, get that nice camp uh, uh, pantheon going. This just looks like a really satisfying build to play. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. She, she did balance it out very well over here. And like, like you said, a bit of culture, a bit of uh, science, a bit of... Uh, um, commercial but i have to say that early beginning was so important on her and the extra boost that she got from uh, all of those uh, camp specials yeah for sure and, and temple of artemis can't be underestimated that's so much population and population is production she's still on a plus six on a 10 pop city that is a lot a lot of amenities plus six amenities in a 10 pop city that's kind of unheard of considering the the, the temple of artemis is giving her eight seven amenities yeah one two three four five six seven yes that, well depends could be eight with that fur on the 
or to the east. Yeah, I think so. It could be, and I think the olives might count as well. I can't remember the. I don't remember how Artemis yes, yes. works. Olives, olives as well. Where are the olives? Uh, just three tiles to the right, right beside. Why are there fucking barbs? <laughs> ah. <laughs> I think Pantheon our, our plantations work. Uh, that uh, yes, they work, but they work. So um, it gives you amenities in the city that you have that tile worked in. So the olives is probably worked by that city where the where the uh, barbs. So that's an extra amenity in there. Oh, um, I see. Khan doesn't have any uh, six, like you said, or seven in the Cree city. In the capital city, probably the sheep tile in P7 is Amasis is another one, and you could get another olive tile. No, overall, it's a lot of amenities from that uh, Temple of Artemis in multiple cities. I thought it was a case of um, you get all the amenities in the capital, but I guess I was wrong. I, uh, I thought that as well, and then I figured out it, it's not. Yeah, I guess I guess I it never really bothered to test it. Anywhere. It doesn't say it anywhere. This is one thing that I would definitely uh, like more information about, you know, like more info on um, how does it work? Because it just says in the description, it just says each camp, pasture, and plantation improvement within four tiles of this wonder provides one amenity. Okay, where? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> no, you bring up a good point. Sometimes the documentation in this game, it, it can be a little bit confusing about how things work and you have to actually test them to find out. Yeah. Um, oh, Spain is getting uh, an army. It's uh, actually pushing back on Greece now. So it's going to force uh, Gorgo to also get an army here. Those two hoplites are just not going to be enough. No, for sure. And these are horsemen too, which are weak to hoplites. Like these hoplites will dunk on them. But I imagine yeah. Spain isn't far from upgrading those horsemen. Yeah, also, Gorgo is on 139 culture. Should it be that far away from getting nationalism? Instead Whoa. He's, yeah, he's doing quite well. Uh, did we see... Uh, not, okay, so we didn't have actually Persia get that city on the um, geothermal, though. He's still fighting barbs here. Oh, my God. That geothermal, man, with the cocoa tiles. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I am too. Oh, since I just trained her first night, is she attacking somebody? Or was that just for the sake of getting extra strength on her cities? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I feel like... She's not. Okay, she's not. She's well, just... I don't know. Where. Is it maybe to deal with barbs? Like, her hatred of barbs is definitely showing through here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Indeed. It <clears throat> is... Is the knight the correct units to go against barbs? I guess that's the question we need to ask. Well, I think the nice thing about a knight is it can kill barbs, but also it turns into tanks later, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did have uh, Khmer try to go for uh, his golden age, and it looks like he's four points away from getting it, and next time he's going to get the hanging gardens in the capital. Ooh. So his uh, campuses. Is this any of these campus? So it's a plus three? No. Or he has a plus one, a plus two actually, with another plus two. That, and I think he already got a splendid, so that's not going to work. Is he going to get anything from a, his uh, writer? No, no. Maybe he can recruit a great person or something. For yeah, I was just about to say, no. but he doesn't have that much faith in the bank. Uh, there's a very good great scientist, by the way, a 50, the 50 faith one. Ooh, now that is a great scientist I would expect the Khmer to fight for. Oh, maybe a uh, levy, indeed. That could work as well. Levying could work. Levying is always worth it. So what is uh, homeless with 134 culture? Oh, wait. Did I, I think... I was talking to my... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I uh, moved the headphones and for a second there I didn't know why everything's... Like the sound stopped. <laughs> 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 I, I think homeless was meant to refer to Gorgo. Uh, I could be wrong, though. Bezdomi, that's what it means, homeless? It must. That, I, that's my best guess. Yeah, I mean, you must be right, but I don't know. Let me, let me check. Translate. Homeless, yeah, indeed. It actually means homeless. Interesting. Huh. Uh, nice. 
so speaking of uh, 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 error score, actually, Khmer, one point away. Greece secured. Uh, Byzantium secured. Japan secured. Portugal failed. Rome secured. Persia has 56 out of 52. Gorgo has 81 out of 54. This is like a completely unnecessary overshoot. And Synth has 75 out of 59 and 64 out of 61 for Spain. So it looks like most players managed to secure a Golden Age. Oh man, I'm looking at the fleet of Portugal and he's seven thirds away from getting cartography. He did a mass almost a thousand gold in the bank. He's going to upgrade those nows. Ooh, that's going to be a dangerous day for Japan. How close is Japan to having a response to that? I mean, what's he been working on this whole time? He's barely on Batra's three turns. And honestly, he, he kind of made it of his own. This is his own making. If he just let those trade routes uh, be sent to his capital city and didn't declare war from the beginning, that that's enough, right? He just gave like five, six hundred gold to portugal <laughs> that's like three uh now it's converted yeah that's a rough one man that's a rough one to to <laughs> to have a small mistake like that uh spell out your potential doom here in the next what five turns is it how close is he yeah six turns six turns yeah oh that's a feels bad man moment um man what can he do will walls even save him no Remember, these nows will, first of all, will kill all of the um, uh, pre-builds of uh, Japan. And he's going to, the nows also have, a, I think, uh, an extra promotion, if I'm not mistaken, on them. So they do get a plus seven, the emblem promotion. I think you might be right there. I think I think they do get a free promotion. Yeah. It's uh, less spontaneous. So overall, they're much better than uh, Japan's units. It's going to be dangerous. He's... Uh, that's why I was thinking he should have definitely gone uh, two more cities when it was uh, beginning and he should have pushed with uh, Galleys also from the beginning when he had some form of advantage. Yeah, so definitely. Just... Now he's just like, oh my God, like look at the amount of Galleys he would have to work his way through. I, I can't help but feel that like Japan weirdly overcommitted to Galleys and then undercommitted to, to anything else. Yeah. And also, by the way, Khmer did manage to get the Golden Age. He well done. Those nine points, he got them. Excellent job Very on nice. that. I, I would love to know what, what they did for that last point, actually. <clears throat> uh, I think somebody was saying maybe a levy. I think we can see that if there's a levy somewhere. Let's see. Does he have a city-state? Uh, Samarkand. No. He didn't levy it. Maybe he sues it right now. That uh, Sue's reading it would have would have made sense. Now I I do have a question. While we're talking about city states, um, yeah. are there any city state bonuses here that you see standing out? I usually I would point my eye at Antananarivo. I like Antananarivo. I like Buenos Aires. Um, Cad is a major one, especially if you're, uh, for example, um, uh, Gorgo or uh, Cree. If you want to go against somebody with walls. Um, the gold ones, uh, Bandar Bune, Venice, Samarkand for uh, Portugal, also very strong. And that's about it. I guess Geneva is going to be good on any. Man. It's, you just get the uh, uh, bonuses for science, for your campuses, for libraries, for um, uh, universities. Yeah, that's impressive. They're, they're, they're or, or, sorry, not impressive. That, that's, that's interesting. There's so many uh, city states in the game, but it looks like there's only maybe four that really are worth fighting for the suzerainty bonus of. Yeah. Well, Buenos Aires on somebody that really needs a lot of amenities is a godsend. Yeah, for sure. It 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 just changes the game for you because it you can play so much grief so much greedier. You can get an extra city or two. Maybe you can get away with not having an amenity improved. Uh yeah. you know. It just for it sure. just gives you so much flexibility to have those extra amenities. <clears throat> I do see now Gorgo, after he did manage to get so much uh, culture coming out from his Acropolis, he's spamming out campuses all over the place. Oh, this time I'm going B, by the way. You go A. So yep. let's go U, A, culture. I go B, culture. Oh, plus five Congress. Uh, let's go Recon. U, A, Recon. I go B, Recon. 
All right. Man, scouts need our love. The scouts oh. do need our love because they are an underloved unit. And they also love animals. You know, they love cats. They love dogs. Yeah, they're they're animal lovers. They're big friends of them. So uh, you were talking about Gorgo dropping down these campuses. Um, what is this? Is this just Sim City trying to get a tech lead over Spain before they attack, or a hundred percent? It does look like um, looking at his Sim, he's also going to get to more than a hundred science along with his 159 culture so he's well on his way to getting cuirassiers uh, field cannons into a course from nationalism interesting so this is looking like is this going to be a tank push or is it some sort of earlier timing attack with cuirassiers i don't think he wants to attack honestly looking at his uh, sim i think he's more of a i will have the science and the culture to take care of my units uh, or upgrade them properly to defend myself if push comes to shove. It doesn't look like he fully prepared for an attack. You don't see the, that spamming of encampments. You don't see that um, uh, those like e strong economy and so on on him. Mm, yeah, that In, makes uh, sense. Last, last game, immediately after somebody de uh, wanted, like made a decision, he's going to go against somebody else. He put down encampments, basically like Persia did this game. So we know. 100% we know that Persia wants to do some kind of offense. We just don't know exactly when and where. Mm, for sure. That makes sense to me. Uh, it looks like Mela units got boosted. And I didn't see what the other one was. But who, who does that help? Mela units you know. having plus five combat strength. And who does it hurt? Uh, it helps Samurais. And it helps... Um... Rome, I guess. Other than that, oh, conquistadors also get a, a bit of help. I'm curious if uh, Noob is gonna get conquistadors. He doesn't have a religion. He doesn't have. No, I don't think he's prepared for this. No, it looks we, like he's gone for a, 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 a faith-free Spain here today. Yeah, he he does have a holy site being built in Las Palmas, so he might try for some shenanigans over here. Does he have any faith? To, in the bank 159 faith so he after he gets enshrined he can buy one or two missionaries he just needs the extra plus five on his uh swordsman mm, for sure for sure and i think that extra plus five would would make a significant difference that's because spain's bonus is if a unit's like in with a religious unit it gets a combat bonus right yeah exactly it's a plus five yeah it's been it's been a while since i played spain so sometimes you forget what saves do yeah I mean, at the moment, it's not one of those, oh my god, uh, Spain is going to rock my world uh, um, types of uh, conquistadors. But it's definitely strong. Yeah, I mean, it makes a difference that it helps them out. Yeah. Uh, usually with Spain, you want to get conquistadors, you want to get your religion, you want to go against a player that has a, his own religion to so get an extra plus five. You want to try to get to the core ability to get... Uh, of course, of uh, course, and you want to have um, um, how do you call them? And that um, words of religion card, the plus four. So, it, like all of those uh, bonuses, a match. If you manage to get crusade, whew, that's even better. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for but sure. Such a rare event that you get all of those uh, to align. Especially in a game like this, where religion was highly competitive with Khmer and. Um, Byzantium going for very very early religions and picking up some of those really strong beliefs yeah my, my chat is uh, pointing out that I was looking at um, uh, Gorgo's um, faith instead of uh, looking at Philip's faith yeah he is on 40, 425 so he does have more than enough uh, faith for uh, a few missionaries here thank you that's the curse of being the caster, okay? It's way easier as an observer to catch mistakes because when you're the caster, you're trying to do information quickly. You're trying to communicate clearly. Sometimes you just look at the wrong number. Look, it's it's not a crime. <laughs> Crossbowman uh, out for Rome. Or over blushing all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, cross Walk it off. Walk it off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I see Crossbowman out for Rome here, so I'm, I'm thinking he's pretty well defended against Knights, or can Knights punch through Crossbowman? I think at this moment, so 
what happened here it feels like Persia did try to maybe uh, think of an attack he got a few pre-builds then he thought okay I have enough pre-builds let me just stabilize and get more series out maybe go for a later attack uh, at some point maybe uh, he saw Gorgo is getting pushed by Spain so they wanted to reinforce him instead of uh, putting the resources into Persia and because of that he created a counter reaction in Rome to get more units they, he saw uh, Spain, uh, he saw Persia's encampments, he saw his uh, pre-builds, and he said, okay, I mean, I need to get my own. And basically at this point, there's like no way for either of them to push into each other. But that's yes. sometimes oh, that's oh. the position you want to be in, right? You want to be in a stalemate if you think you're in a better position long term. Uh, yeah, but is he in a better position? Because at the moment, it doesn't... Well, I guess he is, right? Persia is. He has more cities, two, four, six, eight, while Rome did stagnate. And don't forget, he also has his ally Gorgo to his left, who he can rely on. Yeah. And, and he, that's one front he doesn't have to worry about. And he's got a mountain range between him and Byzantium. So I think I like Rome's position here. He only really has to worry. Or, or sorry, I think I like Persia's position here because he only really has to worry about Rome. Rome's got a... Sorry? Bare city in his face. What is that Khmer Liga for a city? Yeah, this is this is like a disrespectful city. It's like so in his face. Do you think this is like a buffer city? Just something that he'll have to go through to attack Khmer? Or was this I Khmer guess. just trying to get as many cities as possible? I think it's Khmer getting positioning, but I mean, it's such an exposed position. Maybe he's basing himself that uh, he knows uh, there's going to be Rome and uh, Rome will try to take advantage of any weakness in Persia's defense here. So it's just at the moment they're playing on each other's uh, tunes. Yeah, I also I'll... see, by the way, Hippodromes coming out of Byzantium. Oh, here they come. Yeah, Tagmas, they're there. They're, they're coming out. Now, is who's the target? The moment... Yes, this is the moment of truth. Ooh. What is the target? I see they declared war on uh, Khmer here. Because Japan just took out one of the builders. Maybe Khmer is going to be the target. Interesting. I mean, Japan does have samurai out. So maybe a samurai walked up to Khmer could help out. No. I mean, yes, it could help out. But he's going to die. He's going to die painfully. Yeah, it's not looking great for him right now. I'm not going to lie. He's on three cities, caught in a stalemate with Portugal. I like what Portugal did over here. And this is something like as, as an example. Everybody should uh, see this. Um, so, yes, Portugal needs to invest a lot into his navy. But first of all, you have to actually have what to invest in. So what he did, he went crazy with galleys. I really like this, by the way. You really like the galley, the, the insane amount of galleys play? I I thought this was like over an overreaction, but is he going to start combining them together and doing stuff like that? Uh, no, he, he's just going to have what to upgrade into, right? Uh, that, that's the that's the thing. Because if you just rely on six galleys, for example, like, you know, like the necessary amount that you're going to know that you're going to go to attack with. Uh, after that, it's going to be so hard to reinforce your uh, front line. So in, in this scenario, he does have a decent amount of gold generation. Every two turns, he can upgrade another one and another one and another one and another one. They just keep flowing. They just keep reinforcing. Yeah, that's true. And and sometimes in, in a game like Civ, it's not necessarily hitting someone with a really big army at first. It's how sustained, like, can you keep the pressure going? Exactly, exactly. That 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 makes such a big difference. If you can keep up the pressure, you're most likely going to win the war. And it's also about trades. Right? You have to take into account trades. Your units are not going to fully survive. So uh, you have to understand that you're going to lose X amount and you need to recover. That's very true. And also, like once he has cartography, he can basically sit on every single coastal tile that Japan has and also get like infinite support bonuses and... Um flanking bonuses for his now so this 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 war should be relatively straightforward for him yeah oh my god you played civ 4 right yeah i've played a bit of civ 4 yeah you one of my uh 
uh, viewers is uh, reminding me of that uh, wall of death you remember the wall that you, <laughs> unscrollable wall of units that you had on one time <laughs> the stack of doom oh my god <laughs> but you would just have like uh the worst part of a stack of doom is like if someone had just spent their entire game putting spearmen into a city and your like stack of tanks would get murdered by the spearmen <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. The worst thing about it is it uh, like uh, from my perspective on that was okay, how do I reinforce this? How many units did I lose? Or what units did I lose? Like if I try to mix them in in a such a way, okay, how, what do I build now? Or, you know? Oh, absolutely. Cuz I I don't know if I was like you, but I really Oh my god, he just upgraded so many now. I'm seeing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now in a single turn. Uh, oh, Japan is dead. He's not waiting. He's not waiting. He's going with the galleys, like face first into the Japanese galleys. He's trying to do as much damage as possible before he's coming in with the galleys, with the nows, uh, with the level one promotion on them. That's insane. I don't think this galley fleet is going to save you, Japan. <laughs> I don't think it is. <laughs> oh no. Oh my. He's also in a gold, in a dark age, so he has the plus five uh, combat strength against melee units card. These are 80 strength nows, by the way. 80 strength nows. Military alliance, base strength, flanking bonus, combo strength. Plus that four. is nuts. Yes. These are like floating tanks. <laughs> 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 it's going to be tough for Japan to withstand. Even if he gets like cartography and mercenaries, he does have a bit of gold in, banked up. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know... A numbers game right now just throw the nows at the at those boats yeah for that... sure I, I i can't help but feel that the writing's on the wall for japan here even with the plus five coastal defensive bonus yeah uh they also block the admirals from one against sea they japan spain and portugal blocked all of these admirals this is a bit of a feels bad moment for uh for portugal because he's not gonna get one Oh, so you just like are they just completely blocked? Oh my god! Yeah, until somebody from like Greece, Rome, other Greece, Khmer, Byzantium, one of them will pick one up. See, this is the danger. <laughs> this is the danger of passing. <laughs> um, but I guess it's a bit like a, a, a stalemate, like the. I guess they all chose to, to enter into that. Ooh, that now just completely obliterating that galley. Yeah, and is... one attack from this now into the city does a third of the city's health. I don't think these cities are going to stand very long. Yeah, he, he did manage to get cartography and he just upgraded one caravel just so for the sake of having a higher strength cities. But it's, it's still not going to be enough. There are so many of these nows. They're just going to keep on banging until the uh, strength of the city is going to go down. Yeah, there's way too many of them. And don't forget, they all have a promotion in them so they can heal at will and get plus seven. Con this is like the most absurd thing. I'm genuinely scared for Spain here because once Japan is dead, I don't know if he can defend like 12 nows coming for him. Yeah, he's gonna need to pay, pay attention, especially if he goes on a land war, on a land campaign against the Greece, and he it looks like he's getting his men at arms ready to upgrade into uh, conquistadors here. Let me see. Noob is two turns away from gunpowder. He's getting uh, his great prophet in. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, w one thing to uh, alert you to uh, while Portugal is winning the sea war, uh, the Tagmas have arrived. <laughs> I, I want to say something about this. Have you seen the Tagma damage against the city of Kiss It Goodbye? Yep, sure. If he gets one now in, the Tagmas are going to die against that city center. Ooh, that's true. I mean, these nows, what, what is their base combat strength? It's like 55. Oh, 55. yeah. I, yeah, I don't think he can take these cities if he puts nows in them. This just isn't enough Tagmas fast enough. Yeah. He would have needed at least four and three turns ago, four turns ago. To take over cities. Definitely. Definitely need to just more stuff faster. Shh. 
don't know. Maybe he can make a play here. At least pillage the campuses and get some value out of that. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's maybe there's a route out of this here. But I, this is like legitimately a carpet of doom right here. This is so many boats. It's kind of shocking. <laughs> I'll be real with you. It's gonna walk over uh, Spain, uh, Japan. Uh, so Pericles, uh, sorry, what were you gonna say? Uh, I was saying that, uh, like you said, against uh, he can go against Spain as well. Especially since uh, Spain has uh, other priorities with uh, Greece. Yeah, that's definitely true. Uh, this Spain is a little bit distracted and might have like a vulnerable backside here. A, a tasty underbelly for, for Portugal to strike at if it can survive the onslaught of uh, Tagmas that are coming for them. Uh, I like Spain's position in the sense that like they're relatively well defended. They have really nice mountains, but maybe this coastal settlement that they have, that might be the uh, the Achilles heel that Portugal exploits. If Portugal survived this, this is going to be so important. But honestly, I wouldn't have thought Portugal can survive this long. Uh, honestly, like I was, I was ready to bet on Japan winning this, just because of the like samurai timing would have been awesome for him. He just didn't want to do it, and then uh, uh, he went for other stuff and didn't expand. And I don't know. It was like all of this uh, could have been a bit different. Yeah, I'm and I have to point out Portugal did play it very well here. He did. He, I like because I mean, like to be honest, we had I don't want to say we had written them off, but we kind of we didn't really have confidence in Portugal, um, being able to survive this long and even potentially win this war. I need you to explain to me what the hell is Portugal doing spamming out scouts, level one, tier one scouts? What is going on there? Uh, he's increasing his uh support bonus on each of the units. Ah, uh, because land units embarked can increase your flanking and support bonuses, right? Yes. So basically, if you take a look at the now that is between those scouts and other ships, those are like plus 10 support bonus units. Nobody's going to counterattack into these. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but these scouts in the water are basically making these uh, 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 boats unkillable. Yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I'm curious what uh, Kree will do over here because, you know, if there's one nation that will probably tell uh, Spain what's going to happen or what is happening on uh, the other side of the seas, it's going to be Kree. She has vision over um, uh, Portugal and uh, Japan. She should be able to see they're rocking each other's world here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if that's communicated to Spain, I would expect to start seeing walls come up coming up in Spanish coastal cities and maybe even like artillery posted on the coastline to shoot down boats. Yeah, or just spam out galleys like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> like, he still has four cities. He can uh, put on the maritime industries card, just, you know, one turn, two turn galleys and keep on doing that for 10 turns and it should be fine. Yeah, but that's I think true. Right now, I think uh, Noob 634 has a tunnel vision on Gorgo. He's like focused right now dead focused on that city of samos yeah and, like, and that tunnel vision might be his downfall yeah how, how do you call it in the toreadors like when they they keep up that red uh, flag yeah yeah the bull <laughs> he's chasing the red flag <laughs> That's a good comment, by the way. Uh, Spain can counter the Naus with uh, Caraval Armadas, but uh, he would need a navy to go Caraval Armadas. So he doesn't have a navy. He has like one, two, three boats. Yeah, for, for sure. Also, I'm seeing Spain looks like it's pre-building for, um, for bombards here. There, there's some trebuchets coming out. Could this signal, maybe they just want to be ready for an attack? Or is this like... They don't have the level of encampments that I would expect for a full-on assault. What's going on there with the with the trebuchets? Well, most of the time you still need the trebuchets to go against uh, enemy civilizations against their walls. Uh, I don't think they're going to be sufficient enough to defend his coast. I guess he could delay his takeover of the empire, but it's just probably. I think just my take on it. It's uh, probably going to use them to attack Samos and maybe keep on attacking Greece here. I want to see what happens next and I really want to see how these conquistadors get their damage points because at the moment the muskets from Greece are going to be strong enough to defend whatever it happens here. 
And you see how Greece did go for uh, defending with muskets instead of uh, cuirassiers or something else. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, why why would he uh, why would he pick muskets instead of cuirassiers? Is that just based on the strategic resources, or is that like a tactical choice? I think it's because of the Congress. They do have the plus five on the melee strength. Oh, so that's right. Sorry, you're right. I my I brain farted there. You're right. No problem. No problem. Uh, it's been a long day, okay? I'm allowed to forget things, okay? Even if they were just said to me. Yeah, for sure. It's fine. We're uh, all making mistakes. Uh, <laughs> Japan building walls, and there's there's a lot happening on the map. Where do you where do you want to focus on next? I guess all over the place. My my main concern is what will Cree do here? I I know she's got a few more cities on the west side, at least two, and one city on the east. So she did manage to get to two, four, six, eight, ten. And looking at the yield stab, did manage to get to 126 science with 119 culture. It's way above uh, um, uh, Jaya Varman the seventh, which is not that usual, by the way. Especially since uh, Kumer has like 11 pop series, 12 pop series and so on. Uh, he spread a bit too far and wide. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Cree has just been absolutely popping off this entire game. The amount of food, the amount of production. I don't think we ever really see this level of, of popping off. Or, 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 or is this like a standard game for Cree or is this like an exceptionally good game? I think it's an exceptionally good game with uh, that um, early <laughs> beginning. Like 50 production capital city without an industrial zone i mean that's a pretty rare accomplishment <laughs> yeah that is fishy <laughs> we might have to check uh <laughs> since game code there maybe there's a bit of hacking going on <laughs> um yeah, it looks like the, the 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 campuses are coming out, the universities are coming out, and some of the theater squares. So this is just looking like a really really solid sim here. And I honestly, I don't even know if anyone can attack synth right now. Like, what what do you do against this? You can't stop this sim. I, I don't I don't think so. Like, uh, that's why I'm saying I, I'm waiting to see what uh, she will do. If she's gonna go for more simming, which does look like to be the case, or if she's gonna try to take out Khmer, which again she could if she wanted to, has 179 gold in the bank while Khmer is negative gold with a bit of an army. Um, it's all about the timing here. How is she gonna prioritize going against the timing? Is she gonna let Byzantium fight? Uh, um, Portugal and then of course Portugal fight uh, Japan probably so yeah it's interesting I, I actually I really like like the, the free for all dynamic was kind of interesting but the two, the, two, the the pair the 2v2v2v2 two v two v two dynamic is really really interesting because not everyone is enemies and so it creates these like weird situations um, it's so interesting seeing how each player interacts with their neighbor in a different way like Pericles has basically done everything he can to not antagonize his neighbors until right now when he just dropped Olympia in, in Gorgo's face. Yeah, he did. Well, he did stay as far away as possible until he got his uh, sim up. Yeah, it was, uh, he had a problem. He still, I think, has a problem. Only 44 science with 140 culture. It's not as uh, strong as you might want, especially against uh, Gorgo which is 87 and 246. I was expecting Gorgo to have a lot more. I'm not sure what happened here. Oh, he didn't get his uh, universities up. That's what. Okay. He stopped at the uh, libraries. Yeah. And is there a reason you would stop at libraries? Is it because you're maybe expecting a war and you need military units? For sure. Uh, but I think actually at, the, at this point, Conquistadors cannot successfully push against Musketmen. Looking at what Samos' defense looks like, those are basically equal units. Ooh, yeah. I mean, conquistadors are strong, but you always have the advantage on the defense, just as small as it is. Yeah. I I think your analysis is correct here. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard push here, if uh, noob wants to push in here on Samos, uh, or, or rather, the homeless Ben Bez. I don't listen. I don't have to say his name. Bez Domi, yeah. Best dummy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, there's a stalemate here. Uh, you know, Rome and Greece aren't really interacting. 
Rome and Persia are at their own stalemate. It, it's looking like Sim is going to kind of decide who 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 breaks first and pulls the pistol in this uh, Mexican standoff that we've got here across the map. Yeah, I think so. And uh, like my uh, chatters are saying, she will get to nukes first. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the game is just decided on who gets to nukes first. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to point out, I was uh, quickly and alt tabbing over here and uh, I noticed there was an update in the um, you know, points. I don't want to quickly go over what has been going on here. Uh, let me see in the live results to fully update. So, refreshing data, refreshing data, come on, come on. I just saw something uh, picked up in the, um, like a screenshot. Zone of control was still in uh, the control room. I don't know why it's not updating here. It says refreshing data and it's uh, refreshing too much. No, sometimes data just refreshes forever and you never get to see what you need to see. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, there we go. So we got the zone of control with 525 points. Uh, first with uh, 18 games. Cards is coming up second with 455. Barking, Barking Cats on uh, third with 370. Gilga quit on 335 and the Germans on 320. The, the thing is, on the points that I've seen, and I, I don't know how, this is different oh yeah this is overall standing so i don't know what's going on here like I, there's a picture in the cc8 general chat which says the germans picked up the second spot with 470 points is this not updated or did somebody not plug in or i don't, I don't know what's going on it probably, probably just hasn't it, been updated it, yet yeah it, it's a big fight over here for uh, the first slots and uh, this is another one of those games in which zone of control would need all of the points they can get they need to win this to keep up that lead yeah definitely but i mean they look like they're in a position to maybe take it and keep that lead yeah it's all about uh, synth at the moment because noob is gonna do as much as he wa can to break best domi if he manages to keep down best domi from simming and looks like he's uh, doing just that it's gonna allow synth to um, uh, go over uh, him in the uh, sim in the sim yeah and looks like yeah those trebuchets are moving uh, on the front line oh yeah here come the trebuchets of doom now uh, for those of you who don't know the trebuchet is probably the most feared weapon on a medieval battlefield capable of throwing uh, large stones over 300 meters these things will definitely make if not short work at least work of these greek cities yes indeed and conquistadors with them <laughs> I don't know why, every time i think of conquistadors i think of uh, the movies <laughs> those ones in the in the jungle with the pirates of the caribbean or whatever they're called oh yeah yeah i i, I vaguely know what you're referencing such a powerful image over there <laughs> I, I never really thought I would see, uh, you know, conquistadors cooperating with trebuchets, but here we are, you know, this is, this is the game of Civ. Sometimes you see things that are interesting and different. And look at the, look at the tag ones, by the way. They, they just don't do enough damage against the, the cities. That city is going, well, I mean, walls are not going to do anything. Uh, tag ones don't have units to attack into to convert these cities. <laughs> so. Oh, man, you're right. Yes. I guess there's a man at arms struggle. Oh my, oh wait, the scouts. No, bro, your scouts, get them out. Get them <laughs> yeah, out. Delete them. <laughs> delete no. the scouts quickly. He's going to convert you. Run. <laughs> yeah, delete them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Portugal? Save yourself. I mean, it's okay. He can pillage whatever he wants. He's not going to do anything. Oh, wait a look at the tank. Let's go, man. He didn't, he didn't want to upgrade one of those nows and put it in the city. And that city just got down to half HP from one attack. Next turn, we might see it uh, topple. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he didn't do that. I mean, he has the gold in the... Uh, does he have the gold? Yeah, he has the gold to do it. So. I don't know. <laughs> Bro, you're losing. Get rid of the scouts. Send your nail into the city. <laughs> Save yourself. <laughs> Such a weird predicament. It, it, it looks like he's trying to save money to get 
uh, frigates because he's building quadra rooms. Oh, now the points refreshed. Okay, it was bugging me why it wasn't refreshing. Now the points refreshed. So indeed, the Germans did pick up that second place. Oh, Catalan CRL got won by cars, and it looks like Zone of Control did gather a much stronger team. Germans definitely have a stronger team. Barking Cats also have a stronger team, a strong team. So I think it's just a matter of uh, some of the games didn't finish right now. Mm, that would definitely explain a lot. And um, kiss it goodbye. Well, I guess we're going to be kissing it goodbye. Yeah, looks like it's going down. So, uh, oh, uh, it was next turn. <laughs> who it might buy it a turn. Uh, speaking of the score of the tournament so far, you were saying Zona Control, the Germans, etc. All these guys uh, are doing yep. really quite well. Who is your personal? Now, I know you shouldn't be biased as a caster, but come on, we always have a team that has a player on it that we really like. Who is it that you would like to see win? So, I really like Zone of Control as a team. Um, because, first of all, because of uh, Task for Fish and uh, Jessica, uh, they were the founders and uh, they did spread out with uh, very good values on, on the team, like the sportsmanship and so on. Um, also, I have a lot of respect for the Barking Ants. Uh, they have been trying and learning and playing so many games in the CVFR community. Uh, that uh, and I, I guess I did get the pleasure also to meet them in uh, real life. It just stuck with me. I, I, I also try as much as possible to follow the Deutsche League, the the Germans, and the same I can say about them. They are trying as much as possible to get as much experience in a short time as they can. And I have to point this out. Um, there are, for example, the cars uh, team is made up of uh, quote unquote veterans that have been playing much longer than others in the league so it, all of the others need to catch up in terms of experience and they have been doing amazing work to do that yeah definitely it's it's crazy to witness like uh, the passion here because uh, you know <laughs> it's it's difficult to get people to sit down for five hours to do anything, let alone play a competitive game of Civilization Six. So you know that every yeah. single person playing in this in this community tournament is completely committed because there's like what four or five games going on at every single second of the day. Yeah, basically for seventy two hours, uh, nonstop. Like uh, there's not gonna be any pause in the tournament. It's an absolute nutty thing. Actually, by the way, uh, if, if there was somebody out here who was watching this and thought, you know what, I'd like to participate in, in something like this someday, what, what should they do? What, what, what do? How do they get involved? I think the first step is uh, to get on uh, one of the servers, uh, CPL or CVFR or uh, Deutsche Liga or even Brazilian League, depends on, or Slav League, depends on where they are, what language they uh, speak and uh, uh, who do they want to play with. Uh, and the second s step would be to get more experience and get into a clan. It's not, I have to say this, it's not that hard to get into a clan uh, or a team. Uh, it's much harder to make a team for the CWC, though. Uh, getting like four or five uh, or even seven uh, players uh, together uh, to play, it's going to be a bit tougher because every one of them need to be needs to be very, very good. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's very easy to jump into the community as a brand new player and just have a bit of fun, play around with people, play some competitive games. But it, it's a different thing entirely. You have to be a little bit more dedicated to come in and play at like a really high level, like in this tournament or even the World Cup. Yeah. And basically, I have to say, like, what does happen as a social dynamic, you get into the novice section and you play a few games and then you uh, make friends over there because you, all, all our <coughs> games are with uh, Deeper Plus, uh, as in um, you cannot talk privately with anybody. So you need to speak out loud to your wishes, your wants, your uh, opinion about stuff and so on and so forth. So that actually uh, creates an environment in which you do trade your ideas and you do trade your um, uh, thoughts and it also um, makes them bond a little bit together. Um, negotiating for stuff in the game and so on does open up uh, quite a few avenues. Well, sure, sometimes some sparks are flying because people want stuff that they can have and they, you know. Yeah, for sure. But that's going to happen in any competitive environment. People are going to, you know, yeah. tempers are going to get heated and people are going to get a little bit, maybe a little bit shouty, maybe a little bit, you know. Uh, standoffish, but that, that's all part of it, though. 
<laughs> That's why moderators are there to calm them down. Um, well, for sure. Or, Sometimes yeah. you just need to time out. Exactly. If you do play well and people do notice you, you're just gonna get um, you know, either invited into a team or better games, or uh, you're you're gonna get to play with uh, other players and so on. Uh, you, if you just keep playing, it's a hundred percent that you're gonna be uh, growing in skill. Now we, we've spent a lot of time talking about Portugal and about the scene. Let's bring it back over here to Spain. Tell me about Spain and I was, Greece. I was just watching that. Uh, looking at uh, Greece over here, looks like he did lose quite a few muskets and uh, not a lot of this uh, conquistador health uh, has been uh, lost here. Um, he's probably going to lose the other musket as well. These conquistadors just got, oh, okay. And they got uh, general, they got oligarchy, legacy, advisory resolution, and they have 96. They had 90 uh, last time. Oh, Embol. Uh, okay, never mind. Not Embol. Battle cry. They didn't have battle cry. That's why. Yeah, Battle Cry is a powerful promotion. It's probably my favorite melee unit promotion. Yeah. And what um, Spain is doing right now is attacking with uh, the crossbows from behind, which in general don't do a lot of damage, but they did they did they did they do still put the musket in uh, in uh, penalty uh from the damaged unit penalty they still take away a minus one minus two damage and it's enough for con the conquistadors to get an, uh, an advantage over them yeah for sure because sometimes all you need is for the enemy to have like 10 less health that'll trigger a minus one combat penalty then three of your conquistadors attack and boom 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 now you've opened up another tile and you've got a city surrounded yeah exactly so slowly it looks like uh Konuk is pushing into greece which I do have to point out, Gorgo is not that far away from getting um, field cannons. When he's going to get field cannons, he is going to be able to counter these uh, conquistadors much better. Until then, it looks like he's uh, he's going to lose Samos, and uh, he's probably going to need to make a new line of uh, defense somewhere, maybe in the Sparta, maybe between, or maybe to the south in Maitinele. Yeah, I think uh, I think my worry here for Gorgo is. Um once Samos dies, like Spain can attack in whatever direction they want. I mean, even Antananarivo to the north is falling. The city by Ayacul is is liable to fall as well. I I thought Gorgo was invincible here, but it looks like Spain has found the weak point. It's breaking him slowly. Slowly, it's breaking him. Uh, Nook did manage to get more science, 149 science, 119 culture. He's going to be faster on, uh, oh, he's going, uh, look at that, mass production. Okay, he's going top three right now. He knows what's happening on the other coast. He knows that uh, Portugal has a problem. Portugal also lost a city. Man, that not upgrading a now into that city cost him a city. Yeah, for sure. He was just a little bit too late. And the, the, the armored horseman swarm now is coming in. But they're yeah, all very yeah. hurt. Yeah, I don't know. He, like all of these, all of these nows are dying. Like I don't know what happened to them, but they're dying. Not even catapults attacking them properly. I guess yeah. they kept on attacking to the city state, the city's uh, strength. I mean. Yeah, I. <laughs> I thought Japan was well and truly dead, but Japan held the line, and now I think Portugal's time has come. see it <clears throat> oh look look at the damage difference on the nobody's perfect he has a now inside of it those three tagmas cannot touch the city compared to that he could be the one yeah that or compared to the north city that's all he needed to do put one of those nows inside that's it yeah it, it, it's a small mistake a small positioning error and, and it cost him a city here but the question is, will it cost him the game? Also, plus six Intel and Crusade on that city, by the way. He has an extra plus 10 on. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, he's, it looks like he's starting to spread his religion. Maybe a couple of units got killed over here? Yeah. I mean, remember the scouts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, there's a few of them in the water, but I think he might have he killed a couple of them. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, on the other side, though, on Gorgo's side, I do see a wall of uh, crossbows. Those are all going to be pre-built for um, field cannons. 
<laughs> and it does look like at the moment he keeps on building Alhambra, getting more libraries up. He's not that worried about these conquistadors, even though there are there is a conquistador core over there, which is so strong. Oh, where's the conquistador core? Where? Oh, wow, yeah, that thing. Yeah. Oh my god, it's one shotting musketmen and horsemen. Yes, that's. I mean, I guess there's a musketman core as well, so. That's why he's not worried. He got nationalism. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Like I think nationalism is the saving grace here because it'll it'll make your unit strong enough to buy you even more time. So no wonder he's not scared, like you were saying. Well, now with the arrival of the bombards, that city is dead. Uh, the fortification health would just not withstand those uh, bombard cannonballs, and Samos is just gonna lose its strength. It's being no, put on I... the stage. That's it. Yeah, it's under siege. The trebuchets weren't enough, but the bombards will be. The city is now, uh, uh, what, what's the word for it? It's on a, a ticking clock. Uh, yeah. Borrowed time. Borrowed time, indeed. So, I, I want to talk about, wh wh what do you do here as, as Gorgo? So, you're going for crossbowmen. Wh what's your out here? How do you defend this? How do you stop this onslaught of conquistadors, crossbows, and bombards? First of all, you need to wait for the next uh, Congress. <laughs> uh, second of all, you need to get the uh, field cannon cores, a lot of them, uh, built, pre-built and upgraded, which at the moment, well, he did try as much as possible to get those crossbows. Um, like looking even at the crossbow damage, he's tickling the Conquistador core. If this would have been uh, field cannon and field cannon core, he would have definitely dealt uh, considerable damage to those units. In, especially on the normal conquistadors uh, the technology is just not there being stopped from uh, going into universities actually hurt him quite quite badly here wait did he just kill the i think he just killed the conquistador core i'm impressed i didn't think he would be able to bring that down but it looks like the um the musketman core managed it yeah and I think he can kill another conquistador there. There are no replacement conquistadors, by the way. He, if he loses these, these, that's it. Oh yeah, he he's not even building a military. He's simming behind this attack. Like, yeah, is this an under commitment from Noob? Uh, no, I think I think he knows he has this. It's just a a bit harder than he expected. Uh, first of all, because of the bombards, uh, and second of all, all of the crossbows that he has coming behind from this. Mm, the bombards of the crossbows are definitely going to make a difference here. Plus, he has, I think, a great general. Ah, oh, so does Greece. Yeah, they both have. Okay, city put under siege again. We got Mosquito coming up next turn. I think another two conquistadors with, will die here. Yeah, they're looking like they're very low on health and, and easy pickings for these musketmen. Um, I'm surprised at how scrappy this fight here has been. Yeah, it's messy. And he has a musket coming out next turn from Samos. If that city is not going to be taken, and it's not going to be taken this turn. Uh, uh oh, uh, another Japanese city just fell. Or sorry, another Portuguese city just fell. Portuguese city. Okay. Oh, important. That was a city without a wall. Did he get his now out of the city? I think he might have. I, I'm, I'm really surprised that it's. Well, I guess there was samurai there too. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I mean, you know, we were expecting at some point Portugal to get out. I guess we were right all along. It just uh, took a bit uh, a different turn than we thought. I guess I was really, really hoping <laughs> that they would survive. I wanted <laughs> the, it to be true. The underdog uh, commitment. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I, I do see a great path, by the way, built. And I guess uh, I do have to point out Kree did manage to get very good theater squares at Fallas 12, both of those. Oh she my god. Started, and she started putting down uh, more ooh, campuses in the other part. In, she got another one of those um, seeming centers between the four cities on the east. Oh yeah, that geothermal is absolutely popping off all of those campuses right there. Yeah. 212 science, 162 culture, 150 gold a turn going towards civil engineering and military science. 
can go for Diplo here, but I, I guess Diplo is not going to be an issue. Nobody's going to get Diplo. I don't see Diplo as an option. Um, yeah, it's not an option. Anyway. Ah, gotcha. Sorry. That's why I'm saying. Oh, I, I misheard you. My bad. No, no, I, I did I did say it, but then I remembered it's not going to be an option. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm used to streaming so many FF uh, like 4v4 games that sometimes these uh, are not always my uh, like my normal meta. I go go to strategies. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, oh my god, I lost my I lost my train of thought. Never mind. <laughs> oh. I see two things, by the way. Noob is about to lose a few more units yet. There is a, a possibility for Bezdomi to take out one of his Conquistadors, but he didn't. He actually made room for a musket to come out of Samos. And that city is not going to heal. I was expecting him to allow that city to heal. Uh, let's see what the first moves. It's extremely important what uh, Bezdomi is going to do. Oh, no. He just lost the momentum of, on these units. Okay. I guess he was worried he's gonna lose too uh, too much. Hmm. I wonder what what stayed his hand there. I wonder what held him up. Mm. Uh, he would have traded two muskets for two conquistadors, but I think the conquistadors were much more valuable than his muskets. Yeah, I for sure. Oh well, that's a wrap for Samos. Now I wonder if he raises it or if he keeps it. I I feel like he got to keep it here. Yeah, he can keep it. <laughs> the immediate counter pillage on that that Bez uh, Bez horseman. The counter pillage is for gold. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. That, do they have the gold? Yeah, they do. I see uh, Persia making a decent amount of gold. Uh, Persia is the kind of save that you would expect to make a lot of gold, though, because of their strong internal trade routes. I do also notice uh, Rome stopped building up an army towards Persia, and Persia just kept on building some more and more units. Like he got knight cores, he got uh, heavy chariot cores, and it looks like he's preparing himself for an attack here. Uh, is he gonna go for a cuirassier timing? I think so. I think so. Let's see. Four x sprinting, two turns, but no cuirassier yet, actually. Okay. I mean, Rome. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Rome isn't that far behind in terms of science or technology. Do you think Persia can topple Rome here? Well, Rome doesn't have an um, economy to work with. He's on 20 gold a turn. Oh, you're right. Him, and he's, uh, he's going to lose his uh, military ally. That's so important in, this, in these games. Oh, wait, neither does Persia. Oh, that's another thing. Wait, Persia doesn't have a military alliance. But wait, one sec. One sec. Does he? No, he does have. He does have. Okay. But yeah, I, I think he. Have it. Yeah, he does have it. No, I just didn't scroll up, scroll down uh, far enough. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, because Rome is losing their ally. Portugal is. I mean, that city is. That's a wrap for for Portugal. Um, that means the second per Portugal's out of the game, Rome isn't looking too hot, are they? No. I... I don't get it though. I see a military alliance on Greece attack. Oh, oh, uh, oh, they're not at war. That's why I don't see it. Um, I, I, I saw Greece having a military alliance against Spain, but then I didn't see it on Rome's unit. Oh yeah, that makes a lot more sense. You probably wouldn't get that bonus unless you're both at war with them. Yeah, I did not huh? declare war. I guess he doesn't want to tip his hand uh, early. Yeah, that makes sense because I feel like putting troops on the border, that's like, okay, I might attack you. Declaring war, I'm attacking you. Or I want to find city-states. Yeah. Uh, still, even even just city-states, it's still going to be a, a big alarm clock. <clears throat> okay, so Ta Tagmas did make quick work of the Portuguese uh, cities. It looks like at the moment uh, Japan is struggling to get something. And we got Synth uh, pre-building. Okay, I guess she's going to clean up uh, Japan. Oh yeah, this looks like a, a knight pre-built. Is this a tank push for on Japan? Kurasiers. Kurasiers. Kurasier push. Yeah, bombards. She's one turn away from getting ballistics and she has Kurasier cores. 
should be strong enough with Bombards to take over the take out the cities of Japan. There are only four cities, so it's not like she's gonna inherit a big empire here. See, this is this is one of the dangers of getting caught in a um in an early one v one stalemate is is sure enough you you risk being killed if you don't and you maybe kill the other player but you also put yourself in a position to just be gobbled up by somebody who got to sim city later on yeah exactly so i mean I the go ahead <clears throat> i didn't notice rome and hermione did attack somebody i i guess they declared war on synth did they no did they Let's see no they did i don't know why <clears throat> on Korean Spain I guess uh, unfortunately they just they're just not gonna be uh, as relevant as they wanted to in the next uh, period yeah I'm not sure why would they do that but then city states and a call to kill me I don't know as in somebody <laughs> took them out I'm sorry. Sometimes I treat you like you're my my multiplayer crystal ball, and that you have all the knowledge. But I, you're just human. <laughs> I, mean, I try to be in the player's mind as much as possible, but sometimes you know they they just make decisions that are not making sense. Yeah, they are human after all, so they're going to do weird stuff occasionally. Uh, I do think Kumer here is also in a big trouble, especially because of his uh, economy. And now that um, uh, Mamaleto is starting to get a bit more science and has a, a lot of uh, culture, he could give him a few bonuses, but I don't think he can upkeep an, they can upkeep an army. Like between them, they have like 80 gold. It's not big. Not even mm. 80 gold. 75? 70, yeah, 75. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think that's enough gold to cut the mustard here. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it gives you the strength that you need. What can they do to get more gold, or is it just a case of like their builds just doesn't line up with what they need? Well, Khmer did manage to put down quite a few of these uh, commercials. Uh, he did get like look at those cities: thirteen pop, fourteen pop, thirteen pop, thirteen pop. This is all feed the world uh, bonuses here. Um, but he didn't fully prioritize getting uh, an economy and I guess he's working wait is he working internals oh my god he is working internals that's the problem so maybe they don't have who's, who has a cat a cat is nobody wait a second Elor Hill and the bishop Elor Hill is Rome and the bishop is Japan. They're fighting for a city state here. And that was the, the gold generator for Khmer. Okay. Oh, I guess he, really? Yeah, I, I guess he could try to send some of those trade routes uh, to his uh, quote unquote opponents. Mm, then you're just building roads for them and giving them a reason to declare war on you. Yeah. So it seems kind of risky. But at some point. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> true. I mean, it is technically inevitable, this game, that you'll be at war with uh, as someone. But Pangaea as a map is, is so different to um, to Seven Seas. Because in the Seven Seas map, there was a lot of like terrain between players. In this game, everybody is in your face, dude. Yes. I, I personally like so much Pangaea because of that. You get like enough sim and a lot of war. Of each civilization has like seven to ten cities uh, worth of space and they can uh, uh, sim up and get to a higher technology level but at the same time they are so close to their neighbors they're not gonna get to avoid them on highlands for example it's just somebody just gonna spawn on some corner of the map forgotten by anybody by everybody and you just can't get there without the railroads yeah for sure they're gonna be, they're gonna make like 12 16 cities the sim all the way to like airplanes and tank armies and then just roll over their neighbor <clears throat> yeah it's uh, also seven seas i i also i like seven seas but i like it because of the um, um diversity you get land wars and um, you get some uh, coastal wars uh, going which is quite nice but it does a lot of the times it does come down to how the players uh, try to get their economy with um, the sea trade routes and so on versus players that don't have that option 
It was, we did watch an FFA though. You know, a teamers on seven seas is totally different. Oh yeah, I can imagine because depending on the positioning, different players are going to play differently because you'll probably have your flank, you probably have your sacrifice and you have your pocket who makes money and then you have your, 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 um, your simmer. Yeah, exactly. Every player has a, has a position on the team and, and performs a role. Yeah, uh, actually, you know, there's a type of game play developed right now in the mod which allows you to get those uh, positions set from the beginning oh that's really interesting so you can pick like i want to be the sim player today i want to be in the back yeah so basically it's like a um, east versus west uh, type of uh, game and you do get to pick your front line and you you say like okay slot one and slot to five are going to be front line and then you get to pick your simmer slot six and slot two is going to be the simmer and slot seven and slot three is are going to be um, uh, i don't know something else like f top or bottom and yep. so on and you get to build tactics around those uh, roles over there just like you do in uh, league of legends or dota yeah, or even Age of Empires. I don't know. Uh, Age of Empires typically has um, four players in a line and the two players closest to the enemy. Those are flank players. They play like heavy feudal. And then pocket players, they do eco and go for like higher tier units. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I didn't know that. That's that's why I like to say flank and pocket. So the flank is the guy at the front and the pocket is the guy at the back. Or in save, that would be like the fighter and the simmer. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I guess it's going to take a while until we uh, figure out all of the meta, but, uh, you know, that is not unheard of. That happened in so many other games. It's, you know, it's a process. I would be so, really interested to, to, to cast or even just watch a, um, a game with that kind of East versus West gameplay, because I feel like that has a lot of potential for interesting metas to develop. Oh, I, I think so myself. It's just uh, the moment it's at the beta stage. Um, it didn't get quite catch on with uh, the players. We're going to need to wait for the players to adopt it and the tournaments to start yeah that sounds like it's going to be really really exciting and honestly anytime like the great thing about save is there's so much you can inject into the scene like new map types new formats for games that like there really is just infinite replayability infinite content infinite ability to develop any sort of meta that you want um and i think that's like what keeps the game so fresh and why so many people love it yeah, I, personally, that's one of the reasons I love it. Even if you think it's going to be, oh, the same thing over and over again, it's so different in details from one game to the other. For sure. Different like different land, different uh, um, amenities, different uh, resources, different cities, different everything. Yeah, for sure. Like, even just look at that game, last game. Like, China lived in two different worlds. One where he got one error score and one where he didn't. And, and, and like, subtle little changes like that that maybe somebody who isn't super familiar with the game, that might look like... I mean, it's the same game every time, but, man, you're playing a different game every day. Yeah. And still, he did manage to uh, withstand as much as he could the damage from his opponent. I mean, yeah, absolutely. He he went down swinging. He did not go out like uh, easily, easily. <clears throat> yeah, look at the Quirasir course coming off from Bezdomi now. Uh, we're one turn away from, actually, two turns away from uh, the plus five on the Conquistadors going out, and they ran out of uh, steam going against the Quir on the Quirasir course. Mm, for sure. Like now, the Quirassiers themselves probably can't hold it, but the Quirassier cores that's where um yeah these conquistadors are <laughs> oh no they're not having a good time yeah. and now with the line of uh, field cannons behind all of that that is going to be important oh that's the uh, first player taken out gg that's uh, oh. hermione yeah Her hermione is dead um named for the harry potter character may, may her rest in peace <laughs> a rip rest in peppuccino pappuccino cappuccino all that sort of stuff <laughs> <clears throat> um so with with portugal out of the game there's a bit of a question now what do you do with portugal's old land do you settle it up or do you take these tagmas and immediately turn around and throw them at the Khmer and pray that you make progress i think those uh units from byzantium should have given the cities to japan but maybe that's just me uh, japan needs a bit of help here otherwise it's just okay okay
uh, Greed as well, like she stopped upgrading her units. She actually moved a few units to the west side here. Even if uh, she got a few pre-business to Misanabi, they're just sitting there. Uh, interesting uh, choice, not going for more. Maybe she does want to go for uh, some tank timings over here. Um, she did give the gold to Spain on the other side of the world here. And Spain is trying to get more cuirassiers, more uh, of everything to keep the advantage going against Greece. Uh, this is their first contender. That's the thing over here. If they manage to break Greece, best dummy, uh, they probably win the game, hands down. There's nobody in the game that could um, uh, get up to their uh, level. Um, I guess the third team would be... Well, the third team is Khmer with uh, Pericles, and they don't have enough steam to um, uh, handle a Cre a Simming and, and uh, Spain Simming. Especially if uh, Spain does manage to uh, break down uh, Greek defenses here. Uh, it, it's still not going to be easy. We got field cannons coming out of the series of uh, Greece. We do have uh, uh, quite a few of these um, uh, conquistadors that will lose the plus five bonus they had uh, in this World Congress session. It's going to be quite uh, important how will Noob 64 adapt to this uh, new situation that he's going to find himself in. Hey, oh, sorry, I'm back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, Gorgo did manage to get to army. He just didn't army up anything. Interesting. Yeah, no problem. I was just uh, going through the, the motions here. I did notice uh, Kree stopped, attack, stopped the attack on uh, Japan didn't uh, want to um, take out clean up the east yeah why do you think they turned around maybe it wasn't a, uh, we missed justice and it wasn't an attack force maybe she just wanted to get a few units here in case of uh, you know shit happens break the glass um, yeah that makes sense but I do see her building bombards and you don't build bombards to defend yourself you know like it's that's attack. That's attacking. Oh, uh, I'm going B. Let's go turf. Turtles? Okay. Yeah, nobody's. I don't think anybody's going to go turtles. Uh, profit? Great profit? Yep. Sounds good. I'm voting A. Yes, you're voting A. Perfecto. Um, yeah, I, I think I would agree, like, because Bombards, that's an aggressive unit. You don't really defend with artillery, unless these are, like, pre-builds for artillery, but that feels really early for RD pre-builds. Yeah. This Domi wants a relobby, but honestly, it's uh, non-important to Congress anyway. <laughs> yeah, then like Noob T three four is saying, there's like no stake in the game here for for the lobby. That that is how important, by the way, the World Congress is in the four v four with the diplo win. You like every points count for the diplo. Win. Yeah, for sure. Made Congress such an important part of the game. Absolutely, because it's kind of like this, uh, the diplomatic victory becomes like a ticking time bomb, right? Like eventually someone's yeah. going to win it. So it looks like the decision is that the World Congress uh, desync doesn't matter enough. Although, is it normal for the World Congress to get desynced? Uh, no, but that just goes to show somebody has uh, different mods in the game and we just didn't catch them. Probably the reason for the disconnect for the Phyrexis crashes. Yeah, Phyrexis crashes. God damn you, Phyrexis. Fix your I mean, game. Oh, like that like 100% not their fault. It's uh, sometimes it's Steam, sometimes it's uh, how uh, the mods interact with the game. Yeah, there we go. Just don't be Oh, there it is, yep. It looks like a re-lobby has been called, so this will... 
probably take a couple of minutes here to get this back up and running. I hope so. Uh, I think uh, they want to do it after the Congress. So they, so it does. Uh, I, I guess at the same time, they want to also see if he keeps on desyncing. It might be just one off thing. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> so let's take a moment here, I guess, with the pause um, and have a look at each player and each team's position. Um, how do you feel about Byzantium finally getting out some settlers here? I feel like they're not going to go higher in slot. Oh, rip. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a relobby here. I'm just going to restart my game to be safe. Same. I do think at uh, this point nothing in the teams will change anymore you, you think, think the rankings uh, are set in stone yeah at this point it feels like there's very few chances that Khmer with uh, uh, Pericles will manage to get the second spot away from Gorgo and Persia uh, Persia w might probably kill Rome which Rome is irrelevant anyway, so they're just gonna sediment their lead in the second place. And then uh, Byzantium with uh, Japan is just not relevant anymore. They, they don't have anybody to kill next to them. It's Cree, which is like three times their science uh, and production and everything. And then it's uh, uh, Khmer, which again has a lot of science and potential to buy all the stuff with the faith. And so it's just not gonna happen. Maybe I'm wrong because look, it all depends on also if uh, Gorgo manages to defend. Uh, to defend, if Gorgo doesn't manage to defend, that's a that might be a problem. Yeah, I think I think I think Gorgo might be able to hold. I, it really does come down to like, does somebody get wiped out in the next thirty turns? I think I, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Maybe one point, uh, I don't know if you heard it or not, but uh, Greece, Gorgo does have uh, armies. Uh, he could army up and that's an important amount of uh, the extra damage that he can get. It could be that maybe he pushes back Spain back to the, to the sea. Yeah. We oh. need to check out his uh, production though. Cause it kind of looked like um, Spain did have an enormous amount of units there. Yeah, it did. Um, I thank you for the lobby link, by the way. I appreciate that. I'm loading in now. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to need to rejoin, though, because I see a lot of zero MS. Yeah, like four or five. So many. No, I got to give you huge props, by the way, to uh, stay, <laughs> to be able to cast this long for a day, because I'm already starting to feel my energy start to dip. It's getting, it's tough out here, man. I feel like I need a coffee and need to do like some yoga or something to get myself back in the game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on my uh, second coffee also. Uh, <laughs> and I, I have to say, you're helping me stay uh, focused here because uh, if I'm alone and I'm doing this, I need to speak a lot uh, like with a higher tempo. Uh, so I uh, get everything, like every bit of, of information going and, and it taxes me a lot when it comes to energy. Yeah, for sure. I think that's one of the nice things because like if I had to cast all of these games on my own, man, I would struggle. But like I think having a second person to bounce off of, even though I don't actually have much to say other than like, oh, what do you think of this, Michael? Michael, you're the expert. What do you think? You know, <laughs> I spent my entire time deferring to you. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's it that's, uh, gets the conversation going. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, uh, speaking of this, uh, let me get uh, some juice. Give me a sec. Some madness. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna get some water actually while we're in the lobby.
Well, that's uh, good to know. Thank you, guys. Uh, both me and uh, and Potato do agree. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to write that. I don't see Pericles when uh, he actually disconnected. Click. Wait, how Diplo Victory are in the game? Should there be great people for that? Uh, Diplo. I mean, it would be nice, but I think Diplo Victory is uh, quote unquote uh, good as it is right now. It's actually a bit of a problem for some of the players. They, they feel like it's a bit too strong. It, that timer puts too much pressure on them even though honestly i've seen so many times uh, a team successfully defended so it feels like to me from my perspective it feels like it is uh, it is balanced uh, the only unbalancing part is um, it's really hard when a team loses a player when it's a 4v4 or a 4v2 kind of situation uh, that is a problem uh, and <coughs> it, it, I'm not sure how they can solve that problem, because in any case, even if you do get great people and so on, it's still going to be a problem. Um, also, I don't think you can code a game in such a way in which uh, you can give, uh, for example, a few more bonuses uh, to players that do manage to get um, into that four versus three situation, the three teammates. Uh, and I know Phyrexis did implement that uh, losing of uh, influence points if you um, or Diplo points actually, yeah, influence points if you hold uh, enemy capital I'm not sure if it was changed by uh, BBG at some point there was some talk of that and I know players are giving away their Diplo favor is this are you talking about catch up mechanics uh, yeah there were uh, people saying that <laughs> Uh, there might be some uh, need for uh, great people in the game for Diplo victories uh, to get uh, like maybe some points into a Diplo victory or something like that as they are uh, generated for the 4v4s. I was um, also I was making the argument that at the moment uh, people are struggling with uh, Diplo as it is. Yeah, for sure. It it doesn't seem like it's it's, it's very hard to get a diplomatic victory. Uh, well, like I mean, it's not easy, but it's not a struggle. Yeah, I mean, you, you need to pay attention to the rules, right? So get the get the Statue of Liberty away from your opponent that's trying to go for a Diplo victory to uh, get your own Diplo favor going and so on. I, I don't think there would be... I think, well, something you could do is like take one of the points off of the Statue of Liberty and then put two points onto a great person. Maybe that would make the diplomatic victory a little bit more diverse. Well, what kind of type of great person would you want that to be yeah Most that's a musician because uh, if you enter a musician it's gonna be a total total <laughs> weird kind of a game yeah i guess my natural inclination would be like a merchant i guess because that's almost like the diplomatic guy yeah I, I don't know and see it's hard because here's the thing it's very easy to point out problems in a game it's very hard to solve those problems. Like, it's very easy to say that, like, uh, you know, uh, it's it's it, it's easy to become irrelevant and hard to get back into the game. But it's, like, it's very hard to come up with a solution to that. Yeah. You do have to uh, agree. And uh, I do have a, a lot of respect for the BBG team on this side. Uh, they, uh, there are so many people on their server, by the way. It's a whole server of thousands of people that are talking about balancing the game it's not a few a few uh, that are deciding everything it's so many people giving ideas so many people uh, bouncing them off so many people to try them out and so on in the in the beta phase yeah it's like a huge community effort to try and get uh my man breathing up the storm listen i ran up the stairs it, it's a huge community effort to uh Oh my god, what is the word I'm trying to say? To, 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 to try to balance the game and make it more interesting, make it more fair to play in the multiplayer. Can, can you imagine the passion of the players that they want to be in literally like how bigger, <laughs> like this is bigger than even a company would actually get. 
people to uh, test their games. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, if if Araxis or 2K, they if they want a balanced team, <laughs> they've got like a 2,000 man <laughs> squad ready to help them out. Exactly. There we go. It's uh, it's unbelievable how much uh, how much this matters, right? And so, uh, it just goes to say how much people want the game to be uh, open up for multiplayer in, in that competitive type of uh, gameplay. Yeah, for sure. So many people want the game to be fair, they want it to be fun, and they want it to be successful as well. Um, so before uh, the desync, if you don't mind me to bring us back to the game a little bit, we were talking about like Byzantium and we were talking about the current standing of each player. And, and you said you basically don't think that the current rankings will change very much by the end of the game. Um, yes, if you open up the score tab, for example, you, we get to see the points, right? The definite points. So since nobody's going to overcome her science anytime soon, uh, Noob634 is not going to need to worry about the coast anymore. Uh, because, I mean, uh, I, let's face it, Japan is not going to be a threat, or at least a three-year one. Uh, he's on 39 cents, a 38 culture, like, really. Uh, and he is pushing on Greece's capital uh, as hard as he can with a lot of field cannon cores and uh, well I guess now he stopped with quite a few bombards and conquistadors I guess this is it this is this is as much as he could push um, then on the second team we do have Bezdomian Forex Forex <coughs> would ideally get Rome because Rome lost his uh, military um, alliance so that means all of these cuirassiers uh, not only they're not coarse but they're also with a minus five on them Ooh, but yeah he, like i mean persia could theoretically just kind of I, I don't know if i would say roll over rome but he could take rome fairly easily yeah fairly easy he's he's also getting there he's uh, preparing with more bombards uh, you can see the bombards coming out of uh, tushpa and pasargade uh, getting a few more coursers uh, getting uh, banks out for a stronger economy and sending uh, externals towards uh, his ally towards greece yeah so i mean he set very... up for a really strong war economy yeah uh well i i guess i do see rome is also preparing to defend but honestly uh it's just everything is stacked against him at this point. Yeah, um, I, uh, the one advantage is Rome has like a slight culture lead, but that economy difference, a hundred gold in the difference. He's yeah. going to have a hard time upgrading any of those units. And he's, uh, look at the production difference. It's 196 versus 234. And if you take a look at Gorgo, he's at almost 300. Ooh. And, and actually, speaking of production, I mean, team, a uh, team, uh, uh, Zoc, their production and food, I think it like, like, like Synth alone nearly beats every other team except for Falrix and Bez Domni. Yep, 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 yep. And oh, if that brings me up to the second subject, uh, uh, the third team actually, Khmer and Pericles. Uh, at the beginning, it looked like a strong beginning for uh, uh, Gorgo. Uh, for Pericles, I'm sorry. And then he stopped expanding at some point. Not that he actually had a lot of places to quickly expand, but he did stop doing it. And yeah. And because uh, of this, he doesn't have even 100 science. He's on 97 with 173. The total amount of science is half the noob and half the synth. It's like ooh, such a big difference between him and um, uh, even Gorgo and uh, Persia. Yeah, I was nearly going to say, like, I mean, Greece sat on five cities for so long. Well, I can't help but feel that that was just not aggressive enough. Like, look how, like, I know Tundra cities aren't very good, but surely they're worth settling, no? I mean, he still had the, the cities that he settled right now, at least three other cities. If he got them 15 turns earlier, he'd, it would have been a totally different uh, game for him. Not to mention the coastals on the west. Sure, don't settle exactly on the coast. You settle next to the coast, like he said, uh, for care. Yeah, I don't know. I just... It feels... It feels almost like Papa Chilling last game where he just... He stopped expanding at some point. Um, or, or it wasn't Papa Chilling. I don't remember who it was. It was uh, someone just stopped expanding. And then, like, you know, it, you always be building settlers. ABC or ABS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 
uh, they're not gonna have the chance to go over team one uh, or i should say the second team in the in the game right it's just not gonna happen and then you have papa chilling with uh, basil the second and japan i mean do you see them climbing up <laughs> no no i i think your analysis might actually be right here let me think about that i guess ideally byzantium can get like four uh take more cities out but i don't think it's gonna put them on the same level as um as the third team Unless yeah for sure I, dies, which i don't think so i think i think we're we're starting to see like the great power solidify and like we were saying earlier i think in order for the balance of power to to shift i think someone's got to die and in my mind the person most likely to die here it's rome yeah if they kill rome they solidify that second place nobody will contest them and that's it yeah that's a wrap victory conditions would still be open as in culture victory for example would still be open for somebody but honestly nobody's getting enough tourism to go for it and the second somebody's gonna go for it and the notifications start to pop like oh somebody's getting a tourism with tourists against you uh, your opponents are going to start to either defend or kill you. It's one of the two. Yeah, I think also, like, if you think about Pericles' position, like, he's one of the strongest culture saves in the game for getting a culture victory. Yeah. And he got, like, the strongest counter pick to Pericles, Gorgo, in his game. So what does he do? Like, how do you beat that? Like, you, it makes your culture victory attempt so much harder. Yeah, it's, it basically neuters your ability to go for a culture victory. One good thing is that uh, the moment Pericles is not um, taking advantages, uh, the war between Gorgo and uh, Spain, he could use that uh, peace that they have on the south and uh, the lack of attention of Greece to just settle more cities uh, next, next to Olympia, to the left of Olympia and right of Olympia. It's two more cities. Yeah, definitely. Man, I... I... I look at all this empty land on the map, but I'm I'm so shocked because when I play Civ, I'm dude, I'm like eating up every single ounce of land I can find. I'm dropping the cities on them. Yeah, exactly. You got to, you got to. Um, so I, centers are so important. I, I I can't help but feel like maybe these players who are definitely better than me at multiplayer, like maybe they know something I don't, and maybe settling a little bit more carefully has its own advantages. Well, like, like we've seen and talked about Persia, he could have 100% seemed a bit differently and he would have probably had a uh, different tempo in the game. But even so, he did manage to get a good game going. Mm, for sure. And finally, he got the city, by the way, on the geothermal. It was like his seventh, eighth city, but he got it. Man. We thought it was going to be his second. <laughs> <laughs> I know... Maybe this is speculative, but I can't help but feel maybe the game would have been a little bit different if he had settled slightly differently. I don't know. Do you feel the same? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It would be, it would have been differently. I think he would have managed to overpower Rome much sooner, and uh, would have posed a much bigger threat to Khmer that he wouldn't have settled all of these cities in front of his face. Look at Khmer just sit over here with uh, no units in Lingapura and Nagara. I know it's so brazen and it's so like in his face he's basically asking Persia to like like he doesn't even have a scout yeah. you've, you've got to be a seriously brave or know something that someone else doesn't like does does Khmer just know that Persia is going to attack Rome and that he's totally safe until Rome's dead yeah I've... I think he's just uh, taking a wild guess over here or taking a chance I don't think he, he can't know 100%. They, maybe they, I don't think they talked something out, but maybe they did talk something out. Uh, or uh, it, as far I, as I, I know they're in different channels, so they can't really discuss, negotiate stuff unless it's in a chat. Yeah, for sure. I just thought maybe he's making a call, like he's making a gamble that, look, look, Persia's not going to attack me, he's going to attack Rome. And is that like, that seems like a really risky gamble to make. Yeah. Um, 
what is Persia or sorry, not Persia, what is Khmer's game plan from here? Because they're swimming pretty hard. So what do you what do you see them doing in the next 10, 20 turns? Try to get an economy. So they, they just need gold, <laughs> so, is it? Yeah, they need gold. They don't 12 gold at 10. So they have a lot of faith they can use to buy units if they need to. They don't need to uh, really do anything like produce them. But not having an economy to upkeep them that really turns uh, everything so w fast so bad uh, he's getting commercials out i see him building markets i see him getting, getting a few harbors out it's just he has all of his uh, traders internally and that hurts his economy so badly right now he needs to somehow get a cad or at least an option to send those traders to a cad at the moment, the cat is not at war with anybody, so he should be able to send it. Yeah, he, like, I mean, just he needs some sort of international trade route. And this is one of the dangers of a, a, a team or map uh, like this is if you just don't spawn near your ally, you're trading internally. Yeah. I, I do know that Byzantium is getting those cities out. Three setters coming out from him. He's going to settle coast. He's not afraid of the coast anymore. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Since they basically have coastal dominance with Japan having caravels and stuff like that, at least for the foreseeable future. Although Spain is starting to poke in with some boats to the east of um, to the east of the old Portuguese cities. Yep. And other than that, we're gonna need to see how Crete will uh, do her moves here. Yeah, uh, like we've seen, for example, Spain uh, deal the damage against Bezdomi, stopping <clears throat> him from being first there. We're trying to um, uh, get to the first position. The same will need to happen from since uh, going against this, uh, the players around her, like Khmer, or maybe take over Japan and so on. Because it's going to help if she has more points to counterbalance uh, any, any, anyone else. For example, there's only a 90 point difference between the two teams right now. Yeah, it's not for sure. That big. For sure. If, if a 90 point difference means like she takes over Japan, kills a little Japan, boom, now she's got, uh, you know, another 30, 40, maybe 50 points out of that. And now her lead is more solidified. Yeah. Oh, I just saw since or somebody declared war. Uh, they're at war right now since and uh, Japan. So mm. maybe she's trying to do something. Okay. This almost feels a little bit like um, the war from... Oh, who was it that attacked China again? Was it the Aztec? It kind of feels like the Aztec war again. It, it feels like a little bit early for Synth to be pushing in, so I can't help but feel that that wasn't their war deck. I don't know, honestly. I, I don't know. I, I saw the notification from the bishop declaring war on Kree, but then I see Kree moving with a... Here inside of his territory, so maybe she wanted to um, pillage a missionary or so. Well, I'm not sure, honestly. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell what the players are thinking. It, it's uh, the notification, not the players. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, sorry. Sometimes yeah. <laughs> are not in the correct order. That's the uh, issue. Yeah, that's what I meant. Is like it, it's hard to actually figure out who did what and why because the notifications don't you uh, uh, word it correctly. Yeah. Um, from since perspective here, what would you be doing? Would you be you simming up to get tanks? I assume or because she has cuirassiers, but I don't think cuirassiers wins this war. No, bombards will win this war. Bombards with cuirassiers. Yeah, that's true. Actually, these bombards uh, and a couple of field cannons to take out units because these bombards look like they will smash the city's defenses. A single bombard taking yeah. out nearly half of the city's walls. Uh, one stopper here, it's the lack of a general, and by the looks of it, she's making 50 great general points, so she's trying to get uh, projects in. We are in the industrial modern, so 100% she needs one of these generals. Yeah, for sure. And I just noticed that she has thrown down one, two, three, four, five encampments, which definitely signals a willingness to go to war, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is her preparing for that uh, tank timing. And we already have Bezdomi asking uh, for the CC. That's, they're the second team. So it's first Synth and Noob, second team Bezdomi and Forex, third team is uh, Alcoholic and Mamaleto, and then fourth Papa Chilling and the Bishop. 
Well, coming up on the thi- fifth, it was um, Portugal with uh, Rome. If the second team wants to CC to the first, I mean, it's going to be very unlikely we're going to have the third team uh, uh, putting a minus. They're going to expose. The- you-, you saw what happened last time when somebody yep. minus the CC. <laughs> For sure. Everybody's attention turned on that guy. <laughs> it's like, what do you think you can do to change this game? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so say that it's... again. Say it in my face. <laughs> yeah, say you don't want to end again. Um, but it is interesting that literally on the turn where I think this the the concede rule comes into effect, people are you know kind of floating the idea of maybe this game is a little bit. I don't want to say stagnant, but maybe there isn't room to maneuver unless somebody makes a really big play. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. At uh, the moment, Spain is just gonna keep on fighting Greece. Greece knows he's gonna need to keep on fighting Spain, so he's not gonna get to develop his empire anymore. Uh, that means no more cities, no more, not that many points acquired. And I guess sure, uh, Persia can take over Rome, but honestly, so can Crete take over Japan. So it's not like, oh my God, it's such a big uh, advantage. Yeah, and I think to be honest, like between Persia attacking Rome and and. Cree attacking Japan. I think I prefer the Cree attacking Japan scenario because they got way more tech, yeah. science, and money to do, to to make that happen. <clears throat> and the difference is, look at Japan: forty-one science and Cree two hundred thirty-eight. Oh, <laughs> they're two hundred and thirty-nine <laughs> science. Jesus. Yeah. And in the production, look at that: it's forty-one production on Japan since it's four hundred and twenty-seven. Ten times the production. God, 41 production. I mean, like, if we look at some of these Japanese cities, they have, like, two or three improved the tiles. The capital city is making almost double the amount of Japan's production. Total. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's just not going to be a, a fair fight. No, this isn't a fair fight in any stretch of the imagination. I love seeing the players have a little bit of fun with this. Yeah. And uh, some some banter is always uh, welcome. Yeah, definitely. To be honest, like I wouldn't mind an early CC. I could go to bed and maybe watch a movie and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus plus. Plus plus. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. It's been a great day for Civ, man. We've gotten two incredible games, and that's not even counting like the four or five other games that went on. Yeah. I want to see if anything happened in the in the points here, because, like I was saying, it's a ongoing struggle to get those uh, as many points as possible. And uh, every game will count until the end. That that's the biggest thing over here, and uh, it's um, an advantage if you have more players available for your clan, because you can put them in more games. Yeah, for sure. Oh, looks like uh, even Rome is uh, is saying, uh, please, CC. He feels the pressure there. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely feeling the pressure. <laughs> I'm going to take it to Persia, please, CC. I mean, he's uh, already on the last spot. Well, he can't go lower than that, right? Yeah, to be fair, it, it's not like he's going to jostle for like second last. I think <laughs> there's not much he could do to change the outcome of the game. And I don't even think that, yeah, with with, with the noob and, and, and Spider... Excuse me, with the noob and Spider War, I don't think they're... Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think your call is correct here. I don't think the positions can change. And, and it's really just down to when do the players think that the game is over. I'm not sure when they are allowed to CC, though. I think it's turn 81. That's the usual CC rules. But uh, I guess I got to ask. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't think... I like. <laughs> I don't want to say that the game is over because I always want to keep the, the, the hint of, of hope alive. You know what I mean? Like maybe something will happen, yeah, something yeah, cool. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> but there's there's sometimes you reach a situation where it's like, okay, <laughs> nobody's doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a question here. If Creed takes Japan, does it have enough range to trade with Madrid? Oof. Should be 30, I, I believe, right? 30 for uh, sea routes. I don't think these are 30 tiles. These are more than 30 tiles. Yeah, hang on. Let me. Uh... No. 
That seems mm. a bit too far away. I'm, I'm, I'm counting. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-three. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. No, uh, the, the continent, they're just too far apart. Maybe if they both had a city like at the bottom of the continents, um, like on the tundra, you could trade across from tundra to tundra, but I don't think you're connecting those cities. Okay. Yeah. Right. They're about so 10 tiles a, off. <clears throat> I got an answer from Minjack from the TD, and he said that they are allowed to concede the normal uh, CPR rules. Uh, depends if they voted uh, 20 turns later or no. Well, let me double check. I, I don't think they voted that. Nobody votes that. But no, they didn't actually. He, I think he was more just taking the temperature of the room to see how people felt about CCing. Um, but I, I think also the players might just be having a good time and they're happy to continue for a, a little while longer. Maybe eke out a little bit more score for their hurt pride. I think when it's a tournament, you, you kind of don't want to give up too early. Oh, for sure, but you don't want to waste too much time either. Yeah, that's true. Let me see. It's no change in the voting time. Okay. So okay. it's a turn 81. I think Persia actually wants to f fulfill his uh, mission over here and maybe take over a role. Um, see if uh, they can uh, get more points from that. But at the same time, uh, Japan is going to fall to uh, Kree. He doesn't know this yet. No, <laughs> we know this, but he does not. He is oblivious. I mean, he's building privateers. I don't know if privateers are going to help you, bro. Yeah, I, I guess that they, they will do a bit more damage. So I do have a question, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, and this is more of a flavor question. Who's like... We, we kind of know how the game is sitting, but who has the best city names? Like, you know, you know, t uh, the, the, the Byzantium city names are quite good. And uh, some of the conquered city names for Byzantium are great as well. And, you know, Cree has some fantastic city names. Whose city names do you think stand out for you this game? Um, that's a good question. Let me let me see what what we have here. Okay, so I, I guess there weren't that many changes in uh, Pericles in... Uh, wait, you're talking about custom ones or you're talking about just... Uh, yeah, custom city well, names. Like, you come over here to custom. Byzantium, you got Tagma Spawning Center, Tagma Go Ka, Tagma, what Tagma? <laughs> All these great city names. Well, at least, honestly, uh, Byzantium did fulfill his uh, mission with that uh, on one side. On the other side, we got... Uh, we, we can feel since... Uh, um, uh, how to say uh, frustration with the barbs <laughs> from the beginning <laughs> yeah i think uh, name <laughs> i think the city thank you sir used to be renamed it's sending muskets now question mark uh you could definitely <laughs> you're, you're getting a strong sense of the frustration with barbarians i feel like i gotta give it the sense this game those have been the most entertaining city names yeah for sure and okay now she's starting to build up an army with a seer course uh best domi is starting to ask uh, to cc by score yeah i'm wondering if the other players will uh start to agree with him uh maybe they're focused well let's see uh it's all i think it's all up to greece and uh khmer but honestly with khmer being between four opponents Oof, I don't really believe he has much of a choice here. Ooh, yeah. I mean, ha being squeezed between four opponents, it's kind of like, if you even if you're strong enough to attack one of them, the other one just attacks you in the back, right? Yeah, that's the problem. You, you can't defend all, your, of, all of your sides. Yeah, and if you can't defend, you can't attack. I mean, it looks like he's just spamming out wonders and trying to make, uh, make score and sim as hard as possible right now. Yep. I would like to inform you that Greece has made enough culture uh, tourists to be dominant over me as an observer with zero tourists. He has earned his first cultural uh, uh, tourist. Oh, both of them actually did. Okay. Bezdomi and Mamaleto did. Hey, impressive timing on that one. Yeah. I mean, they do have uh, 200 culture. How much tourism are they making? 
72 best domi and 81 momoleto so very close to each other oh how do you check the um the tourism uh, you go to overall and you hover over the culture victory uh icons you see there are like seven icons over there two, six, oh seven. yes 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 i see thank yes, you that's tourism, great tourism. Uh, uh, you know, before we had these um, uh, labels at the top, top of the screen with uh, all of the stats uh, in the game, uh, we used to manually check uh, the progression of the game. And this actually uh, took us so much time from us in, in the game because we had to open up the world rankings and go to the like whatever we wanted, wait for the pop up and then switch oh my god that sounds like it was a nightmare you must have been so happy the day you got to play with this uh ui mod yes oh my god yes yes please uh the, the reason why we can afford to spend less time in the third because it was like 20 30 seconds in more to actually uh, accommodate for the checking the manual checking for sure for sure um, that <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. That sounds like a pain in the ass. <laughs> yes, it, it was. It was. But honestly, so like this game improved so much since the first versions. With all of the updates uh, from Fire Access, uh, did come uh, extremely good life improvements. Oh, for sure. Like I mean, even just like I know you can't really use them in multiplayer, but man, I love pins in single player. You could just plan yeah. your whole city out. I wish they worked in multiplayer. It's kind of annoying that they oh. don't. I mean, they do, but they get that uh, lag effect, unfortunately. It just, whenever somebody pins, uh, some of the players do have uh, lag, uh, pin lags, it, we call it, because of Steam. It's not even because of uh, Fire Access, because of Steam. We got the same effect on LAN as well. Really? It's because of Steam? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, information that is being sent through the Steam network that somehow it gets cached somewhere and it like um obviously gets uh, throttled or something i don't know exactly how it works but it causes a freeze oh that sounds like a nightmare jesus god spaghetti yes. spaghetti code somewhere in the steam library yeah I, I don't know where it is what it does but it is extremely annoying i have it and it's oh my god like it if seven people are pinning at the same time my whole game freezes for like a minute I mean, it's the perfect way to grief a game. You know, if you start losing, you just stop drop. You just start dropping those pins, baby. Lag out your opponent's computer. He leaves the game. You win by default. Easy clap. Oh wait, actually, we did have that. Maybe I get the picture uh, over here. Uh, there was a, uh, a tournament two years ago when we started running tournaments with um, you know, casters and so on, in which uh, I was. Wait, wait, let me see. Let me see no um i was the the caster and we had like eight players in the game and the one of the players that was losing wanted to force the cc so he was pinning in on every tile of the map he was like making uh, faces out of pins on the map <laughs> 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 i don't know if i have a i think i have it somewhere i, I know i like a lot of the stuff i did keep because you know just for uh fun sake let me see if i can change the view here no, medium icons maybe big icons let me see extra large okay we did catch him but we had to load in to his uh view to see what happened there oh that's evil he was doing it to grief the game you know yeah. <clears throat> i respect a good troll but also at the same time don't grief a game come on yes other people are trying to have a good time everybody was blaming me for uh, being a bad host when instead when uh, instead he was the one uh, doing it <laughs> okay that's an incredible troll okay i'm sorry but <laughs> when someone else is getting blamed for your shenanigans <laughs> that's a great troll yeah. at least be a man and take it you know yeah true leave up up to it uh i don't find them come on Persia has invaded Rome, by the way. The, the battle is ongoing. What do you think about this? Oh, one second. I was out there. Uh, Persia has invaded Rome. Uh, I think uh, Rome is going to die. Uh, <laughs> looking at how fast he's going to die, it's like it's going to take a while because Rome 
is not getting to his wait a second let me double check uh rom 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 five turns away from steel uh well he's gonna get steel before he's gonna lose uh, rom, uh, the city of rome and looking at uh, what Persia can do, it doesn't look like he's gonna get uh, strong enough units to attack into steel walls. So, I guess we're gonna wait. Yeah, I guess the second those steel wall goes up, this Persian attack grinds to a halt. Now, I, I, I can't help but feel though, like if, if your opponent is getting steel walls, did he wait too long to attack? Uh, yes, he did. He should have w went on the offensive for like, I think 10 turns ago. He, he had the units, he had the um, spawn. It's just uh, he didn't want to do it for some reason. Yeah, I think he maybe hesitated. Um, yeah. And it also looks like they're trying to... Are they still trying to call the CC? I can't tell. Um, but I, at least it is very interesting to see this war happen because... Although, then again, Rome doesn't have anything to defend here. Is Rome given up? I found them. I found the pins. I'm going to share them in your uh, Discord. Yeah, please do. I want to see them. <laughs> oh my he god. He had two cities. You see on the he has like two cities. That's it. That's what he had. Cockroach cities. And he was doing this all over the map. Oh my god. What a This is some serious cockroach play. Yes. Um, I you know what I respect the grind. Yeah. Wait, why is Bez minusing? Oh, it looks like Falrex wants to kill Rome for some for some reason. Falrex wants to keep playing and maybe try to take the top spot. I think he just wants to play for the sake of playing. Yeah, um, it could be. You could be right there. And also, again, he doesn't. I don't think they know. Let me actually double check uh, the vision. Do they know about Japan dying here? They don't know about Japan dying. So they don't know that at the same time as he is getting some points, so is uh, Kree getting some points. And uh, also, he wants to push back on uh, Spain with um, musket <laughs> army fascist fascism. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> I mean, this war has gone back and forth between Toledo and Sparta <laughs> at least twice now. They're just ping ponging back and forth. Yeah, indeed. Uh, he does. He is three turns off of getting totalitarianism which I guess gives him fascism uh, long ahead of um, noob even getting mobilization only just now get picking up armies uh, so maybe I don't know uh, is there a scenario here in which Gorgo kills Spain and they take the top spot I don't think so even with uh, mobilization it's going to be way too tough for him to, uh, even with fascism I mean it's going to be way too tough for him to push into Spain maybe that's just my uh, impression of it mm, yeah, you, you're probably right I mean you're right about everything you know way more about the game than me at least from a multiplayer perspective a single player I might give you a run for your money um Oh, for sure. I know nothing of single player. <laughs> I don't have the, the patience to uh, wait for AIs to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. That is the one nice thing own. about multiplayer is no one is sending you deals. Yeah. Oh, my God. That is, yeah. That, those five seconds of my life, I'm never going to go get back. <laughs> <laughs> true. I, I, I... One thing I'm surprised, well, I don't know if I'm like very surprised, but I'm surprised to see how little religious spread there is this game. Like most people spread their religion to their own cities and then like left it at that. Do do people, I, I guess the multiplayer meta, you just don't spread your religion, do you? Uh, you I mean, it kind of depends on what kind of religion you have. For example, I totally get if Khmer wants to spread his religion, I don't see why Byzantium would. Um, on the other side, I don't think I ever seen a 4v4 religious victory uh, in an extremely long time. 
Yeah. So, or in a 2v2v2, two two, it's even harder. So I wouldn't really hold my breath for uh, one of those. Uh, the second somebody gets that, it's easy to get like two holy sites out, get a few projects, get your own missionaries and start spreading and com make it harder to convert. Yeah, it's way too easy to defend. Yeah. Uh, we did try, and actually that was a big, big, big problem back in the day, like uh, two years ago or, or a year and a half ago. Uh, somebody had the bright idea twice to take out the condemn button. <laughs> I remember you told me this. <laughs> I can imagine the chaos. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's not... That, that's not... Oh, my God. I, yeah, I... I don't know, man. <laughs> Sometimes buttons are there for the a reason. <laughs> yeah. Forcing everybody on the map to get a religion to defend against missionaries. I don't know if that's the correct way of doing things. I can imagine the players really hated it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's fun once. It's fun twice. A third time, you're not going to want to play that game anymore. Yeah, for sure. Because it just becomes whack-a-mole. We have to play this goddamn religion game. <laughs> yeah. It does kind of like, though, you know, and maybe this is a bit of a hot take here, but it kind of invalidates religion. Um, if you could just like build military units and stomp them. <clears throat> I guess, but at the same time, religion is an extremely good support uh, mechanic in uh, Civ. That is and true. That's, uh, you can see uh, how much of a difference, uh, for example, it made for Khmer, for uh, even for um, uh, Byzantium. Um, I'm pretty sure if uh, we would had uh, Tamar over here, Russia, it would have shown us uh, how important religion is. For sure. Especially with the better balanced game that like uh, completely overhauls not only the um, Pantheon beliefs, but also just the actual religious beliefs. Yeah, it's uh, I, I think at this point religion is at the good point, at the good uh, balance. Yeah, I think I think going for a religion is more akin like earn like of like earning great people you know you get some kind of benefit that you can't get in any other avenue and no or, or it's a bit like getting wonders you know yeah well it's a bit more powerful than earning wonders but yeah i get what you mean it's a again a support not the not the whole meta not the whole uh, game you know, if you take away the condemn button it becomes the game yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. I don't know. I think the religious victory is kind of okay, but it's not. I don't think it matters. I think you're better off. I think I think the the it's better off that religion is a support. But oh my god, I I just checked in on Japan and they are dying. Yeah, they're dying fast. Takamatsu Fukuoka, the guy next turn, Nakoya is just gonna get focused down in the next turns, and he is trying to get a settler out, but I don't think he's gonna be anywhere uh, successful. Well, I guess he could try to go towards Geneva here, but. That's like 12 turns. Mm, for sure. Four. Where do you even... That. Where do you even run to with that settler? South of Pericles. Mm. You get under uh, Mama's wing. <laughs> Mother bird, take me in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Save me from the, from the Cree menace. And looks like Persia with his artilleries, he is going to be able to take down uh, Rome's uh, even steel walls. So it's just a matter of time until uh, Rome will fall. Oh, Probably yeah. That's why they want to play. They want to they wanna deal with this. Yeah, it looks like Rome, um, they actually still don't even have steel walls because it looks like they lost a lot of their tech in Cume. Yep. I'm uh, actually con a bit concerned about uh, their place right now. The longer the key, the game keeps going, it does look like Saints is uh, focusing on an army, and she needs to get bonuses out of this. She needs to kill, Jap fully kill Japan. Then she needs to keep on moving on Khmer uh, to keep on getting bonuses from this investment. Because at the moment she's not simming. Not simming means she's not growing in stats. That means uh, Bezdomi, who is trying to sim a little bit, is uh, growing in stats. Yeah, for sure. Like the gap is closing slowly over time. And oh, oh, a sneaky steal here. Well, was it a steal so much as it was? Oh, no, to get. Yeah, no, to get. Maybe he'll oh, trade they it. They want to trade. They want to trade. That's why they want to trade. They want to get more gold. That's what they, they're doing. Here. <gasps> oh, my God. This is genius. But it's going to flip. It's, well, it's, 
I think no. it's too far away from the captain. Oh, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe they, maybe he can keep it. I, I was going to say, what if they, um, what if Synth gives uh, or destroys a couple of cities or maybe gives him a couple more cities? They could figure out a way to make this trade work, but opening up trade routes here for them, that would be big, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Cree has been running on internals, but honestly, it's good for uh, Spain. It's not as good for Cree. Remember, she already had the plus eight food, plus eight gold trade routes. That is she true. Has very good economy, 228 with a lot of uh, bonuses from internals. I don't think she would want to give that up for uh, externals now, especially in a six pop city with no districts or I guess a harbor. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so like, I mean, these trade routes, this, this could be big for, for Spain, as you say, because Spain's income, while good, is mostly reliant on, I think, trading with like a city state here or something. I, I can't actually tell where they're getting their gold from. Uh, internals. And... Uh... The um, uh, trade routes of Spain, even if they don't give a lot of gold, they still give some gold. Mm, like for sure. Gold each or something. I suppose that does actually help quite a bit. Yeah. And he does have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trade routes that I can see. And nine trade routes is better than no trade routes, I'll tell you that much. No, oh, for sure. <clears throat> and production and everything coming up from them. It's good. It's a bit sad that uh, Spain didn't get um, that continent split. If it did get that continent split, Gorgo would have died. Do you think so? Uh, it's that important. It's yeah. that powerful. Yeah. Getting double. For, first of all, you get double yields on your traders to that city on another continent. Second of all, you can spam out these missions, which are going to be useful tiles to use even with uh, without uh, enlightenment, without the extra science on them. You get the production, you get the food, you get the the faith. So it makes everything so much easier. Yeah, I'm just looking at these missions. Plus two faith and another plus two faith, plus one production and plus one food if it's on a different continent. Spain not spawning on a continent split was a bit of a nerf for them. Yeah. That's what, you know, uh, we were talking last stream about this. Spain is awesome if you get a continent split. Without a continent split, it's kind of yeah, not that good. It's oh, just it's think... not great. Wait, Japan did? Why did he get Jifu here? Did he just settle Jifu? Kek. I yeah, I think <laughs> Kek W. I think those three cuirassiers were gonna <laughs> kill that settler, so he just panic settled. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be another free city for uh, for Spain if he wants to. Definitely, you know, get more cities here, get more trade routes. So the capitals... Oh, and he's gonna get another settler. Oh, look at that! Look at Noob. He sees the settler in the water. Oh no! <laughs> that was his escape settler. Oh, oh no! Man. Even the birds at this point have better units than Japan. The <laughs> input is going against Pikeman. Oh, <laughs> uh, the the poor rat settler. It was on its way to freedom and it just never made it. Yeah. And I do see Synth is uh, going to need a lot more points. Bestomi and Forex are uh, very close, breathing down their necks here. Uh, 30, uh, wait, 60, 60 points-ish between them as a difference. And of course, there still are uh, five more cities from Rome that could be taken over. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to come down to uh, Synth here. Can Synth get enough score to keep her team afloat? Because Persia... Like you said, it's bearing down upon Rome, and the Rome's capital city has already fallen. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. <clears throat> and on the other side, Greece is just getting more and more units out. Pyrkan armies, 102 strength units, by the way. Plus five from military policy slot with the Alhambra. Ooh, yeah, that's... Ooh, that's scary. Yeah, I mean... And fascism. Oh my god. Okay, these are these are strong units. These are very, very strong units. I can't help but feel that there's there's kind of like two outcomes here that, that these guys are fighting over. Either um a synth and noob can break the spirit of Falrex and Bezdomni by maintaining a strong lead, or Bezdomni and Falrex force 
a CC for first place via score. That is the question. I am really curious if uh, they do manage to get over a synth and noob. If they will be, if synth and noob will want to CC this, I doubt it because I'm pretty confident uh, synth is also confident she's gonna kill uh, Khmer. Mm, for sure. I mean, we could be here for a very long time watching these guys duke it out. Maybe the nukes will fly tonight. Maybe we'll see the radiated glow of uh, of we're Persian ready, cities. We already got the Folrex going for combined arms. That's on the way. That is, he wants to get the uh, nuclear fission. Oh, yep. There it is. Combined arms. And Synth is working on industrialization. Is this maybe an airport play? Could be. Uh, I think she wants balloons. Mm, balloons for the artillery would help out a lot actually yeah. you're right she's uh getting artilleries now but honestly i don't like looking at her cities i don't like the production on these uh artilleries eight turns for an artillery army to come out of her city that's just not something is wrong here yeah something is something is really wrong something's wrong in denmark card. she's i don't know something is wrong uh, maybe it was maybe we were just skewed from the last game. I mean, she does have fascism, right? Um, no. No. Oh, she's in monarchy. Oh, I thought her culture was like way better. Am I? No. I mean, she she has good culture, but still needs um two civics, I believe. She's on mass media, so she would need uh, ideology and uh, fascism. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, that's actually totally on point. She's not too far off them. I thought she was way further back. Sorry, I, I thought mass media was like the, um, like urbanization. One yeah, one back. Yeah. So she's, she's not too far away. Um, so that'll probably speed these artillery up. Although we do have to remember, I think our, our, our perspective was a little bit skewed by the, the Aztec last game who just had insane production. I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. But at the same time, I think uh, there still is something fishy over here with the artillery. I don't know what, but I'm pretty sure it's about the cards. Let me actually take a look at the government. Yeah, it's about the cards. She doesn't have the half cost artillery card. Oh, really? Yeah, she, she would need trench warfare. It's 50% uh, towards production of uh, siege units. And she's using chivalry with uh, force modernization. Mm, I wonder, maybe is this like just a little bit of a slip, a little bit of a mistake? Uh, or maybe she didn't get the, she's waiting for the civic to change the next turn. We're going to need to see if she's actually going to make a mistake. It's yeah, that's true. When she's going to discover the civic. Mass media is about to pop, so we could see the, the, the turn timer on this artillery come down significantly. And yeah. uh, I don't think the Khmer can survive a swarm of artillery like this. <clears throat> I mean, he's still on 51 gold per turn. <laughs> yeah. did manage to get 240 signs, so you got to give him that. I mean, his simming has been pretty damn good this game. He, he simmed, and like, consider, I think he opened with a two-city opener. For him to be this competitive in the game uh, is quite impressive. Yeah. One turn combustion, seven turn mobilization. He's going to have tank armies. But he's also going to be split in half, though. I don't know where Perch is going to go after he finishes Rome. It's more likely that he's going to take out Greece. Yeah, for sure. Greece seems like the, the next natural progression. It's like the easiest target on the map. I, um, okay, I'm not going to lie about this. If, if Persia wants to keep on going and Gorgo wants to pick, keep on going, there are very few things that uh, Spain and Greece can do at this point because they took so long yeah i don't know it was just like um i don't want to say that they were sitting around doing nothing but it it kind of felt that the time to strike was like 10 turns ago and they're not ready to strike yet yeah they, they should have killed japan way way faster sup potato okay now we see artillery hey. two turns six turns five turns four turns okay now it's now it's better that's yeah, that's looking average. a little bit more reasonable. Uh, yeah, we've got the... Oh, wait, no. We still don't have the... 
Artillery production card in. Huh. They've still got chivalry. Really? Maybe it hasn't updated yet. I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure uh, you're right. She doesn't have it. What's she doing? Maybe maybe they they value the tanks just a lot more than the artillery. Um, but even so, you're building I mean, more tanks, artillery. You, you need lightning warfare for tanks to hard build. Yeah, you're right, actually. You're right. It could be just, like, hey, listen, it's a long game. It's a tough game. I make mistakes with my Civic cards all the time. So it could be just oh, a small yeah. oversight. Well, especially, well, she was pointing out that she's hungry. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, know. it's uh, at some point there is uh, also um, you need to take into account the endurance of a team. Oh, 100%. You're totally right there. There's a limit to human endurance and ability. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, the other players have played before, but for example, you can see Papa Chilin uh, did kind of run out of steam after so many hours in the game. He was in the previous one as well. Yeah, I mean, like, even so, he put up a great uh, fight today. Yeah, he did. He did manage to take out a, a Civ, so there we go. Um, Even now, he's fighting to get a higher place. <laughs> is he going to make it? Uh, there is a chance if uh, Kumer and Mamalito die, there is a chance for their team to go higher. That is true. If he can somehow help or, you know, just hold on until Kumer and, and Pericles die, he could snatch oh, a few victory points for his team. They are so nasty. They are actually leaving Takamatsu to fall. So they get the points from flipping into their uh, into Kree's uh, grasp. Oh, that's just dirty. <laughs> yeah. That's just dirty. You know, it happens. That that's what happens when you put extra uh, how do you call them redeemable points on on the players. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, there's points, there's points to be had. So I get those points. Every point yeah, counts. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Well, I do see uh, Kree starting to uh, straight up buy ten cores out of, with faith. Ooh, and their faith economy is pretty good. Yeah, or with three thousand faith. Oh, oh my. So, who who did you say is buying ten cores? Is it where? It's a uh, Khmer. Khmer. Ah, Khmer. Yeah, they like. I mean, their faith yields. What are they making? Like a three hundred faith per turn. They've got two, three k yeah. in the bank. That's a strong faith yield. Yep, yep. yep. <clears throat> also, by the way, a uh, really cool wonder coming up in Priya V here on the east side of the Khmer Empire. We've got ourselves a chicken pizza coming up. That's a rare one, I feel. Nice. Where's the... Where's the... Ananas. Pineapple. Where's the pineapple? <laughs> yeah, we need, we need our pineapple on our chicken pizza. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm excited. To, I'm really, really excited to see what Creed does with this artillery. And I'm also curious to see what the hell does Pericles do against this, like, onslaught of Persian ar ar army. Like, I, I, I mean, look at Spain <clears throat> and Gorgo, by the way. Pericles, oh. I think he's just going to die, but look at Greece and uh, Spain. The Greek tank armies are 13 points higher than the tank armies of Spain 124 against 111 on the defense ooh yeah well here's the thing you look at those Spanish armies attacking back and they're no slouch either no no they're oh, dying oh wait no they're getting murdered oh my god I misread that <laughs> Oh my yeah, god, Greek is absolutely... <laughs> Sorry, I misread that. I was like, the, the player I've selected is always on the... No, no, Gorgo, wow. I mean, yeah, even that's the field... probably why he wanted to play a little more, you know? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh god, I, I, I'm worried for Spain now because he's only got 92 culture. I don't think he's going to hit fascism fast enough to, to save himself here. Yeah, for sure. And I guess at, at some point, Gorgo did stop building tanks. He got a war department in uh, in the meantime and a few artilleries. Yeah, there we go. Spain just running away. Don't hit my tanks. Don't hit my tanks. 
Yeah, you got you got to be in full retreat. Retreat to the choke point. Fortify. Hold. Do your best. Oh my God, that artillery army can get wiped out by the tank. Just one shot. Ooh, that's spooky. Another city falls from Rome. Achillea this time is going for Antium. And I do see Greece reacting to this. But the, the second Greece starts to get an army, his, arm, his whole economy is going to go down. Already Khmer lost all of his positive economy. He's on two gold. Mamoleto is on ten. They just cannot field an army. Yeah, the eco here just seems to be in a really bad spot, which is surprising because Greece is actually really well positioned to trade with these city states and make a, a lot of gold, but um, he's still running internals. Yeah. Oh, and I have to mention there was a moment in time in which the, it was amazing to use spiky shots against tanks to defend against tanks. It was feasible. It's not that time anymore. Tanks one shot spiky shots or two shot spiky shots. Tank armies with. Uh, Fascism and everything. Really, really. So Pike, are, Pike and Shot at one point or another had the um, the combat strength to withstand this. Yes, it just at some point it just didn't work anymore because the players did figure out to get to fascism. They, uh, I think, there was a nerf at some or a buff in the tanks at some point, and it just didn't work anymore. Oh, nice. Uh, I I I think it should be I think it would be pretty cool if Pike and Shot could defend against tanks. You know the logic is sound. You know, a man with a spear and a gun, he should be able to defend against an armored vehicle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the the thing is uh, that's one of the things that I would actually like to see. Uh, AT crew needs to move to somewhere actually useful. It's in the most useless place ever on the chemistry. Dude, tell me about it. It's like. It's on the same level as tanks, but tanks are so much easier to get. Um, yeah. I mean, you could make an argument that... I don't know. Where the hell do you move them even? I don't know. Refining or something? Maybe, but then the counter unit comes before. I guess... I don't know. It's hard to know. I mean... So does... Uh... How do you call it? Uh, spearmen come before uh, the horses. I guess you're right. Um, I know it, it's hard. It's the the thing. It's kind of like the old military, um, the military tactics problem. Like pikemen and men at arms are just on like an awkward spot on the tech tree. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> there will be a change at some point. I just feel like you should be able to defend tanks with other units other than tanks. Now, even with other tanks, we just can't defend against tanks. Yeah, for sure. Maybe. Hey, maybe we need just a unit... Winking at Spain here, <laughs> you know? Oh, you're winking at Spain, sorry? Yeah, I'm winking at Spain, because like, he can't defend with tanks against tanks. Yes. Tank oh, yeah. Against tank armies, <clears throat> his tanks armies are dying against tank armies of Gorgo. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it It's looking rough for him there. Um, <laughs> it really does feel like a lot of the warfare boils down to not necessarily outmaneuvering or outpacing your opponent. It's about like outscaling your opponent by trying to stack as many bonuses as possible and trying to just steamroll them. Yeah, exactly. Um, which I point of uh, plus one helps. Uh, absolutely. I mean, like a plus one damage. That's, uh, that's a lot of damage over the course of an entire army. Yeah. Now, these Roman cities aren't falling immediately, so I guess they're going to take a couple of artillery shots because he does have urban defenses. <laughs> you say that and the tank just kicks it, kicks the city. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, the damage it did was... Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, a lot I think of damage. In, uh, wait a second. We got one more turn on the, the next Terra and let me actually check it out. Uh, he's in a dark age right now. Let's see next turn. When, uh, the, the thing is, those cities are 68 defense strength and the, the tanks are 95 base. So they, oh my they God. do hit really hard when they hit. 95 base. 102 base on some of these tank armies, it looks like. Yeah. Good God. 
What do you do against this? I don't think you can do anything against this. It's just your own tanks. You you can't. You just die if you don't have your own tanks. Everything else is quote unquote survivable. Could I see it, for example, against pike and shots? Pike and shots can withstand. Yeah, I guess a tanks just they change the game. Maybe we need like a uh, an anti tank weapon, like a support weapon, like anti air, uh, that gives units like combat strength against tanks or something. Who knows? Yeah, some javelins or something, stingers. Hell yeah, take them down. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so the oh, the okay. next wave of artillery is about to pop out for Cree here. And you think Khmer is on the chopping block. And Khmer seems to think so too, based on what they've built. Oh yeah, he knows he's next. Uh, I see also aerodromes being put down from uh, Cree cities. Yeah, I'm Actually, seeing two... Uh, diversifying like this is going to help though no you don't think so mm, not sure she needs to put a lot more technology into getting uh, fighters for those aerodromes to pay off that's uh, she's gonna need uh, advanced flight so broad, uh, radio and uh, advanced flight well she's getting to work on economics which military I yeah, it's like middle tree. Like, that's pretty early. So that looks like maybe a flight push. Uh, chemistry. She wants chemistry. Mm. Chemistry into rocketry. I guess she wants the research labs. I think at this point, honestly, she's better off going for nukes. Clicking yeah. On, uh, nukes. Nuclear fission. I agree here. It, it, it feels like... I don't want to, like say this but it feels like she hasn't maybe been able to make use of her lead as much as she could have I was trying to yeah. figure out a nice way to say that <laughs> rather be like no, 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 she yeah, wasted her agree. lead it's like she hasn't been able to figure out how to make it work well I do see her majority army is uh, taking down Byzantium cities they're actually flipping quite fast in uh, re rebelling Oh, she wow. Yeah, that's true. She's getting some points out of that. Looking at the score screen, she, they are still first. They do have uh, still a, like a 30 point lead. And Perja is starting to run out of cities to convert here from Rome. Only two of them. Yeah, they but I still take Takamatsu. I think this is a mistake, though, not taking the last cities here. I think, oh my God, they actually left Japan to die. Oh my God, that is so nasty. This is disrespect that right is... here. Yeah, this is so nasty. Man. This, this is, is nasty. BM. Uh, salt on the wound, however you want to call it. This is, oh my God. The slow, inevitable death Hand of in losing the eye, loyalty. Uh, like, you know, all of those expressions. Oh my, oh my. Death by a thousand loyalty ticks. Yes, exactly. Can you can you ima I, I imagine that ma Matrix scene with the blonde girl when she's getting unplugged? You know, not like this, basically. Yeah. <laughs> True, yeah. <laughs> <Not like this. laughs> no, please. Um, it is true. They do need to farm points, I guess. This is one of the yeah. concerns that people had, that people would farm points. Um, but they need to farm it as in they need to flip it in their own, right? Into their own grasp. That's the thing, as far as I understood it. As in they need to get it into their own territory. So it's like free city and then wait for it. Yeah, it's got like another 10 turns. Um, it's go artifacts. I, I go minus artifact, you go plus. I go minus gold. Alrighty, we are done. Plus gold, okay. plus gold done. <laughs> it's for points. Don't hate on the wait for Japan to die. I'm not hating. I'm just putting myself in that guy's shoes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, not like this, bro. Not like this. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Uh, it, <laughs> it's got to feel bad to have a, a slow, inevitable death like that. And to have your final, like cockroach settler be stolen by Spain as it was like on the verge of getting out oh I see Zok even sedimented the lead over here with the 585 point okay who, who 585 points 
Yeah, Ogosi just did an uh, update in the results here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so there. See it? Do you see it? No, you don't see it. Give me a second. Uh, let me have a look here. We'll copy and paste. Copy, copy image. There we go. And paste. There you go. So it's zone of control 585. The Germans 470. Barking Yanks 460. Then cars 455. Civ Russia 430. That's pretty good. Like, I mean, even though Zoc has like a, sol a solidified lead, one bad game and one good game from the Germans could, could change that. Yeah. Then there are still, there are, I think, two more 2v2s being played right now. Oh, nice. That'll, uh, that'll shake up the score yeah. a bunch. <clears throat> yeah. I so don't know Japan? what the next schedule is. Let me actually double check. What, what what's with the Jap japan diet right yeah Nobody japan has officially kicked the bucket oh no rest in peace bro yeah rip rip and pepperoni and look at that the free city needs another 12 turns to actually get there okay well uh, would it be a case of where they would be like this would happen so you'll get the points or does it actually have to happen for them to get the points I think in, in, they actually need to happen. It actually needs to happen to get the points. Oh, wow. So, so they're going to need to wait for 12 more turns if they really want those points. I mean, points are points. Yeah, I don't know what's going to be more important, though. Uh, losing first place or getting those points. <laughs> because <laughs> they're going to lose first place here. <laughs> look at, I look mean, at Greece go. He's taking down the other Greece. Uh, I think... Look at the tank armies, by the way. I, I want I, I wanna, I want you to take a look at if this damage feels uh, legit to you. Tank armies going against anti-cavs, spiking shots. Does that damage feel legit to you? No. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! 102 base strength. I mean, I guess it is an army against a core, so... Even still, man. <laughs> that feels a little bit wacky. I'm going to call shenanigans on that. Um, I mean, he's trying to get piking shots, but it's just... No, no. Like, all of those will just get one shot next turn. That's it. Yep, for sure. It looks like Greece and Persia have uh, actually taken the lead. They are now score leading. Yeah. Yeah, I was right. They lost the first points. So it's uh, all up to since and noob if they want to give it or not. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. They want to do that. It looks like Synth has decided to go around the Khmer and, and, and try to take on Byzantium. Yeah, weaker target. Path of least resistance. Yeah, that's for sure. Also, I see Khmer reposition the army when he saw that to the north, to Persia. Okay, interesting. Actually, Lingapura has some. Oh, El Rohir is dying soon. Oh, GG. Ah, rest in peace, El Rohir. El Rohir. They fought well. They did a great job. Yep. I was trying to figure out the schedule, by the way. On So what do we have here? So... There's an anonymous FFA starting soon. There are quite a few duels that need to be played out. It's uh, wait, 12 a.m. That's uh, that started actually already on uh, uh, two hours ago, I think. The FFA anonymous. I don't know where it is though. Oh, I don't think we are allowed to see who's in the game. That's you know the whole point of anonymous. Oh, you're uh, not even allowed to cast it. Yeah. Uh, FFA All Maori, two games starting in two hours. In Ooh. four hours, uh, regular FFA is also starting. Like, there's like games and games every two hours from now. Another 2v2v2 two 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 game uh, in six hours from now. Like, four games actually in six hours from now. Then duels, regulars, FFAs, Red Death, 4v4 TSL. Oh man. For all time zones. Man, there is just so many games. And are there other people who's going to be streaming a lot of these? 
Uh, actually, I think we got a lot of pops, uh, pops uh, points of views, but I don't think we had a lot of uh, stream games. Uh, except me and maybe a few streamers like you, we, we don't get uh, uh, I say specialized uh, casting uh, streamers. They want to play their own games, they want to play other games, and then they, they want to cast some of the games, but not um, specialize in all uh, safe casting. Yeah, that makes sense to me. That makes sense. Sometimes, you know, you can got to get the point of view from a player playing the game is, is also just as interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, looks like there's some end turn shenanigans happening here. Yeah, I think uh, because a player... Um, left it's an infinite turn uh yeah you're right you might be right there or games got stuck it looks like it's in please wait it says waiting for best domi hmm hmm CC vote minus on synth. Yeah, yeah, they they wanna they wanna go. I, I told you she's uh, she's not gonna let this go until uh, she figures out uh, nukes are coming. Yeah, for sure. And, and and how close are they to nukes? Actually, I'm curious. Well, oh, actually, Cyrus did move away from nukes. He went to mass production. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's going for um, um, uh, how to call it, uh, submarines. Ah, see, he has a coastal city now down in Aretium. If he gets out a little, yeah. oh, but there's some ironclads here from uh, Synth. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to take care of that uh, coast there. <clears throat> I do think a Real Papa here does make sense for the game. He he seems to have another game in fifteen minutes, and it looks like oh, we might be in the next uh, two. Uh, what is it? Uh, FFA or something? Yeah, it might be in the FFA. Oh, I see. Uh, the all Maori FFA. Wait, three games in a row for? Wait, really? For yeah, Papa dude. Chile? Dude is crazy, and he's been awake for twenty hours. Somebody might actually have to tell him to go to bed. <laughs> Stop this. You're, you're going to damage yourself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, Rome is uh, dying next turn anyway. Yeah, I think Rome's opinion on the game is out at the moment. Uh, fourth is a result in this kind of game, considering he's going to die a slow death. Yep. Also, Byzantium, I'm pretty sure he's uh, he's going to die. It's just a matter of time. Uh, with uh, Synth coming against him, doesn't look like he has uh, the tech to withstand this. He's going to try to make it very hard. The Renaissance walls coming up in most of his in some of the frontline cities and probably in the main cities also. So who's popping out Renaissance walls? Oh, I see. It's a uh, Byzantium is. Yeah, Trebizond, Kherson. Okay. Let's see if uh, this moves along if he d drops. Mm, no. We shall see. Hmm. Might have to call a re-lobby here.
still says uh, waiting for best domi i don't know so basically it's gonna be a 2v2 <laughs> <laughs> 2v2 2v2 turned into a 2v2 turn 100 <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a two v two. All of the um, it's really just come down to Greece picking up that third, and then seeing if the Greece and Persia team. I, I, so, if it is down to a two v two, how do you think this goes? Because, I mean, Spain is looking very isolated here. Yeah. Spain is isolated, but I think he can withstand. The, the whole reason Greece went for um, uh, Pericles, for his like Orgo went for Pericles, is he couldn't push easily Spain. So he went for the weaker uh, opponent that he could get points from. Uh, at the same time, I don't really see a big advantage for Spain when it comes to science and culture. He's not going to get bigger than this. So, But Gorgo will get bigger than this. So if this game goes another 20, 30 turns, it's all going to be on synth. And it doesn't look like uh, it's going to be that easy for her either to get. Look, look how big Persia got. Yeah, Persia basically doubled in size after they conquered Rome, dude. Like they're massive now. Yeah. Okay, just. <coughs> Oh, did you see the update, by the way, on the uh, 2K launcher? I didn't. What was the update? Little uh, details over there. Details? Hello? Yes, hello. Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, I mean, you know, it's not going to be straight corner uh, rectangles. It's going to be like, you know, like rounded ones. Oh, <laughs> 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 that makes a big difference, man. <laughs> You're trolling me, dude. No, that's that's what they did. What do you mean? I don't know. If, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not all they did. <laughs> that's what it <laughs> looks like. <clears throat> I have to like the, the rounded corners. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, I'm running out of brain juice, to be honest with you. It's fine. Oh, baby. Um, all right, I got to load up a lobby here. Yeah, it looks like uh, Noob did not put up the lobby. Oh, no, he did. Okay, never mind. Let me copy the link. There you go. I guess uh, I get more time to uh, watch the live results. Absolutely. Any ears in chat? I just accidentally, I, I, I never disabled the um, the intro to the game, which is like obnoxiously loud. Um, and so every time I open the game, I just obliterate everyone who's watching my stream's ears. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, I guess I have the same problem. Uh, <laughs> I did put, install one of those uh, mods that takes out the... Um, the plugin but uh, like it takes out the intro but i got at some point scared that it uh, interacts with the game weirdly and it makes me drop or makes other people drop so i did like take it out yeah you're probably better off just for safety's sake yeah let's see so gilga quit stands first uh, with the CAF at 120 points in the dual standings. Uh -huh. uh, 4v4 standings looks like there's a tie between six teams right now. 2 for 6 Barking Kax, Sivru, the Germans, Zone of Control, Sea Dogs and Cars. Probably the, the, they are the ones that uh, got one win. FFA, the Germans are winning. 250 points. Kriga quit coming up on third on the second with cards uh, tied on the second place save rice is 215 points let me reconnect really quickly here there you go 
Okay, next. What do we have here? Um, Task for Fish MVP of Zone of Control. 250 points. JJJ on cars 185. Gilga Quit is 175 on Rom Rom. Propagandi on the Germans with 165. Sivrash Alpha Somek with 125. Sodi Tech on 100 points for D2. Suomi on uh, with Jokis on 100. We we talked with Suomi earlier in the um, FFA. Yep. I guess those are uh, the highlights over here. Those are some pretty good highlights. I just don't actually have the brain power to be able to interpret them anymore. I've kind of there's a piece of tissue on my desk that I've been playing with. <laughs> <laughs> I have those. Um, uh, how to say uh, those Kinder balls? You know, like the Kinder egg balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have a uh, I have a fidget toy that I can like. You know, it makes. Oh, okay. Makes a, a little bit of noise there. Okay. Yeah, I can play with it, but my problem is I can't play with it on stream because people can hear me fidgeting with it. <laughs> <clears throat> you need to get one of those, um, I would say, uh, balls that we, you can squeeze. Yeah, like the stress oh. balls. Yeah, that would probably be yeah, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair, I need to get one of those also. True. Um... Here we go, baby. We're loading back in. We're ready to get back into the game and get back into having a good time. Let's go. It turned in this uh, is only a two versus two versus two, turning in into a two versus two versus one soon. Yeah, well, and I, to be honest with you, the two, the the one guy, <laughs> he's just a speed bump on the way to a higher score. <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> it is... <laughs> he doesn't know it yet, but he is a speed bump. <laughs> so riddle me this, tell me this. Uh, if you had your gut feeling about this game, looking at it, knowing everything that you know, which team, which team would you put money on? Which team are you, are you, are you wagering the house upon? Uh, at this moment? At this at this very I would, moment, I would actually say uh, Greece and uh, Persia. Really? Yeah, just just because that noob cannot grow anymore, that's the only stopper there. Like the, Greece taking Bologna impacted the game so much a hundred turns later. Yeah, definitely. Like I mean, that positioning here, the because like if you think about it, if if Spain had gotten Bologna, like look at all this coastal land they could have taken. Yeah, another three series at least over here with Bologna. And and without that Bologna, you know, <laughs> there's no cities here. Um, I personally I prefer a synth position because the the potential here to very easily kill Khmer, like, I mean I know Khmer won't be a total pushover, but sh she should be able to bring them down. But like. Uh, three range artillery she's got like a, a horde of artillery she's also grabbing up the byzantium lands there's i feel like i feel like their empire has huge potential i was favoring her at the beginning honestly yeah, and you uh, you heard me say this but it's um at some point she was a bit too passive i, I can't say i blame her because she didn't have the full vision of all of the map like we did uh, not killing japan earlier for example did uh, hurt them a lot uh, and why are we not loading it? Oh, Bezdom is loading. Okay, never mind. Um, and her going against Byzantium is just going to be, a, unfortunately, a too long of a trek versus uh, Gorgo killing Greece. If Gorgo finishes to kill Greece, he's going to get as massive as Persia is. So they're going to have two guys extremely massive to take care of. Yeah, two giant superpowers and 
you know, it'll it'll really be at that point. I mean, considering Spain's position, it'll basically be Cynthia versus the world there, or Synth versus the world. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure Bezdomi is gonna get uh, nukes. Uh, Noob is trying to get flight. I see Bezdomi getting uh, cartography now. Nobody, nobody crashed. Okay. Yeah, thankfully we we managed to avoid crashing here. <clears throat> Japan just flipped independent once again, and uh, we're back in it. I think. Well, well, no, we're still in. Please wait. Oh, did he? Kick. I think. Wait, they can't play. Kick Maybe W. Forrester oh. L. Yeah, the, the the game just broke or something. We need to pray to Sid. <laughs> Sid, fix the game, please. <laughs> please, please. I thought actually it uh, started because it says my turn. <laughs> I can even uh, click the ready button and uh, pick heartbeat of steam, for example. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like every time I click the ready button, it's uh, allowing me to make a dedication. Yeah, that was that was happening to me too. Should I make a dedication? I don't know. I mean, sure. I don't think it impacts anything. I went my heartbeat of steam. Oh, this feels like we're playing on unified. You know the unified uh, mechanics. At some point, there's a buffer somewhere, a cache file that just fills up, and it doesn't allow you to go any any longer, any turn longer. Wait, what's unified? Sorry, it's the um, the, EG, the Epic Game Store internet uh, or way of connecting or save. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's much stabler than Steam, but you can't go over eight players with uh, over eighty turns. It just with 10 players it stops at turn 90 or something jeez and there's no fix for it it just the page file fills no. up and you can't even relobby like you can but it doesn't go any further or maybe it goes like one turn then you need to relobby again and it stays like for five minutes and then you need to relobby it's a pain oh for god's sake that sounds like a nightmare yes Anyway, I'm not sure what's happening. I'm, I'm guessing it's uh, one of the, the one of the PCs over here, connection to other PCs or something. Lag switch engage. <laughs> Do you remember those memes back in the day playing like shooter games and people like he's toggling his lag switch, bro. You can't hit him. <laughs> oh, this is still a thing, by the way. I, I don't know if you heard about EFT. Um, EFT? What's EFT? Yeah. Um, Escape from Tarkov. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. There are some players that are using the push mechanic and that basically what they're doing is uh, forcing their uh, ping to go higher, like 600, 700 uh, MS, and they go in, they stop before they enter a room and then wait for like five seconds and then go into the room um, with uh, so much lag that their opponents are not even seeing them. Oh, that is so messed up, man. That is so <laughs> messed up. What the hell? <laughs> it's so annoying. And you just, like, from the other perspective, you just see somebody walking in, poof, you get two shots in the head and you die. <laughs> you oh, for God's God like... sake. That reminds me of Planet Side when it used to have, like, a little bit of net code occasionally. You'd, like, run around a corner and then, like, you'd be three seconds down the hallway and get shot <laughs> and die by someone around the corner. <laughs> oh, it was awful. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. What can I say? It's uh, some games, man. Some games. <clears throat> Please vote us a rel. Hey, did you try that uh, surviving the aftermath uh, sim game? I did. I actually, I, I quite like it. It's not the best um, post-apocalyptic sort of game, but I, I, I quite enjoy it. It's quite good. Okay. So I understand they got to their uh, definite version, like the, not the beta, the one zero or something. Yeah, you I think they finished updating it. I, I think I don't remember actually. I've, I've played it recently. Okay. Oh, okay. So that that means it's the full version because they recently got the beta. Yeah, I would recommend it. I would recommend at least trying it out um, if you like city builders and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 big fan, big fan. Cool. I was watching other people play, like do let's plays for it and so on. It, was, it looks really cool. What 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 were you playing? Sorry. I was watching other people playing, like doing let's plays on it, and it looks oh, really right. cool. But I didn't play it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would give a recommendation if you're really into city builders I would totally give it a go and if you like the post-apocalyptic post-apocalyptic theme yeah um, I feel like you know some people would say just play RimWorld but like eh, I mean RimWorld is a great game but Isn't sometimes you want to something pixelated oh no yeah it is yeah, it's kind of, it's like little sprites and stuff like that. But sometimes you want a game that's a little bit more complicated in terms of just like the graphical style and presentation and how you play, um, like the, the actual interface. Yeah, it looks a lot like uh, the Frozen World, what do, what do you call it? It's like Frostpunk? Yeah, Frostpunk. As in types of uh, mechanics and so on? I'd say it's there's some similarities to Frostpunk. I do think Frostpunk is probably a better game but that's just because of the theming and stuff and frostpunk is just like really really solid okay um i find frostpunk right now extremely hard i didn't get the patience to learn it again i played it at the early versions i liked it and then stopped playing for a while like uh, two years or something yeah and now it's so hard <laughs> No, I, I, listen, I played one campaign of Frostpunk. I played the very first campaign when it first came out. I played about five to six hours of the game and then I never played it again because I got everything I wanted from it. I'm super happy with the game. I would recommend it to everyone, <laughs> but I, I don't need to play it again. I, I, I played yeah. the five hours and it was a great game. Yeah, I, I did the same. I did the same and I do find it a good game, but now I tried to start it up again. It's just not, uh, how to say not was it was uh, when i first played it it's yeah for sure more uh, uh, complicated a lot more actually complicated yeah no i really really enjoyed the game and i would super recommend it to anybody frostpunk is fantastic but i just i will never play it again because i i've already played it it's like uh i don't usually replay games um unless i really like them or i have nothing else to play <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not the player count over here. That's the problem. Yeah, I think there's something messy with the save file here. Yeah, it's either that or, I don't know, computer uh, on the line. Yeah, they can, they can play for sure. <laughs> there's a bit uh, of, what uh... they can do, and I, I can understand why they're not running. Uh, Khmer can defend against uh, Kree. Yeah. So if he's not going to be active here, Kree can just steamroll him and uh, Persia still needs time to uh, remove, like move his armies to the east. Yeah, for sure. Like Khmer, I, see, this is where we get into this kind of a squirrely situation where Khmer surviving or just like giving up dictates the outcome of the game. Yeah. We're back to uh, China 101 again. Yeah, for sure. I, I really just want to see the end of the game so I can go to sleep. 
Honestly. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah, we'll do another re-lobby. Re-lobby time, baby. Best Domni always lagging. True. He has a potato PC. True. Oh my God. So many truers in chat. <laughs> do you all think that Gorgo and Persia spawning close to each other helped them a lot? I really do. Not only just for international trade, but for coordination and protection and like having one person on your border who you don't have to worry about attacking you. That is such a huge advantage in a game like this. It, I would go as far as to say as it, it was the advantage that I felt th they had the advantage from the start of the game, in my opinion. Now, Cree got ahead in a really, really powerful way. Uh, but I, I think spawning near each other just gives you so many opportunities to get ahead. Yeah. I don't think it made or break the game. Uh, made or broke the game? Oh my god, how do you even say that? I'm forgetting how to say phrases. Um, <laughs> I don't think it was a make or break type of situation, but I do think that it played a factor into their dominance. Now, obviously, they're really, really good players and they spawned in really, really good situations. Even though I would argue that Persia kind of misplayed their opening a little bit. Um, and you could maybe make an argument that Greece did, although I think they played really, really well. Um, yeah, I think... You know, I don't know. I don't know how much you would attribute them spawning next to each other too. But I would say it, it had a, it was an important factor. But I don't think it was the deciding factor. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Uh, <clears throat> Gorgon, and I guess you're talking about Gorgon and uh, Cyrus over here on Persia. I don't think it was that big of an impact on the on the game, for, uh, mostly because uh, Cyrus uh, was going for uh, internals anyway, so they didn't that use that much their uh, externals, and not even now they can't have uh, scientific alliance or something else because they need the military alliance so badly. Yep, true. Uh, so just the, getting the gold is gonna be on uh, on them. For on sure. Their own uh, commercials, on everything else. Uh, what it does, I guess you can say that uh, they didn't have a border to take care of, but the same can be said about uh, also Cree. You know, she didn't have to take care of her East. There was such a weak uh, East border uh, civilization on her side that it didn't matter. And yeah, definitely. Uh, Japan and uh, Portugal were irrelevant from the beginning. They yelled themselves, not that, that they were, you know. Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. If you spawn into that Portugal and Japan situation, it's kind of a Mexican standoff. It's like a blink you lose. If you don't build those galleys, you're dead. Yeah, I, but I do want to point out he should have killed him with the samurais. Mm -hmm. the beginning, so, like, in that sword. particular scenario, you just Today, forget about caravels. You go for samurais. It's, like, half the time that you need to get to caravels, and uh, uh, he should have relied on his uh, ally to give him the gold. Uh, the problem is, Basil the second was his ally, so he didn't have gold. <laughs> so, he needed to do everything himself. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. I just I feel like there was so much potential for J Japan and Portugal this game, and it was kind of stolen because they spawned next to each other. Uh, yeah, they did ask for Portugal and Japan, so I don't know. Mm, it's true. Kind of, you know, they they made their own choices there. Like yeah, definitely. Portugal is. Uh, mm. In this kind of situation, it's not that strong as a civilization. No, no, not not really. Uh, Japan, though, is usually one of the most adaptable civilizations in the game. It usually is able to withstand these uh, uh, awkward spawns. Oh, don't tell me we're gonna actually. Oh, now we're waiting for the best dummy. Okay. That's what happened last time, though. 
Yeah, I'm concerned. I'm concerned that this game might be a wrap. It might be ogre. It might be all ogre, boys. <clears throat> we might be packing it in. Let's 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 not stuff. Let's not um huff on uh, on on negativium. Let's huff on hopium. Okay, this game is going to come back it's alive, and things are going to happen. And the players are gonna un be understanding, and they're gonna negotiate properly, and it, yeah. it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. <clears throat> it is really tempting when you're in like the spectator position to like try to be like, "Hey, guys, right? Let's let's try to negotiate here." But I guess I'm supposed to remain impartial, right? Because I have information the players don't, and I I can't give that away. Nope. We we need to uh, shut up here and let them uh, do all the talking. It is. It, I have to say that sometimes it's extremely hard to, like, you know, not say anything when you know that ah, the information is like right there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. Or even if it's like, listen, dude, you need to erail because you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, again, it's got stuck. Ah, well, hopium. Yeah, again, it's stuck. It says, please wait. <laughs> It'll work, copium. Uh, yes, yeah, Arissa, if you want to tell people about uh, where the other streams are you can give them a shout out and chat because i'm gonna we're gonna be wrapping this up if people want to go watch I'm more not sure what uh, actually happened here it's in, uh, i guess the only thing that can happen is uh mother's taking a look at the file dual dot log yeah i guess uh, my guess would it be is something to do with japan flipping independent because i don't think that's come up very often in this game <clears throat> would be that would be my guess Sorry, my mate, he's drunk. <laughs> <clears throat> so how often do you find yourself in uh, in these kind of situations where, you know, the, the game is kind of stuck due to a bug or some sort of issue and uh, players have to negotiate how the game ends? Extremely rare. Extre I think this is the first game in like, a year or more in which I find myself in this situation. Oh, that's uh, unfortunate. Most most of the games that I stream are from the, um, I would say, uh, the 4v4s. And most of the players there are extremely um, attentive, or how to say, they're paying a lot of attention to their uh, mods and uh, they have all of them up to date and so on. And most of them do have really good PCs at the same time. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, like internet and everything. So it's uh, these issues just don't come up. Uh, there's also less players in the game overall. I have to mention this. We were 12 to begin with. That's true. There is a lot of people in here. Yeah, that's a lot that's of breakpoints. <laughs> Michael, they're appealing to you. I, I said, like I said, I don't want to make decisions because uh, it might seem more biased. Even if I'm not biased, it still might seem biased. It's uh, fine. Magic is online. He should be responding soon. The oh, the uh, August is responding to this. Hey, Bose! Oh, oh Bose! Thank, cast, thank you so much. Elephant guy is gonna cast the uh, old Maori FFA for the raid. Thank you so much, Bose. I appreciate I'm you. Gonna try to host him after this game. 
Uh, yeah, you tell me who you want me to host, and I'll host them. Uh, for okay. sure. Oh, I got you, elephant guy. Let me just grab that link yeah. there. He's uh, new on the scene, but he's trying to get his uh, stream up. Uh, you know, slowly learning, slowly learning. That's how it is. You got to go through the motions. Yeah, you got to practice. You got to learn. You got to get good. You got to get better. Yep. And he's just collectively decided that we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they could allow ties, though, I, I believe. I'm not sure how that works, but I think they could allow ties. Yeah, I'll have a quick look at the rules and see. They're uh, talking right now with Ogosi. I just thought I would be helpful if I could share them the rules. Maybe it'll help us. <laughs> Maybe it'll get me closer to going to bed, copium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Uh, just tuned in. Who was winning this game? I think it was kind of a bit of a toss up for a very long time. Uh, I think Synth and um, this is Synth and Noob had the game pretty much in a dominant position. But uh, I think the team fall rex and best domini they managed to figure out a way to contest the first place i approved that message oh now they're uh, talking yeah we shall see I think uh Oh another two v two v two v two finished. Ooh, oh that. nice. More like score updates. Won. Yes. Looks like cards won it this time. Let's see. Uh what the rank reporting. There we go. Um Oh somebody built the uh, Estadio de Maracano. Macarena. Uh, I'm uh, Estadio de Mar Macarena, I, I'm impressed. Yeah. Cause that is deep into the civic tree <laughs> and pointless. Turn a hundred and thirty-three victory. Okay, I mean, you know, if it works, it works. Oh, that's somebody got a religious victory in a one v one. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> Did someone pick Congo in a one v one? You went uh, Nubia over China. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I would really like to see that game play out, actually. Yeah.
Uh, would you select uh, other beliefs for your blob game again uh, or feed the world in Gurdwaras? I'm just selecting beliefs now. The option of work ethic or choral music and culture from the third building. Uh, I mean, cool. I think all of those work can work with Khmer. And now the interesting thing here that the interesting thing here with um, the irrelevance is that Synth is totally okay with Khmer being irrelevant because that makes her potential, you know, as ascendance back to dominance here much easier. Whereas I think Persia and Greece are a little bit more reticent to allow that to happen because that makes their game harder. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the math here. They don't want to allow Khmer to become uh, AI. Thanks for the stream, Potato. Rarely have time to catch these. Well, fun. Thank you so much, Yoshi, man. I appreciate you, dude. You know what? I'm searching for Khmer's military general. Does she actually have a modern general? I see Napoleon. That's uh, a mod. Oh, yeah, okay. The industrial modern. Okay. There we go. Napoleon. Quite I don't powerful. Know why for a second there I thought it's a Renaissance. I don't know. It happens. We also have and two there... pack Amaru, which is modern atomic, I think. Wait, where? Oh, I see. In a uh, cat. Okay, so she has two of them. Nice. Definitely. Gangster, gangster. Nice. So it looks like there's a discussion going on with the admins um, to try and figure out what you do in this situation. Oh, they uh, looks like they're going ties. Okay, they're gonna tie for first. They're gonna split the points for first. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. there a, go. a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a, a letdown of an ending, but not. But it was still a really fun game along the journey, so I think it was worth it, regardless. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if they didn't tie, it would have taken another like fifty turns to find out, and do, I'm not sure if we ever had a, a good ending to it. <laughs> you're probably right maybe this was the best ending we could get um i think i'm going to go ahead and start winding down my stream and go host uh that elephant guy yeah. thank you so much michael i'm ready for bed though dude oh i i do have to thank you for joining us in the ccc i hope you enjoy the content and uh, thank you everybody for staying up so late <clears throat> absolute pleasure to be with you i'm gonna go ahead and bounce out of here and get myself ready to go sleep have a good night man have a good night Catch you later. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, God. Okay, we got rid of that nerd. No, I'm just kidding. Michael's a cool guy. Uh, we're...